yes, you can hear me, or yeah, you're... Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, all right. How you doing, dude? Right. Wait there a second. So, how are we going to do this, then? I don't know. You showed up in a Kia thread like you had some stuff to say. What do you... What's got you wrestled today, my friend? Are we on the stream now? Yeah. Okay. All right. Wait a second. I'm obviously can't, I can't see your webcam, so it's going into OBS or something. So right. Oh yeah. Sure. Uh, you want me to turn my webcam on? Uh, no, it's okay. Okay. Does it show anything like my Skype avatar or anything then? No, everything is all on the other screen. No one has your Skype screen name or ah, anything like that. Okay. Okay. Here would be my main question then. Mm-hmm. So this is the obvious question, right? That you've never actually really addressed, which is. You imply that I'm, like, scared to talk to you. you. Now, do you actually believe that? Is that actually your contention that, like, I won't talk to you because I'm afraid to talk to you? I mean, saying it that way is a little bit of a ways to pump my ego up, but it may, I guess based on our conversation the last time we talked, you made it sound like you... I don't want to say you were scared to me. You made it sound like you didn't want to talk to me because you felt like I would bait you into saying something really stupid. Uh, that was like the impression I got. If that's an unfair characterization, I guess you can. Correct I mean, I made a video on this exact topic actually, which was after the whole thing where we had that unfiltered esports episode where you weren't on it, and it was just me, Richard, and Shan Man. And I addressed in that not just you, I also addressed why I didn't want to go on Lycan shows either. And the basic premise of what I outlined, aside from the fact that I think the way you, the way you debate is a bit obnoxious, it's just not fun to be a part of. What does that mean? I would say. I'm not can get into that if you want, but okay. to finish my point, the the main contention I actually had was I even say in the video, I don't actually think you baited me into saying that stuff about Paul. I just said that because I was tilted in the moment. I was frustrated. Don't actually think that's the case. In fact, what's funny is before we did that Lycan show, where, by the way, I had never, I literally didn't even know who Lycan was before he added me there. I think Richard gave him my Skype or something. So I assumed it was going to be a proper talk show. I think he acknowledges he, that he was very new as a host. He didn't do a very good job, you know? Sure. So my main point was actually before that show, I don't think you ever even entered my mind when all that Poland shit came up. I entirely never blamed you for it in any sense. I don't think I ever thought to myself, oh, it's all that bloody destiny who got me in trouble with that. All right, I never mean, thought that once. To be fair you know? to me, you did write a Facebook post where you specifically called my name out, I believe, saying that I had enticed you into saying those things. And Richard no, was, was much of the got, same. I, I mean, I'd have to check that Facebook post. But off the top of my head, in general, I'm pretty good at remembering stuff I've said. I think you're, we're actually talking about the Lycan show now still. It was on the Lycan show where once it got... Once it digressed into that area, which remember it was nothing to do with originally, but once you went into that area, that's the show where I said, I think I said something along the lines of, you know, you practically baited me into that or whatever, which, as I say, not really. I mean, what I actually meant by that, I did a poor job of explaining myself, is what I then outlined in the video I'm referring to, which is just the way that you talk makes it very difficult for someone to actually have what I would call like a, a discussion in good faith, you know. I, like, imagine, well, but that okay, was my hit, same complaint about you. You, you can give your Sure, that could be the case. Wanna... No, I would just put it this way. I would just put it this way. If you're having a discussion with your girlfriend, okay? See, mm -hmm. So the reason why I make it your girlfriend is you've got to have some extra impetus not to just think, you know, fuck this person, I'm not going to talk to him anymore, okay? But if you're having a discussion with your girlfriend and you're arguing about something, I think it's a pretty famous kind of stereotype in human history that it's very difficult for men to argue with women in that way. Because actually women use essentially a lot of dirty tricks in how they argue. I mean, obviously not all women, just the women I've been around, okay? Like they will do stuff like, oh, so you're implying this. And, you know, like they put words in your mouth constantly or they don't let you get the point out and you're trying to explain something and then they just keep honing in on one part. And even worse, if if they take that to be something inc like ridiculous as a statement, they get triggered and react as though you were saying that statement. And therefore now you're not just trying to explain yourself. Now you're having to sort of like bring them down four notches to the area where they would be based on what you actually were trying to say. You know, that sort of an atmosphere makes it very difficult to have like a, a frank discussion, right? So I agree 100% with what you're saying, but I feel like that's a mischaracterization of the way that I normally talk to people. It might have been different talking in regards to gaming stuff, but I, I understand if you haven't seen it all, but have you watched my video with John Tron? 
No, I haven't really watched okay. much of that, mate. So the majority of my discussions with people, especially politically related things, I would say is the opposite. Typically, my mode of discourse is I will ask you questions until I can find out exactly what it is you believe, and then I'll ask you more questions to test the consistency of what you believe. And occasionally, I will make an assertion if it feels like you're dancing around a topic and won't want to say it, and then I'll give you a chance to respond. The, the, the complaints that you're bringing up about me were kind of the same ones that I had about you because it seemed like, especially back in the gaming days, we were talking about StarCraft, you, it seemed like your way of arguing was, and you I remember in your video, you specifically said that I was wrong for calling you out on this um, because you said I was interrupting, but your way of arguing things in the StarCraft 2 days was you would lay out like five to 15 premises, like rapid fire machine gun these out, and then you would sure. beg the question yep, at the absolutely. end, and it was impossible to like, because if you said like 10 or 15 things and like half of them you disagreed with were false, your conclusion always logically followed everything you said. So once you've already gotten out like all of that, to go back and to try to like wrestle over your individual premises already makes it look like you've won the argument. Like that's like a really popular. Like, first of all, like whenever I do talk shows or discussions, I don't, I don't ever think in my brain who's winning the argument. What's the scoreboard here? Like, it, for example, what you've just suggested right now, Presumably at the end, when you say I beg the question, so essentially you imply, I say, you know, A, A plus one, A plus two, and then I get to the end and then I say, therefore, you've got to say that this, right? Yeah, exactly. And then sure. that's an hour. Okay, that's the premise we're setting up here. So then the problem is, you then suggest that the problem with that, it, the problem isn't even that my point could be 100% wrong or that there's no validity or merit to it, right? It, the problem is that at the end, it looks like you can't win essentially. Like it's, I've set up an unfair scenario where either you look like you're ignoring all my points and therefore I win in that way, or you have to in some way concede the point, you know? Yeah. Like, why does that matter though? So, you, so you're doing all of this discussion on talk shows for the public, for this imagined guy who you're sort of putting yourself as in, in the moment, you know, and imagining if you were listening in the conversation, how you would judge it. That's who you care the most about in a talk show. I mean, we're having a public talk show that is available for public consumption. So, yeah, you care about how your points come across at the end of the day. I don't consider the average listener to be a perfectly logical, uh, you, you know, you know, rational Of course machine, not. No, but, right? but the so thing that I find confused. OK, oh, sorry, no, continue. Continue. Now you can continue your point. Well, I was going to say, like, if, if you're having a discussion and the other person is using argumentative tactics to always come out on top, even if you feel like they're not arguing in good faith or your points should, you know, reign supreme or be, you know, logically correct at the end, if everybody walks away from the show thinking that quote unquote you lost the argument then that will be the talking point that dominates the community then until the next show or whatever that particular topic is about right how many times on a thread have you seen i'm sure it happens in the csgo community all the time right where somebody will bring up a point and then somebody else will say well actually if you listen to thorin talk about this dude about it he was totally wrong right like yeah, this kind of stuff happens all the time sure but i mean I, do, I don't personally like put much stock in that either way like for example if the entire thread as you said was in my favor like they were like oh he was totally right about it i don't then think like oh great why well, won that debate you know that guy's points were obviously nothing because this random pleb says that they lost you know in fact like i said i except in scenarios where it's been you and is there even anyone else i don't even think i can think of anyone else in the history of all the stuff i've done in esports where it's ever been about winning and losing like i, I might have like, had slightly I mean, heated that... debates on my own talk shows you know but generally i tried to let the person get their points out at the end usually i invite them on the show because there's some merit to them as a person you know they, they have some perspective or they have some insights that i don't have and i want to hear those you know i never really think at the end of it who won or lost or who's going to look bad like that's just not the way not, my perspective is it's not about looking bad i guess it's about caring to some extent about the points you're arguing or for the public discourse if i feel very strongly about a point um things that we talked about are foreigners ever able to compete with koreans or you know are, are tournaments that exclude koreans in the west are these good or bad for um the starcraft 2 community right if i'm arguing a point like this it's a point that i feel invested in and i feel strongly about it and i don't want people to walk away thinking like wow you know i kind of agreed with destiny at first but he got trashed in that debate you know like man it looks so bad like i don't know if i can hold that point anymore you know like if i'm arguing something enough or if i'm going on a public show to argue something publicly with somebody then obviously i care about the point and i want more people to agree with that so i don't think it's like that hard to believe that I, it's not about like winning or losing like i don't have like a tally on a notepad where like debates won you know 14 after today but it's more like this is a point that i care strongly about and because i'm arguing it the whole reason i'm arguing is because i want more people to agree with that point okay so here's here's a key issue is 
when you say that, like when you describe to me how you have political discussions, because obviously that's very different forum to when you're a guest on a talk show mm -hmm. and the idea of a good talk show. I mean, I think this is somewhere Chan Man would probably himself admit he's not very good at the actual moderating element of the talk show. He's agree. dynamite at scheduling it, getting the guests on, pressing record on OBS. Sure. But he himself knows he's not a confrontational person and therefore he kind of struggles to deal when people are arguing or, I mean, I, I mean, it's like why I make fun of him for it. His yeah, entire no, approach is like, 100%. come on, guys, can't we all just get along? Which is like, that's the last thing anyone wants to hear when you're actually like wrestling over a point, you know? Yeah. But the problem with that is, as a result, I mean, that's, that's also the reason why it was never I'm scared to talk to you and abandon you from ever talking to me. I mean, that's, I don't know if you were just trying to purposely exaggerate that but that's obviously never the case what happened was i just didn't want to go on and filter anymore by the way not even just according to you like i've just mentioned here chan man's not very good at doing that so i knew i couldn't trust him to basically moderate the chat properly as in our discussion not literally the twitch chat obviously that's probably the one area he might be good in actually so this is the basic point i want to bring up Kate. so when you describe the difference because obviously i don't know i haven't seen that many of your videos where you're just debating some random pleb off twitter and you get them on skype when you do that that is a very different forum and essentially, even though it's a debate, like people call it a debate, you're, it's a debate where you're the moderator. It's your channel. It's your chat. So to some degree, it's almost like a debate stroke interview. Now, if you're the interviewer, you do decide where the conversation goes. If I'm the interviewer, if someone makes a comment, OK, and I think to myself, oh, there's more there, you know, or you didn't really address the point. I can bring them back to it. I can use follow ups. I can say, no, I've really got to press you on this point. Like, ah, oh, but earlier you said this. You see the key point there. You even admitted it. What happens is you're directing them all the time. You're deciding the points that they discuss. You're deciding like when we go to the next point, you're deciding when we have to stay on this point. You're stopping them when they're in the middle of saying something, sometimes even a sentence. Like, There's one thing if you just don't let them say. 15 points but you can't stop someone in the middle of a sentence you got to at least let them finish i mean I'll, there's actually an example you like to bring up examples i remember quite vividly there was an unfiltered i think it was the end of year one or something am i misremembering that there was an unfiltered you did with richard i think it was the one just before he joined turner and it was going to be his last one but obviously he did one since where he actually was making some point i think it was maybe even about something like the koreans and wcs and stuff and he keeps saying a sentence right and you keep interrupting him and, and here's the thing unlike everyone else i've ever seen you just talk with on those shows he actually just keeps saying out loud i will finish this sentence then you keep talking and he goes i will finish this sentence you keep talking and eventually you actually stop for a second then he finishes the sentence it's like can you see how like you've even exaggerated the extent that you do. You make it sound like you just make like the person makes a point and you're like, okay, let's stop there. Let's look at that. Is that fair? Sometimes you cut them off like three words in because the third word's the trigger word. Would you acknowledge that? I, I don't think so. Usually if I'm cutting somebody off on the third word of a sentence, usually it's following like another statement they've made that I really want to address before they've built up this whole argument that I'm going to go back to this one point and disagree with anyway that might dismantle the whole thing regardless. Like, okay. So here's the here's the question then uh -huh. is I understand when it's your show and you are the moderator slash interviewer why you can do that. That is actually the grounds that people are walking into willingly knowing that's what they're going to get. It's the same as if I do an interview with Stefan Molyneux and I'm someone who disagrees with all of his philosophy. I'm pretty sure he's going to attack my points. He's going to keep me on the points he wants to discuss. That's exactly what you should know going in, right? That's reasonable. The problem is I was never doing an interview with you, mate. You weren't the moderator of any discussion I was involved in. We were host, guests on a talk show, a discussion show. So why – it's funny that you brought this up because, I, again, I acknowledge you should do that in your realm. But you were taking that approach with me, and I've seen you do it with Richard – on an open discussion show. Like, who are you to be the moderator to decide where every point takes place? I mean, I guess when I'm having a discussion like this, I'm more interested in the merits of the discussion than who is the moderator or who is controlling the f the flow of the conversation. I guess I've never really considered it that way. When people come on to my uh, stream or whatever and we have discussions on politics, I don't feel like I'm hardcore steering the conversation in certain directions. I feel like usually when they come on, it's usually to discuss one, maybe two topics, and then we just They don't really steer it. it, though, mate. At least from what I've seen, well, we in general, discuss, you just steer it. We usually have a discussion like going in, like, hey, I want to come on and talk to you about immigration. I want to come on and talk to you about this specific thing. And then that's usually what the discussion is. I, like, I've, 
I had a two-hour convo with Lauren Southern. I had a two-hour convo with Sargon. Like, if you watch these videos, like, for the most part, we kind of pretty organically hop from topic to topic. And these videos are usually pretty long because we usually talk about something until we've either come to an impasse or come to an agreement or found some common ground, and then we move on to the next thing. I don't think I've ever, like, torn somebody off a point, like, we're done talking about this now. Now we're going to this. Like, I don't think I've ever done that before because my, my discussions or debates or whatever you call them aren't usually, like, super structured, you know? Okay, but can you see that... As, here's the certain thing, okay, I'm speaking mainly here as someone who has a lot of experience as an interviewer. Like, I don't, I don't know how many discussions you've hosted, how many people you've talked to, but I would guess that I probably have more experience hosting talk shows and doing interviews than you. I probably, it's probably in the thousands at this point in time. I've done a lot of them. So in my own experience doing that, if you want to get the best out of the other person, sure, you don't let them get away from interesting points or you don't leave something so it's like so vague and it's not, it's not a kind of like opened up and they haven't really said all the stuff that you want to know about even, not even necessarily just what they want to say. You know, I totally acknowledge that's a dynamic. But part of the issue is that if you have these discussions, it's essentially kind of a dirty tactic if it's a debate and you do that. Because if one person leads it like that, you're absolutely right, okay, that whatever they say still has to be judged on its own merits. But if you want to talk about that fictional, I mean, it's not fictional, but we just imagine, okay, imagined viewer who's the objective viewer who doesn't know us and they're just listening to how we discuss as well as what we discuss and whether or not they're going to decide at the end, you know, he trashed him or he wrecked him or he won the debate, right? That guy, it's a lot easier to win with that guy regardless of what points each of you make, if you're the one who's doing what I'm talking about, it's the equivalent. Okay. I'll give you a great example. It's like in MMA or boxing. So in MMA and boxing, right? And not a lot of people understand this who are casuals, but you can absolutely win the fight. You can even dominate the fight by being the person who's backing up all the time. Or in MMA, you can be the guy who's on the ground and there's a wrestler holding you down. So it looks to the guy on the outside, like, wow, he's getting wrecked. But you're actually like doing all the damage to that guy. You're putting that guy in you know, submission danger all the time. And the problem is, to the really casual guy, you, you'll almost never convince him that the guy who had the, you know, the ring control, or the guy who was holding the other person down, or the other, or the guy who was moving forwards, or the other guys, you'll almost never convince them that that guy was losing. You see what I mean? Like there's sort of an inherent bias which makes them think that, well, I mean, they're they're somehow controlling. They they've put their stamp on the fight. You, can you see what I mean in terms of a conversation? Yeah, I kind of understand what you're talking about, but I but I feel like in terms of what you do when you talk about interviewing people, I'm very rarely am I interviewing somebody on my stream. I'm usually bringing them on with the express purpose of both of us being on an equal platform. Like in an interviewing platform, you are very much taking a back seat to the person you're interviewing. No, isn't that the whole thing with late night talk shows? And yeah, the, uh, the absolutely. Of a host, right? You're usually taking a back seat. I don't want to yeah. take a back seat to somebody that I bring on. Usually, we both have differing points of view and my goal is to hash out you know who we think is more correct who has the better arguments or the better statistics or whatever to back up their particular point of view um, in terms of like hammering down people on points I would say that probably the biggest complaint that I get about all of my political discussions from people um, on YouTube and my chat or on, you know on emails and whatever is that I let people jump around too much and not that I'm the one steering the convo, but that I let in it. And even in the JonTron debate where, you know, people will, as soon as I start to close in at a point or it happened a lot with the one Southern, as soon as it starts to happen, people will jump ship to an entirely different topic. And I'm usually, I don't really nail people down on things at all. Again, most of my quote unquote debates with these people is usually just me asking questions to figure out what it is they actually believe. But here's the thing. When you say that you don't really cut someone off halfway through a sentence or like on a key word, I mean, obviously, we're, we're just going to both think a different thing on that sense, because I've seen not only with myself, but when you talk like, for example, whenever Richard talks, Richard's also someone who's pretty long winded, right? Because he's here's the problem, right? If you're someone who's a writer or someone who does monologues, it's not an excuse but you essentially train yourself to have as much time as you need to set up the premise. And sometimes you become long-winded in as much as instead of just getting to the point, you want to really establish all of it initially, and then you want to kind of deliver the main point and have it buttressed like that. So in a sense, okay, it's actually quite bad form, I guess, for being an interview subject or a talk show host, uh, guest rather, because in this scenario, what you should really do is you should make your point, And then if the other person asks something, then you give all this sort of preamble that but the problem is when you're used to kind of delivering a, a single person piece of content, you, you're almost not what you've almost trained yourself to interview yourself, if you know what I mean, as you're talking. So that does make it very long winded. And I agree. It's hard to keep track of all the points someone's making. But absolutely. I'm telling you, go back and watch. I don't I can't speak for other episodes. Go back and watch any episode that I'm on with you or Richard is on with you. And it, it's not that you let the person make the point, mate. Sometimes the person makes a point and you will actually hear a certain word. 
that sets you off or the way they just the tone of how they phrase it and you will interrupt them and not only do you interrupt them but here's the thing i don't think you interrupt them because you thought of a brilliant point you interrupt them because in your brain this is, again obviously i'm being like an armchair psychologist when i say this but at least this is the sense i get okay that in your brain what they're saying triggers you because it sounds wrong okay you haven't yet nailed down exactly why or what they're saying and so what you tend to do seriously go back and watch these is you'll say things along the lines of like you actually think that like you don't actually believe that like there's no fucking way anyone can actually think that if you know like the way you're responding isn't even with a point like initially it's sort of like outrage or like just disbelief that the person can think like, like would you acknowledge that this is a pattern it it possibly happens but like i guess if i were to give an example of this okay let's say that i'm arguing with you over um your validity as a let's say that i think you're a major hack you don't belong on um espn or whatever you're doing any kind of cast or anything okay so let's say we begin this discussion okay so i think that thorin is a major hack because everything he did when starcraft 2 was shit everybody in dota 2 hates him everything he um did in league was absolutely wrong he you know shits on tsm too much just to get her, right if i lay out like 15 points like this right all filled with kind of like half truths or even just just empty points and then we get to the end of the end of that thing and then my point is so this is why Thorin is a massive hack and doesn't deserve to be where he is today if that if I'm allowed to lay out all of that on a public show and then you want to go back and be like well hold on man this isn't necessarily true let's talk about the Dota thing and then we spend the next 15 minutes arguing about your place in the Dota community I've already I've already made you look bad to every other person because you let me get out you know 15 points that may or may not be true that are filled with a bunch of half truths and whatnot so at that point you've already lost the argument after we argue okay. about the Dota thing for 15 minutes yeah. and if I'm right on any point you look so bad if you argue about the Dota thing and I come out on top of that and you're like okay so maybe you're right about the other thing. Let's go to the next thing. It looks like I've already completely trashed you in the argument, and it's not fair at all to do. Okay, but I think you're being very unrealistic and to, un, unreasonable in terms of how you're characterizing that. It's not that either you have to let the person make 15 points, talk for 20 minutes, and then you're allowed to talk, and it's not the other way around. That to not do that means you have to like come in right after and make one point. Some you, you don't understand. Do you honestly? think that it's not a reasonable talk show discussion strategy to let someone make a point that is going to lead into another point and then stop. I, it sounds That's bad never to allowed. say it, I guess, but I don't really like that. No, I don't like uh, letting people build up like uh, like house of cards, like faulty premise after faulty premise, and then make a point. Because whatever point they make after is going to feel stronger Listen, if you've let them Listen, I totally get up. that. I, I understand the premise, okay, that you're mm -hmm. building up here. I don't even think that it, there's no validity to it. It's a, it's a strategy and it's something that's a pet peeve for you. The problem is, okay, I mean, well, okay, let's put it this way. My problem with that is that I'm not doing that to you. No one, no one, Destiny, from the episodes I've seen has ever done that to you. I mean, if now, you to go refer, back, if you watch the early Can I just finish this thing? point quickly? Yeah, yeah, sure. It's, it's a very simple point. It's, it's, it's contained within it. Again, from my own experience as a talk show host, and by the way, I'm not conflating when I was a guest on Unfiltered with being the talk show host, because as you correctly pointed out, as the talk show host, like if I'm on Summoning Insight, whatever it might be, my job is to facilitate the discussion and to kind of keep people in line and make sure the discussion is the king. You know, it's not about ego and who's, who's talking the most or, or one person railroading the other one. But my point is, from my own experience doing that, I try to sort of take some of that etiquette into when I do appear to the guest. So as a result, if someone did that to you, okay, I actually thought about this once. This is, here's the funny thing. I'll tell you right up now. Before I decided to tell Chan Man, by the way, let's get let's get the timeline of that out, okay? Since you constantly misrepresent that. So the timeline was Chan Man contacted me and said, "Do you want to come on an episode of Unfiltered?" This is all after all the past stuff, okay? So I say to him, uh, "No." And then I think to myself in my brain, because the reason is I, I didn't like the discussions we had. I thought they weren't fruitful at all. So in my own brain, I thought. I could just leave it at that. Like, Chaman's not even a close personal friend of mine. I don't really owe this guy anything. I've already done him a bunch of favors coming on his show, you know. I'm sure he's given me exposure as well. Could just say no and leave it at that and say I'd rather not discuss it. But I thought to myself naively, oh, just so he doesn't, like, ask me again in the future or feel offended, like I hate him, you know. I said, I mean... I just don't think that it's possible for me and Destiny to talk, essentially. Like, he just interrupts me all the time. And here's the point I made to Kay. I said, if I, I, I said, I could do that back to him and, and I could essentially kind of do kind of what you're describing here. I won't let you win in that way. I won't let you just attack everyone in my points and decide where the discussion would take place. But what I thought in my own brain was, as someone who's hosted talk shows, would I actually want to watch that personally? I know some people would because they like watching like Car Wreck TV or whatever, you know, and they'd love to see people just like Maury Povich style just arguing and fighting. But personally, as someone who wants to hear like the points and hear like people make cogent responses and interesting digressions, 
I actually wouldn't want to listen to that. So I thought to myself, rather than go on and essentially ruin this guy's show, what I'll just tell him is, it, I, it's not about Destiny, actually. If you ever have a week, in fact, this is what I told him. I told him, if there's ever a week where Destiny can't make it, why not ask me on that episode? Then we could have a proper discussion. Now, why you took that as like, you know, all the other stuff's irrelevant, really, at this point in time. But can you, can you see the point that I'm making? That if other people did exactly, if they were as harsh as you were and as stringent, the discussion wouldn't go very far. I disagree. I, I These are the discussions that I enjoy the most is people that want to go over every single individual point because then by the end of that discussion, you absolutely know, you know, like who, who has the better leg to stand on. I guess I, like if you keep coming at it in terms of like an interview point of view, I agree that for interviews, this is horrible. I would never interview somebody and then cut them off after every point. Like, well, hold on. What do you mean by this? What do you mean? Right? Because they're the subject of the interview. But in a discussion where two people are trying to, um, I, I guess, I think your words were divine truth or be the divinator of truth. Um, um, out of an argument, I, I want people to be arguing in, in the most logical or rational way possible, understanding that there isn't going to be a debate moderator scoring you based on the logic of your debate, but rather an audience that's watching to see, you know, who sounds like they're putting together the most coherent argument, you know? For, for, okay, but first, for, for, okay, did you have an example? Um, oh, there was something that you said in the beginning about, um, oh, you said like people had never done this before. I feel like this was your standard like way to argue in the StarCraft II community. I feel like I can bolster that claim a little bit because of the fact that Too Good essentially echoed the same thing that I was saying. Are we going to repeat that joke a million times over? So what happened was we were doing a Christmas episode of Unfiltered and about four hours into the show, on the show, by the way, people at this point in the show, I remember this quite vividly, had been discussing no joke for maybe 45 minutes, some game that I don't follow or some like detail that I have no interest in. And I'm just sat there. And then at some point, I think too good or something says something and I go off and I explode because it's like three in the morning, you know, and I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, how long, how long is this fucking show going to go on for talking about unloading nonsense? And then I go off like that, doing what he's saying and to joke, to jab at me, because actually... To some degree, I'm very vaguely friendly with Too Good. He says something along the lines of like, well, all you do is make a load of points. And at the end of it, you, you say like, isn't that the case? And, and how can I respond to that? You take that as some sort of like, as though Too Good's some like fucking clinical psychologist who's like uh, broken me down and like actually, you know, used formulas to prove what, exactly what they're like. I don't know why that's the Rosetta Stone for you, mate. That that is the key moment I, in your life and discussing with me. It's not the key That moment, really though. opened your eyes, you know. It, that was another person that had echoed the same sentiments that I'd been saying. I don't know. It's just another person that I can point to saying. Do you know the funny it... thing about it being too good, though, <sighs> yeah. is that too good is one of the most obnoxious people to talk to on talk shows because he doesn't uh, try to make any points. He generally, if he isn't interested in the point, just trolls, which is what he did on that show, you know. Like if you say, like, say you get really impassioned like I was and you're trying to argue that, you know, like people are too uh, one sided looking at the Western side of the Starcraft two versus foreigners, th Koreans thing. OK, then he'll just be like, oh, OK, yeah, yeah. Just like and be very nonchalant. OK, and flippant. That's kind of his way. What was, what was the point you're going to make? Um, oh, I don't know. It, it just, I, I guess I would have to go back and look. It's been like four years, five years now. But I, I, I mean, it, you say that, mate, but you keep citing it yourself. What do you mean you're going to go back and look? You're what the one so I, big. Wait, what do you're I so keep big citing? on having. You've brought that up a million times, mate. Wait, bro, you, might, you must have brought that up publicly. The too good breaking me down thing about at least three times. Oh, I, I guess it's possible. I mean, I've, I mean, I've. So why tried are you to referencing you... something you don't remember yourself and haven't been back and watched? I, no, I don't remember the specific gish gallopings that you made in some of the videos that we talked about. I just remember you doing it a lot. I, don't, I would have to go back and look at them exactly. But I remember in terms of talking about, you know, foreigners versus Koreans, that you would do a thing where you would lay out like five, six, seven, eight points, like three or four, which I would agree. Then every time I would try to stop you, like, well, hold on. This is you'd be like, hold on. Let me finish my point. Like, I very vividly remembering this happening. Like, I don't remember okay. exactly what the specific way, conversation is. Have, have I denied that so far? Um, no, but it seems like we have a fundamental disagreement on how the, how the, I guess the argument should flow, which is more no, or less what I got. absolutely not. Like, I actually have just told you, I had a, I had like a five minute segment there, mate, where I kind of explained that I'm probably not very good, in, not very suited to be a talk show guest precisely because I've almost trained myself to talk in monologues where people don't interrupt me. And in doing so, maybe naively, I'm trying to address all sides of the argument that I can think of to make my point. But the problem is, in doing so, I'm probably a bit long-winded and getting to my point. Like, I don't know why you keep ignoring that as though I'm – as though we're at 180 on this entire matter. And I think it never happens and I never gish call up or whatever you say. Well, then what do we disagree with? But here's the part I don't understand. You imply that you don't do it. 
I don't think like, I, I do. understand if somebody I'm stops balanced. me on a premise, I'll usually let them. Okay, yeah. If you think that what I just said was wrong, then yeah, we can go from there. I I, I don't think I ever tell someone, hold on, let me get all my points out, and then you can go back. I, so you don't I go on rants where the person's trying to get in. You go, no, that's bullshit, man. What in communism? You're gonna tell me this? Oh, and another thing, you don't go on these huge rants where you make three, four, five points in a row. I no, I, I don't. I really don't try to do. If somebody is cutting me off, or somebody wants to stop, and and, and you know, if we're on the it's same. It's not about whether point. you try to, mate. I don't try to literally not let people talk. Sometimes I'm like you're saying, I'm impassioned. I really believe in a point, or I think I've got something important to say, but I don't want the person to cut me off at this point. So I want to get to this next point, and hopefully they'll respond to that. You here's the difference. I can acknowledge I have flaws in terms of speaking. I mean, funnily enough, you could easily tie it into the whole autism thing that you think is hilarious, apparently. But the difference is in your scenario, you still maintain that you're not doing anything wrong here. You're not you're not displaying bad etiquette in I any mean, sense. I'm, you're I'm, being totally fair to the other person, even though you're directing all the conversation and picking them up on tiny points and sometimes even using cheap debate tactics, which we can get into if you want, but when the other person, like me, is perhaps naively or just they're not very skilled at actually debate, they're just thinking they're going to talk to have a discussion, does it in a way that's maybe not the most efficient manner. Somehow, like I'm I'm the one who's fucking up and you don't do any you don't have any flaws in the way that you speak. Uh, so I I mean I admit that I can be impassioned and maybe I you know talk on a little bit too much I admit that the format favors me because most of the people that I bring on uh, don't have experience talking in front of people and maybe it's a little bit nerve wracking being in front of my and if they are, are going to open my chat or something of course but in terms of like in term uh, the term I used earlier was gish gala but in terms of like going over like point after point after point after point and then forcing my way through if somebody is ever cutting me off to disagree with a certain point that I'm making I I'm I'm fairly sure I always stop there I can't think of a I time mean, where I, obviously. Unless, I'm making like the same point yeah. like just one self-contained point like i mean obviously that's just an impasse because we'd have to go back and pull up video clips where this is happening to show either way so it's really no point us going over that part again i mean you've made your sure. case i've my case but here's the problem okay not only do i think actually it's it doesn't work for people to talk over each other constantly you kind of have to let the person make a point then you respond to you what you think is the most important point but not only that this isn't a real life debate the worst thing about Skype, I don't know if you will acknowledge this because apparently you're just not acknowledging anything, but if Skype is actually really bad for discussions where two people talk at once, like yeah, the volume is even off. fucking lower than one. Yeah. Like It's funny, okay? I don't know if he's ever noticed this, but, but it doesn't matter what show Richard's on, even his own show that he does with Sam, but it actually happens to him all the time. So he actually gets cut off his own comments if the other person laughs. Or talk, and so you, you don't hear any of it, you know? Like the mic just goes super low and you just, and, and yeah, so that you didn't hear what you said in the first half, you know, like he actually gets wrecked with it all the time. So as a result, I know that if you're the viewer, that's really frustrating when you're like, what did he say? What did that guy say? And unfortunately, even worse, the person who's talking there won't know because they're not on the recording end that they got cut off and that they didn't say part of it. So actually, logistically, by the way, it's not your fault, but Skype is, is terrible. For no, that. I'm, I'm totally familiar with what you're talking about. I know, this you know, happens, adding yeah. in. Adding in this element just makes exacerbates it essentially because at least in a normal debate, okay, people might hear what both people said and then or they can go back and listen, but you actually can't do that in this scenario. The, the volume is literally lowered. So, okay, put it this way. This is one of the reasons why in general I don't like the approach you're talking about where you constantly hammer the one point you think is wrong. Like, first of all, again, we're guests on a talk show. It's not an interview. Therefore, it's not up to you to determine who wins or loses. And until you're satisfied, you can't go on with any of the discussion. Again, you want to talk about the guy who's the observer, the spectator. It has to be entertaining for him, okay? So once we reach a point where we both clashed heads three or four times, we've tried to make points, we're making no headway, you got to just let it go and go, okay, we're not going to agree on that. Let's try another point. Because I'll tell you, okay, I'm sure you've watched some of these guys. I can't know because obviously I don't know what your life's like. But presumably you have watched or listened to podcasts from Sam Harris or Stephen Molyneux, right? Unfortunately, yeah. Okay, so these are two guys who, if you did an interview with them, might make really interesting points or intelligent points, but they are fucking terrible at debate. And the whole reason why is exactly what I'm describing about what you do, which is that the second the debate starts, okay, unless the person is in any way aligned with some of their thinking, they will immediately get the person, usually someone less experienced than themselves, so it's a good example to bring up here, and they will just find the first weakness, sometimes not even in the person's point, but the way they said it. Like, ah, oh, but you didn't say that. You said exactly this wording as though, like, you know, that guy was issuing a manifesto from his brain and everything was exactly eloquent. They will get that. And if, and if it's a really bad example where the person's like, well, no, that's not what I meant, 
they, they actually ruined the whole podcast. I've seen many episodes. It's funny. I like to listen to those guys, but I hate listening to their debates. So Sam Harris had one where a guy, I mean, it's actually quite, quite a recent one where he had that Jordan Peterson guy on and they never even had a discussion, mate. The, one of the first things that one of them said was something about truth. And they then argued for an hour and a half over what the word true, like, objectively means. Well, this is a Stella little... Molyneux is even worse because he will just use the debate tactics just to argue over, like, you know, like some some rookie to being on Skype, like, tried to make a point, but then he just fucked up the wording, you know, and he'll just go back to that over and over again and bring that, you know. So can you see what I mean? How, it, for the spectator at least, it ruins the, it ruins the discussion. So you that's... never get to any of the actual points, you know. There's a couple differences here. For the Sam Harris discussion, I think I actually specifically listened to that. Um, I don't. I think it was talking to Jordan Peterson where, where they started off. It was like an hour and a, hour and a half conversation. Um, the problem there is that, un unfortunately, whether anybody likes it or not, when you're speaking philosophy, your your terms and your semantics are actually incredibly important. Um, you you can't just mix up words or say like truth or define something and be wishy washy on it. Like I, I mean, in that realm, your definition of what you're talking about can can be paramount, right? Like it's incredibly sure, but important. Two things things okay one first of all esports isn't anything like that like none of us well, no, are experts I'm just speaking that, in regards specifically to, yeah, i to agree but here's the other thing okay and this is this is specifically to that point though the the reason they both fucked that podcast up is that it's not like you both have to agree on the definition to have the discussion all you need to know actually this is where they both fucked up is what the other person's definition is and then each time they refer to that thing you're in your brain gonna think right he means this by that and that's gonna be the reference from which you're gonna set up the rest of the discussion so later on when he says something about truth you don't have to say right well he has to we have to have agreed on what exactly truth means because you can see when especially if you're people who have very divergent philosophies on life you're never gonna get a, a, a lexicon a dictionary that's that's the same you know so but that's like, can you see true. how in that scenario they fucked up the discussion themselves? no that's not true in philosophy you have to be arguing from the same semantic viewpoint you have to agree on definitions before you go forward that's like that in any academic discipline you can't have two people arguing when they both define words differently because all of the arguments that flow from those definitions are, are going to be completely missing each other this is true of, of any academic discipline whether it's music or any form of art or any form of science you can't be talking from two completely different foundations i think that but but this is just for the sam harris thing i agree with what you're saying for the for so the then Molyneux. by your logic people with different people with di radically divergent ideologies can't have arguments Kind of. So let, let me use an example, I guess. I have a couple other things that I was going to bring up, but let me use an example. Let's say that I'm having a debate with somebody about the merits of immigration, okay? Let's say that one guy believes that Europe is falling apart, that there are riots all over the place, that Sharia law zones are taking over all of Europe. And let's say that my contention is that that's not quite true, okay? We cannot have a dis we cannot have a, an argument or, or any kind of debate or discussion if both of us don't reconcile those points because everything that flows from his mouth is going to be you know, presupposing that Europe is falling apart because of riots and mass immigration. And if that is actually true, then all of his arguments make sense. Whereas if I think that the issues are overblown and they're not as big a deal as people are making them out to be, all of my arguments make sense. So how can either of us have a discussion if we don't agree on these basic premises? I don't understand the part that you just said there. So somehow, if you in any way allow him to have his own definition of something, all of his arguments make sense. Yes, it's like begging the question, yeah. I don't know why you always say begging the question, mate. Like, have you ever looked up what that actually means? Like, the, the colloquial usage of that term is not I'm not using the not colloquial usage, Thorne. Begging the question is where you essentially state the conclusion in the argument. That is what begging the question means. So if another guy is saying mass immigration is destroying Europe, now let's talk about whether or not immigration is good or bad. He's begged the question. Well, immigration is destroying Europe. Of course it's bad. No, because that's an that's that's an entirely dishonest dichotomy you've just set up there. Like, why is that the only way that the guy can talk? Why can't he say, from my perspective, the immigration has ruined Europe and the, it's had a drastic effect on the economy, and I see that as this. And then you say, well, I disagree with it. You see what I mean? I've just I've just shown how the discussion continues. Well, yeah, it, well, but that's what I say. Maybe, you disagree maybe we've that... got to the. I think we've got to the crux of this here, Stephen. You think that you have to acknowledge or accept everything people say, or you can't keep talking to them. Yes. Otherwise, you're talking and completely you're not agreeing on fact. You can make this about any argument. Let's say that you want to talk about. There's abortion. very little facts in the discussions we we had, mate, and most of the discussions you're having with the people <sighs> who are viewers. Okay, you you aren't. Right. Okay. You're not a political scientist, mate. Most of these are your opinions. They're things that you've gathered. It's a perspective filtering the information that came to you. It's not a lot of facts, you know. They're your opinions. I'm sure they could change. So I don't know why you keep making it sound like you're tallying up 
all the facts and that you're going to get to the bottom of something. It's not about tallying up. It's having two people agree on what reality is before they, they discuss the possible implications of said reality. Let me give you another example. Let's say that you have somebody that is, in the United States, we call it pro-life and pro-choice. I don't know what you call in Europe. Absolutely. But it's, sure. Okay. Pro-abortion or anti-abortion is essentially what it is. Let's say that on one hand, a person believes that a fetus is a living human being. That is a human. That is a life from the moment sure. it becomes a zygote. And the other person doesn't believe that. If you disagree on those fundamental points, no reasonable discourse can come from either of those people. Absolutely you... can, mate. Have you ever heard of something called E prime? No. It was, well, um, you might have heard of, have you ever heard of general semantics? Uh, no. It's basically like a field of, I mean, I don't know what the term would be for the meta field itself, but it was invented by this Polish guy, ironically, called Alfred Korzybski. And basically, the crux that I'm getting to in, in, within this abstract point is general semantics is about the way like your brain works based on the language you use and like how it, you know, defines what model you're going to think within and then what you can think within that those limitations. So there was a concept within general semantics called E prime. And it was a way of reformulating the English language to take out what they called the is of identity, which is where you do exactly this. So that one of the most famous examples, this is why I bring it up, is exactly what you're saying right now, which is that if you have a discussion, you're kind of tying it into what I said, between people who have radically divergent philosophies, I, uh, worldviews, ideologies, okay? So the group of people who say, I'm pro-life, therefore, a fetus is a human being. That's their position. And the other people are like, well, I'm, uh, I'm pro-choice. So a fetus is not a human being, right? I agree. If they say that, you can never even get off the ground. Because that is the basis from which everything about fetus is going to, every time each of them says fetus, it means something different to them. And therefore, they can't even get into the other guy's headspace. But here's the example that they actually give in E prime, which is that if one person says a fetus seems like a human to me at this point in their life or whatever, then the other person can say a fetus seems like, doesn't seem like one to me. And for these reasons, and they can then discuss the reasons as to why it isn't. And they can then discuss because to them, it seems that way, what they then take as a next point on from that. And the other person can actually debate those points. I agree with you that you can't get to the end of the discussion. And at the end, somehow have resolved the initial point. If, if anything, that's the issue, isn't it? We're trying to get people who have initial conditions that are never going to agree to at least be able to have a discourse. Now, you're saying they can't have an intelligent discourse. Can you see in any way how I might have elucidated that it's possible at least? No, I, t I still completely disagree. Um, in so any you can't see that. I, I, okay, I'll use your premise. So the person says a fetus is a human being. The other one says a fetus is not a human being. Mm -hmm. Now, if they both keep going over that point, I agree, they don't go anywhere. They can't have any more discourse until they sort that out. But if they say it seems like it to me for this reason, they could now discuss the reasons, for example. Can you see how they couldn't do that while they were just both saying it is? Well, no, they're, they're, are, they're reconciling both of their premises. This is what I encourage. It can't be reconciled because if it's just in the language. If they can't reconcile them, they can't, they can't continue the conversation. I've just shown that they can. They can have a conversation that could still be fruitful and have some discussion. Now, listen, it will never resolve because they come from such divergent ideologies and they can't agree on the definition of a word. I, I'm not debating that that's even the premise i'm coming in with but they absolutely can have an interesting fruitful lengthy discussion in which they each get to make points and sometimes they count points so you know what maybe a 10 points down the line there's something they agree on even Definitely though they have such not. initial points of view it's impossible to agree on any point it doesn't if you don't matter agree if they points. agree or not if the conclusions are following from unsound arguments it's relevant whether or not they they arrive you know do you think every conclusion follows from the initial premise and the basic words said at the beginning it should that's the goal, what, right? What does should mean? Should, according As to in who? that should be your goal in having any kind of thought that it flows logically from, from more fundamental things. That should be your goal. Yeah, thinking to yourself, but when you're talking to someone else, I, I'm not, I don't meet robots, mate. So actually, the majority of people I meet in life, well, I'm not going to agree with them. They're not going to agree with me. Even worse, because we're just fucking talking apes using vibrations through the air, they're not even really going to necessarily understand everything I say. As in, it's not, it's not a very good communication medium, you know. If we could somehow hook our brains up to each other and communicate directly, maybe we'd maybe they'd see exactly what I'm trying to say or they'd access while I'm saying it, you know, what experiences informed that. I'm sure that would be fantastic. And even if they didn't agree, they'd get something more out of it. But you're already essentially compromising just by speaking to them. So the problem with your form of argument is that this is what politics has become today, that nobody wants to address any fundamental beliefs, but instead everybody talks over each other. How can no, two people I have— I didn't say that.
the, I said that you don't just keep going over the same point for like an hour and a half. But you have to. For if you want to talk about what did we we said abortion, immigration. If you want to talk about global warming, right? If two people have fundamentally different beliefs on whether or not climate change even exists, let alone if humans contribute to it, how are you possibly going to have a discussion on possible policy implementations on how to address it with the other person? You cannot have reasonable discussions when both of you are arguing from such vastly different premises. I notice in these premises, you always use things that start with some kind of a scientific basis. And therefore, whatever scientific method... The abortion thing is not a scientific data, basis. The well, I mean, that's ex it absolutely is because people will say, oh, well, if you look at a, a fetus in this way, using these metrics of science then it wouldn't classify as a human, like, you know, for no, example, no, no. Science brain, does not classify, brain processing is not going on. Science does not classify when we become a human. This is a philosophical Absolutely, question. but you're using scientific basis to arrive at that. Sure, but then you have to use philosophy to bridge the is-ought gap. You're not using science here. You, you have to use philosophy to say, because of this scientific fact, he ought to be treated as a human. But here's the issue. You are setting up a scenario that is nothing like any of the discussions you and I have ever had on a talk show. But it we is. have never discussed fundamental philosophy on some like deep issue that has in, in society no resolving factor. We are discussing things like that, by the way, neither of us are experts in in general. Like I might be an expert on some low level in as much as maybe I've like interviewed a lot of people in that field. Some, like on a, an in indirect sense, I might be an expert, but most discussions like big discussion talk, like for example, are, are Koreans killing StarCraft 2? That's not really something where either of us have the facts even. Sure, but when, when but if you start to build up a premise like um, like you say something like foreigners are lazy and can never compete and then move on to the next one, well, if I disagree with that, that premise could be a massive building block to your argument. We can't just talk past each other without addressing you know massive differences in our initial beliefs. I mean, that's all you've done there is set up the argument of the way that you would have it. Like I don't think I would say something like that or as ridiculously can. And by the way, there's another issue. So I'm sure every time you write a tweet, you don't write. I think this, in my opinion, my perspective on it is this, because eventually it has to be a shorthand, right? You have to just say opinion. And then people are like, well, that's just your opinion. That's the stupidest reply on the internet, right? It's like, well, obviously it is. I mean, I can't preface everything I say with that. If I unpack everything I say in that sense, we'll never get anywhere in the discussion. We'll I never agree. Be able to that's talk. why I don't have serious discussions on Twitter. And I invite people on to talk via voice because I think in voice you do have But this the is the problem. To I actually think that you do that a little bit on some of these shows. Like one of the problems is the person says the equivalent of that. So the person says like, well, foreigners are lazy. Now, when they say that, they don't necessarily mean every foreigner. They might mean as a generality foreigners are or there's some core quality to the lifestyle of foreigners that could be contrasted as lazy. Now, they might be about to make those points, but you just start going, oh, you can't say that, man. What about like nanowows in Korea? And, like, how? and also another thing, like, you really believe that like, oh, so you believe that when Hawk went to Korea, he was just sat around dicking around, was he, man? And that's all he was doing. Like, you don't know anything. Do you know how cool, do you know, how, you know, see what I mean? Like, that's. That's not a really unfair characterization the way I just did that right there. I tried to channel you in a sense. Sure. No, I think, but I, I mean, I think I would say something like that. If you want to start a, a massive point about how foreigners will never be competitive with Korea, then yeah, I would immediately stop you and say, well, hold on. What about Huck? What about Naniwa? What about Scarlet? Like, these are foreigners. But you would say that I'm, I shouldn't do that because we should just move on past that? No, I'm just saying that you can't literally unpack everything the guy's saying. Like, you could say, oh, do, well, and a good question there would be, you mean all follower, or foreigners? And the person goes, well, no, of course not. I mean, this is, in that case, you would be doing a good thing. You would be helping the person unpack their argument. So here's one of the problems. When you do the style that I said, where you dictate the questions, you stop the person when you want to. They don't necessarily stop you. Sometimes they let you speak. I mean, you, you actually seem legitimately blind to that notion. That, I mean, I'm yeah, stopping them, but like, it's in a point that they're choosing to make. I mean, they initially steered the, the conversation in that direction, and then I'm just kind of... Do you legitimately think that when you make all these points, there's never anything faulty in it. Um, I, I mean, if they are, I welcome somebody to point it out. I mean, yeah, I mean, you I, say I'm that, but like I'm... I say, very few people ever do what you do back to them, mate. I've just almost never seen. I mean, I mean maybe I've Richard some Lewis has done it. it a few times to me, and there are people that I've yeah. You know why he does it, mate? I noticed he literally started doing that after what happened between me and you, and then he, me and him had talked about why I didn't go on the show anymore. And I noticed the second I pointed out stuff like, he'll sometimes cut you off in a sentence. That's when he did what I just pointed out. He'd go, I will finish this sentence, or later on, he wouldn't let you go on a digression where you, you made these like really hyperbolic statements. I mean, here's the problem, okay? When That's I said- I have no problem with this, by the way. That's totally fine. I invite people and I welcome people to do it. I don't want to let somebody let me talk on for five minutes and build a bunch of points up that they don't agree with. Yeah, stop me right away. Sure, of course, because I believe that people have have to be on the same page and your initial foundation in order to have a productive discussion.
I mean, I can only say from my own experience as a talk show host, if people just circle around one point for an hour and never come to even like the agreement that like, okay, that's your position. Now let's try it something else. You, it won't be a very interesting show. Sure, and I can you, say from listen, my position. To you, it might be fascinating. Now, there's another problem with this destiny, okay, which is that maybe when you do these talks on your stream, it's different. You're talking to the person. But would you acknowledge that sometimes – you have actually taken really extreme positions as in what you heard, you heard someone say something you thought was very extreme because I know this is one of the things that used to annoy me when you were unfiltered is that when it's a topic you want to talk about, you lasered in, you have to nail every word that they're saying. They have to answer what you're saying. But when it's a topic where they're talking and you haven't heard anything yet that triggers you, you're literally playing games and looking at Twitch chat and looking at your Twitter and doing the equivalent of like skim reading, but listening. And so you're not even listening to what they're saying properly. And then you're bringing up stuff where sometimes you bring up something that they said two minutes ago, exactly what you're asking them about, but you weren't even listening. I don't think this happens. I, I can't think of a time recently Mate, where this has happened, dude. You've streamed and played Hearthstone while we did Unfiltered. Dude, this is unfiltered video game conversations about stuff that happened four or five years ago, and it's probably when you guys were talking about something that I had no contribution to. If you guys are playing CSGO or talking about CSGO... <laughs> it's convenient that it's four or five years ago when it's you <laughs> I talking mean, all in these of scenarios. My, you're but, the one right, that jumped into a, a Kia thread Destiny, about something that I just talked about recently. Do you remember we had that discussion just like the day before I went to Poland? Do you remember when that was? <laughs> I don't remember. Three Have years ago. Have a guess. Ago. What year do you think it was? 2013? Oh, 2014? My goodness. Three years ago. And then do you remember when Too Good said that comment about me? I think that was actually December of 20, either 2012 or 2013. Might have been 2012. Okay, so three so or four years when ago. It's you, when it's you, three or four years ago, stop bringing that up, man. Like, I'm sure things have changed since then. When it's me, three or four years ago, may as well be a second ago, right? I, that's the oh, that's the last conversation I have to go on you. But I roast you about recent political things all the time on Twitter. I, I, don't, I don't know why you keep thinking that I bring this up, like, all the time. I guess I might when I run into you, but that's because you seem to bring up old things as well. I, I mean, So I let's bring up some of the debate tactics then, because this is kind of what we're getting into here. <sighs> I, so one of the things that you do... Is... For, for the for the record, real fast, like in okay. any of the recent political discussions I've had with anybody in terms of all these politics, I I, I don't do something where I'm like not paying attention at all. Sca- I don't know I where mean, you've got this. It's all very convenient, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> at the end of the day, I'm being judged on stuff from three years ago, but we're I'm not, not allowed judging to be... you on anything and... from three years ago. I'm just saying that this is how I felt like you argued. I don't have any complaints about your interviews or any of the content you do. In fact, I've sa- I'm pretty sure I even said it in the particular Kia thread that I have a big respect for you and what you do in terms of talking about esports and anything and everything on your show is very well laid out and very rational. That I. I mean, I'm not attacking you right now for shit you've said three or four years ago. Maybe maybe you have changed your terms of discussion, but that's the last I have to go on. And I mean, it wasn't just with me. You did this on like the Summoner's Insight or whatever, like other shows as well with people. Like, But but I mean, I, I'm, I'm not constantly holding that over you or anything. I don't know where you get this impression that I'm doing this. So here's the issue, okay, is when you talk to people, at least me and people like Richard Lewis, because I've seen the more recent episodes of Richard Lewis. This is like not even a year ago. One of the things you also do is you have a really cheap debate tactic that if anyone used to you, again, conversation would drown to a halt, which is one thing you do, okay, Mm -hmm. is somebody will say something that would require a level of expertise, okay, or it would require like a a study or some facts, Mm -hmm. and you will say to them in the heat of a discussion show, like, well, link me to a source on that. I've never seen that. That's not the case. Now, here's the thing, okay, I get it. You're absolutely right. If we were trying to divine truth, they should have to come up with something. And this is an area where most people can't do that, by the way. Like, I think probably the only person I've ever seen who can do it is maybe Ben Shapiro, where somehow he can remember every, you know, study that said this or which pupil had what stat. You know, he, he's he's an alien in that sense. I don't know how he does it. But the problem is when you do this again, I'm not saying you can't do it, but imagine someone did it to you, mate. Like, imagine when you were talking to Richard, right? I remember so vividly. People, people- there was a moment. People do this to me all the time, and if I say something that's incredibly controversial or whatever, I totally invite people. So my default stance on this is I do not believe that I'm arguing with anybody that is an expert in any of these fields. I personally am not an expert in any of these fields, and I admit as much every single debate. Typically, when I am citing a stat, and I will say this openly, I'm usually citing literature from the people leading in these fields. That is how I frame every discussion. So when somebody comes out and they say something that I believe is completely incorrect because of what I've read from leading experts, I not only do I usually say, do you have like a source for that? Or can you tell me where you read that? I usually say like, I understand that you don't mind not have it like on hand right now. I said that to Lauren Southern. I said that to Sargon. And I said that to John Tron. Like, right? like, sure, I understand you might not have a discussion like immediately, but that's a very surprising thing. I've never heard that before, right? I, I do not present. And, and I noticed that you mischaracterized me like this in that Kia thread saying that I'm an expert psychologist, sociologist. I have very specifically said that I am not an expert at any of these fields. I'm only citing expert opinion. If you disagree- I didn't say with- that. I said an armchair. 
Okay, well, I don't consider myself an armchair you don't, expert. You think that's an unfair context? Yes, So the context of is that there's a guy on a forum trying to just give his opinion on what the law is. By the way, probably doesn't know anything about the law, probably doesn't even have the basic information. Mm -hmm. Now, is that not what you do on certain topics? No, or have, have I missed not. something? Are you if secretly I'm arguing a polymath strongly, in I'm, 10 fields? If I'm arguing, uh, I'm not a polyman. If I'm arguing strongly in favor of a particular thing, I'm generally citing expert leading opinion in that field. I don't have a, I don't think I'm intelligent enough to have my own opinion on successful immigration okay, policy. Okay. Okay. So I remember you were talking to Richard Lewis and you were weighing in on Brexit. Because I know, by the way, whenever people from Europe talk about American politics, your go-to sort of Twitter line is sort of like, you know, like, what well, would you know about you American politics? I don't think or, I've ever said Brexit? that before, but okay. Uh, well, we'd have to look it up again, so irrelevant, okay. really. But when, you, when you're giving your opinion on Brexit, okay, Richard starts talking about multiculturalism in the UK and the fact that Brexit wasn't just about racist people wanting to get rid of immigrants, that it was also about like economic issues and how people see the government and for example, the European government actually doing, not being connected to like the local needs of people there, etc. Essentially trying to reason that there are other issues at hand other than racism. You literally tell him that that's not the main thing and that your opinion is that the, that, I mean, he actually gets this out of you, is that in general, British people are racist on the whole and hate brown people. That was your words, hate brown people. I think I think that was your words. Sure, just you believers this? to be fair, but yeah. I'm pretty sure my I'm pretty sure the conversation was more so along the lines of him asking. So most of the leavers, so the majority, like we're saying, most of the leavers were just people who are racist. We're voting on Im on largely on immigration and fear of brown people. Yeah. No, 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 no. Destiny, what does immigration have to do with fear of brown people? Wow, that seems to be majorly the people, the type of people that people don't want in their country. You know what's hilarious about this is this yeah. is a, a perfect example of how dishonest a lot of people are in the current American political cri climate. So if Donald Trump says anything that implies he wants to make immigration harder or like, for example, like block people coming in the country, people who have spent their whole political career. So basically every mainstream politician is against illegal immigration on its most basic point, right, which is that you shouldn't let people illegally come in the country who are unskilled and just take up jobs and potentially get, you know, use the resources. Everyone's against that, mate. No one, no politician who's ever been like, you know, a presidential candidate and actually was in with a chance of winning the race was ever running on the position of like, illegals are all here, so let's just declare them all like an amnesty and let anyone else come. So no one ever had that premise, but they make it sound like there's only two options. Either you think that immigration should be left the way it is or it's fine for illegals to come in or you're racist. There's only those two positions. You can't ever be the guy, for example, who might be an expert on economic theory and they say, oh, well, you can't actually it burdens the system if you let illegal people come in. That You can never be that guy. Can you see that you're essentially doing the same thing about the British example? I, I'm, I'm not connecting them. I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure that in my conversation with Richard Lewis, I specifically asked him to cite a concern from any of these areas, and he was unable to do so, and that's kind of why I, rile, I riled him on it. He couldn't give me any economic issues. He couldn't give me any issues pertaining to um, immigration or the job market or anything relating. It was just, uh, I think, uh, we need to leave the EU because of reasons. And he even and admitted as much— what? Okay. And okay, he let's, even let's admitted set, as much to like the, the thing about the NHS or whatever, uh, you know, getting more money from that uh, Farage dude or whatever driving around, that all of that was kind of, you know, blown up and kind of a lie as well. And that sure. the United Kingdom does have more control over its borders than a lot of people realize because they weren't part of that, uh, the Schengen agreement or whatever. Um, and they did have as much control of their borders now as they would have in the EU or whatever. But I mean, what I don't understand is you just yourself brought up a reason that isn't about hating immigrants. Which is that if you, okay, so it's a very famous thing in the UK, Stephen, that everyone says the NHS is shit. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, the way that tabloids tend to rile people up is implying that, like, we should just shut the NHS down. You know, it's like a way, it's a failed project. More intelligent people tend to think, well, no, it needs more funding. You know, I mean, essentially, unless we're going to rehaul the whole system, you need to make, give them more money to have hospital beds and all the things that, you know, the, all the problems people bring up. So, if someone who is just a pleb, and by the way, most people are uh, single issue voters, mm -hmm. if they hear, oh, I don't know, like let's say they don't understand what the point of the European Union is. So they don't know what the point in staying is, what will we gain? They don't really know what we'll gain when we're leaving. And you just tell them, well, if we leave, millions can be put into the NHS that aren't already. Can you see how that might be a positive to leave, even though it has nothing to do with immigration? Uh, sure. But you, but but you can't though, mate, because you just brought up that it was obvious based on your whatever sources you're citing that everyone was a single issue voter who said to leave. Well, the majority, okay, 
and that they mainly did it because they hate brown people. It seems like when you look at majority sentiment, it seemed like one of the biggest reasons why people voted to leave. What do you mean by seems like in this sense? Like, do you have surveys that you read? Are there experts that you've gone on? Yeah, let me see if I can find it. No, I mean, at the time, did you have it? Yeah, it seemed there, there was a lot of sentiment around. There was different polls or whatever. People were like, oh, you know, immigration was a massive reason why people, there were people that were calling into that, um, who is it, the James O'Brien dude, where he would talk to people and eventually strip away that the primary reason why people voted for it was immigration. Every single person that I talked to, I understand okay. the selection bias there, seemed like immigration was the leading thing. Right, like, this is something you do, St Destiny, that I'm yeah, glad you brought up. Again, I know, the which selection is that... bias that I'm totally aware of, and I just admitted as much when I said it to you. Yes, absolutely. As in what happens is you're allowed to use things that happen in your life, Except experiences. You're allowed to sort of construct how you would react in a situation. But if a person does that, you immediately tear that down as like fallacious and tell them they can't do that. So, for example, Richard tried to explain to you that in his own personal life experience, he lives in Birmingham, which is actually one of the most multicultural cities in all of England. Like famously, it's where a lot of the people who are from like India, et cetera, all were settled. And that's why actually they have like famous like types of curries that were actually invented there, you know. And so he tried to explain to you that from his own life experience, you know, it was fairly well integrated. And maybe it wasn't like, I don't know, whatever experience you have in America. Like, I don't, I'm not sure where you live and what that scenario is like. So he tried to explain this, right? Now, he wasn't saying that's a fact that proves it all and that that's like the overriding reason. He was trying to give you some context from his own life. Now, you said, oh, so you know every single British person. Oh, so you're saying that like everyone's like, like you did this, okay. But I would, I'd understand if you were just a stickler, like you present yourself to in this discussion where you have these principles and you have your own etiquette for debate and you never violate it. The problem with that is... Every time it's some other discussion, like, for example, say you have an expert on who knows more than you, like when you talk to Martin Shkreli, as soon as he gets you onto his facts and you don't have facts, you will go to, well, I mean, from my own life experience, you know, it wasn't that way or, well, no, nope, I've never do done this before. This doesn't happen. No. When I talked to Martin Shkreli, I deferred to him on things that I even knew he was wrong about. Because I didn't he say was you didn't, mate, but you, did, but you do bring up anecdotal evidence in this case. I believe no, in the, when? I didn't watch the other one, but I, th I think in that one you were bringing up something along those lines. No, half of our debate was how anecdotal evidence isn't valid evidence. I might occasionally say like, well, I've, you know, I've had this experience. I understand it might not be representative, but like, what is your counter to that? But like, I very, I don't, I don't think I've ever in the past five years said like, well, I met this one dude. So you're wrong. Or but I this met is this what guy. I don't get though, mate. Like, I, I, okay, let's accept that premise initially. Okay. This is what I don't get about that is that if you'd actually read a, a sociological study that had been done, and, it, and I don't know what the criteria are, you know, you have to meet as to what the sample size and stuff, like, neither of us do. But let's imagine you'd read one that was really well done, and it seemed very unbiased, and it had come to the conclusion that there was an underlying bias in British people, that that's why they voted to leave. I would say at that point in time, absolutely, go forwards, have that as a basis for your opinion, but you even started listing off right now, oh, well, there was these polls, mate, when people talked about polls that were to do with other stuff, I've seen you on Twitter say that, well, you know, what like polls to stop me and everything and like polls can be skewed and stuff why do you did you see what i mean how there's a double no, standard I, I, here? you're mischaracterizing what i've said before I, okay I, how I, did i mischaracterize it I, I don't i'm not even sure what exactly are you saying that i don't trust any polls is that the argument that i've made i'm saying that you trust polls when it helps you and that that's something that can be a basis that you okay, can build can an you opinion of, an example of you don't that trust I, polls what's a poll that i don't trust uh i mean the fact that like hillary clinton was going to win the election but, but i did trust that poll i thought she was going to win what do you mean no, when people say like, oh, well, 98% of people said Hillary Clinton. I don't even, that's probably a ridiculous number, but that's what they always claim. You're like, oh, well, that, that depends on which poll it was. And No, because there is no poll that said 98% of people, or there was a 98% chance of Hillary winning. That was a Huffington Post article. Most reasonable polls, I followed 538 for coverage, had it at like a 30-70 split with, with, with um, Trump winning being within like one or two deviations of like a possibility. Like, uh, but... I, I don't think uh, you're saying that I'm like picking and choosing polls. Do you have another example of this? Like I, if I said that that poll wasn't legitimate, that's because it wasn't a poll. There was no poll that said. Just literally. OK, so first of all, are you one of these people that thinks that what that the outcome of a poll always tells you what the question asked was and how it was weighted? No, of course not. That's a very important part of polling. It's probably the most important part. Like, sure, if you don't, arguably, yes. If you don't really know the questions. Like I'll give you a, a perfect example. OK is there was actually a poll where this is one that it's funny because in general, I do think there's a lot of issues with uh, like Islamic terrorism and, and radicalization. But one thing that I do think is a real issue is that if you ask, there's a famous way of asking a poll to people who are in all Middle Eastern countries, right? And what you do is you say to them, were the attacks on September the 11th, dot, dot, dot. And then you get like six choices, right? Mm -hmm. And the choices are like, you know, not at all justified. 
slightly justified, uh, like, you know, maybe justified, like pretty justified, absolutely justified. Now, the problem with that poll, I'm sure you can already see this being an intelligent person, is that unless the Islamic person says the, the first one, not at all justified, even though they might think they're saying, well, I mean, obviously not justified in the sense of like you shouldn't kill people. But, you know, like they did insult Islam at times and the foreign policy. If they vote anything else, even if it's like slightly justified, it's very easy to take that poll and say, you know, let's say 90 percent of, of Muslims think that the attacks on September the 11th were in any way justified. Yeah, Ben Shapiro does this. I'm aware of this. What, what about yeah, so that's I mean, we can all see that that's a problem, right? Because the problem there is you're conflating the guy who actually hasn't really understood the way the question's phrased with the guy who's like, I want all Americans to be burned to death because of Islam. Like, they're, they're not in any way the same opinion. Okay, but, but I don't think I do like this. I don't think I take a poll like this and say, like, well, look, you can obviously see, you know, this thing right but here. But you just did that. Did because what? there was polls in the UK that you saw that suggested most people only had that issue to vote on. That was the main issue. You then made it that the majority of the Leave voters, as though they were even involved in the poll or it represented them in terms of how it was set up, they were the ones who then actually... That, that shows that that's all they voted on. I mean, and it then, seemed to be the I majority. Re, uh, I, like, I feel like we're talking about two different things. But, okay. I've got a final point to make and you can reply, okay? Which is that just when you said the talk show one, I wouldn't even bring that up, mate. Like the poll one's not bad because polling when it's done well can be like a small sample size, but representative. Come on, mate. We all know the way talk shows work on the on radio. They screen the callers. It's like they ha they pick the guy who's got a stupid opinion or they pick the guy. They don't just pick the guy who's like, well, uh, got a very reasonable but boring humdrum opinion, do they? Why would they let him on the air? Uh, yeah, I mean, I agree. Yeah, but why would... You, here's the part I don't get, though. In your world, this rational world, why are you even bringing that up as some sort of, like, tertiary evidence that helps you decide something? Why would you ever bring up, like, people who were on a talk show? I, it just seems to be very, very, very common sentiment. I see it all over internet forums. I see it all over Twitter. I see it on various internet talk shows. I see it criticized in news articles. Um, here's, you know, one PDF that I guess did a study or breakdown of how people voted or whatever that, that says that primarily uh, identity politics and, um, you know, feelings of, against immigration, the three, uh, the three broad based coalition of voters, which is more wide ranging uh, than the left behind people. These included three I main groups, affluent Euro skeptics, the older working class and a smaller group of economically advantaged or disadvantaged anti-immigration voters like i don't know that's that just seemed to me if i'm wrong then f feel free anybody can throw a, a link or throw you know different types of polling information so how is you bringing up what you heard you what you saw on twitter only through your own eyes what it's you not heard just on, what I saw on twitter though it has to do with articles i've read with polls i've read okay? they all say the i'm not same saying thing. that i'm saying why bring up this one point okay about things you heard on a talk show things you saw on twitter and then say that richard's point about living in birmingham for all those years is like irrelevant. Like that shouldn't even be brought up. If he has other data to back it up, then it could be part of the story. But if that's all no, no, you no, have. Destiny. Remember, we're not allowed to make like seven points at once. Each point has to have its own validity and merit, right? Yeah. So what I don't get is if you have this, by the way, I'm, I'm kind of agreeing with you here. If you have the study, just go with the study. What's the point in bringing up the part that essentially, like, can you not acknowledge that in, at least in this minor sense, you're kind of doing what he does. Now, maybe you're doing it on top of much better argumentation. Maybe you have the facts and the evidence. But in that sense, it's almost pointless to do that, right? It's unnecessary to add in the little bit that's kind of what he's doing that you don't like. Uh, I guess. I mean, it's flowery. It makes for a better talk show. I mean, I guess you could argue that it's unnecessary, but I don't think it's necessarily horrible um, to do. And I mean, I, I guess it could bolster your point a little bit if you've got personal experience, as long as you're backing up with data as well. But... I mean, sometimes when I'm talking about management issues or whatnot, sometimes I'll bring up some of the experience that I had at the casino, knowing that it's not necessarily representative. But if I'm, you know, if I've got other data to back it up, it'll say like, oh yeah, I agree, like this happened as well. I don't think that's necessarily the worst thing in the world to do. My issue is with people that solely do that and nothing more. I, if somebody brings okay. up like an anecdote as part of like an overall experience, like, oh, you know, if you look at this and this and this, and then also like, I mean, I've even seen this bubble and it's like, okay, sure. Yeah, sure. Like that's By all. By the way, I agree with you on that point. I think that's a, that's probably like, it's like, it's a bit like that famous saying, okay, that like eyewitness testimony is the weakest testimony. It's like, well, let, don't you, it's like, if, if that's all you've got, it's all you can, it's all you can go on. But ideally that should be like bottom of the list. You know, you want facts, you want things that like can be proven with secondary sources. You want studies by experts. You don't just want a person saw and remembered this. That's, that's not really yeah, a very course. good discussion point to go on. Of course. So another thing is when you characterize people like you did with the thing about the armchair lawyer, 
when they've said something, which by the way, they clearly aren't an expert on, like they would never be considered a leading person in their field. But again, I think most people, and maybe, I'm, okay, I'll, let's not say most people, because that's kind of like what I don't like when you do. But so I would say when I look at their comment, okay, I'm taking into account that they're not telling me they're an expert in this field. If they did, I think they'd probably mention, by the way, I'm an expert in this field. Like for example, famously, you see this from people who are like pre-med students. They will, you know, bring out their balls like, oh, look, I'm, I've been in this school and my teacher said this. Like they do that because they want to present themselves as an expert. Most people, when they speak, there almost is an, an unwritten agreement. Like, well, obviously I'm not an expert. These are just my opinions and things I've seen. Yet you constantly attack them like that. Like, well, you're not an expert in this field. You're not that way. And yet yourself, you also speak very authoritatively. And you because also what they're talking about is completely and totally wrong. And they have, they're just citing like random shit and they have no idea what they're talking about. So I don't know. Usually I'm just doing that as a way to make fun of people. I'm not going to get into a serious argument about somebody about IP law on a fucking internet forum when they have no idea what they're talking about. If somebody I invited a dude that initially tried to make it sound like he was an IP lawyer to come on and talk about it, but then he admitted that he wasn't as much. Um, but I, I mean, are you going by like random rustlings? I, I'm pointing to people that I have on Reddit comments. I fully admit these aren't good discussions. Like my, the only discussions that I would ever recommend people look at of mine are long-form discussions that happen via voice i'm never going to point to my twitter as like some paradigm for intellectual discussion or shit posting on reddit like so okay here's a statement you made today mm -hmm. which doesn't hold up under your own criteria uh -oh. so you told me that all of my political i can't remember if it was knowledge or understanding comes from gaming news yeah, that's what it seems when I look at no, you no, and you Richard didn't say, Lawrence. No, nope, you didn't say it seems like that or, you know, in the few instances I've seen, you said it all comes from that. Okay. You even said publicly to other people, you know, you're taking this from someone who gets all of his political news. Like, you acknowledge you said that, yeah? Yeah. You think that's a reasonable statement to make? Based on what you said in the past, yeah. Okay, I, I mean, so, it might not necessarily be true. I can't divine, you know, information no, out of your brain, like, but uh, yeah, that's what it seems like. That. Okay. So here's the thing, okay. I thought, so I guess people assume that when I make a statement about what you think about politics that I have actually done, like an fMRI and I've scanned every part of your brain to divide. No, they like absolute... probably just wonder why would you speak about something that you actually have no basis to know. So I for have example, a decent I'll do, basis. I'll, okay, okay, I'll give ahead. you an example. I'll do the same to you, okay? okay? So what I'll say to everyone is there's no point ever listening to Destiny on any topic that's not about playing Zerg, playing Rust, because all we know he actually does is a job and with most of his free time, the vast majority of his free time, he spends doing these things, playing video games. Mm -hmm. So if he's playing video games, where would he have time to become an expert in criminal law, in IP rights, in political science, in economics, in political theory? Where would he have time to become an expert in all these areas? Sure. And then I would say, well, go look at my YouTube channel. I've had discussions with Lauren Southern, with Martin Screlly, with Sargon of Akkad, with a ton of different people about a ton of different political issues. And I've been involved no, no, in these no, issues no, for no, the wait past a year. What? But Destiny, wait a second. So having a discussion with something, someone about something is the same as like researching, become an expert in that area, reading a lot about it. Probably. It's very different, especially the way you, just, you I, I, argue. If, some, if somebody would say like, oh, yeah, this guy had a two hour discussion with Ben Shapiro, I would assume that, yeah, that probably pers that person probably did some degree of research to, to get on to talk. You, with you him. wouldn't consider them any kind of political expert, though. Now, if they said, actually, you know, I've read all these books here and I take part in a discussion group over here and I've contributed some essays to this. Now you might have some basis to discuss you know, what level of political expertise they I've have. I've never claimed I'm a political expert, though. I just, I have these discussions. You can judge the, the you arguments. You always fall back on that, dude. Like, you're the guy who just goes, listen, I'm not saying I'm an expert. Right, now that caveat's out of the way, proceed to speak like an expert. Tell other people I've that they have I've never proceed to speak like to an show. expert because I don't take individual data points and try to extrapolate massive conclusions from them. I ge I'm generally always citing expert opinion. I've never, ever, ever claimed that I'm an expert in any of these fields, and I've said as much every time, and I'm not doing that as a caveat or a way to get around it and then act like an expert. I'm typically just citing expert opinion. If somebody disagrees with me, they feel, feel free to cite something different. The reason why I say that is because I don't want somebody arguing with me like they're an expert if they're not. I fully admit as much. So I will defer to experts on the topic. If you want to go in and dig through the data independently, well, what are your qualifications? And does any other expert agree with you? Because if not, it's probably not worth talking about. But here's the issue, though, is that you're saying you don't present yourself as an expert and that you just have your data points, but you will not let the discussion move on until they prove to your satisfaction or change your mind on a certain point. Because I've already said that I don't think that I don't think that healthy or productive discussion can flow from an area where two people have a fundamental disagreement about something. This is something we never resolve, but I don't think we're ever going to agree on this. So, so another thing, okay, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me is since you don't like anecdotal, in, uh, well, just anecdotes essentially, like people's life experiences used as like you know really strong indicators of something. 
One thing that you do that just boggles my mind if you don't like that. Like, here's the thing. Do it if you want. But I just don't understand how you resolve these two issues. Is that, for example, I'm trying to think what the example was. It was another one on the Richard show about a guy. I think it was about, ah, it was actually one that we agree on which is that Sean Gares essentially did behave in a manner where it's not ridiculous that Reginald would fire him as a result of it because he did sort of come out in a way that does, to some degree, at least in the public eye, damage your brand. And he has behaved in a way where it's like, come on, dude, I'm your boss. Like, yeah, I understand you've got this thing with these other people, but you've got to at least you know, give me some insight on it or come to me first. I think we actually probably have the similar position on that one, right? Do you remember this discussion I'm talking about? Um, I, yeah, this was the guy the that PA came out. The yeah, I at the end remember. of last year. Yeah, he made a big statement okay. and then he you know, leaked all those DMs. Yeah, I remember. So, that, so here's an example of where I actually agree with a lot of your points and even the premises. Like, for example, I disagree with Richard on most of them. But the way that you went about describing it was exactly kind of anecdotal discussion because what you did is, okay, is you were like, come on, if I own a business and I do this. Now, whenever you do that, right, the problem you have is actually the problem that a lot of intelligent people have which is that when they're in the mode where they're analyzing, it's like a different type of how your brain works, not the day-to-day, -day, you know, autopilot, going to the bank, crossing the road. You know, we can't think in that mode all the time in every scenario. So when they're thinking like that, it's a bit like people who are esports fans who are talking about a game that's ended. And they're breaking down why it failed and why the guy who lost should have done this. And obviously the opponent was going to do that. And if he logically thinks it through, of course, this was going to happen. Now, we all know in the moment, very few people can interpret, like, can process data that way. They can't process what's happening in the game and perfectly in a split second break it down the way we would analyze it later. But what's weird is you seem to do that a lot. That seems to be another so, kind of metric by which you, okay, I'm almost finished. Another metric by which you seem to judge whether or not something, it could be true or plausible or have any merit is if you yourself using your kind of common sense logic would do that so for example famously in this example here you always go with the logic of like it's essentially a very simple description of it like i have to characterize it i can't go into every example would be why would someone behave in a way that doesn't benefit them or is that actively going to damage them or is just stupid or is illogical now the problem with that is when we're all in analysis mode we can all agree with that and go well obviously if we had the choices i wouldn't pick this one but but that's not the way humans behave like all of us in everyday life do stupid things illogical things things that don't make any sense for even our self-interest you know but that seems to be a way that you you analyze the situation often and you seem to hold that to a high standard and you can certainly say i'm wrong uh yeah i i, I think that people should act self-interested and shouldn't damage themselves is essentially what you're saying sure right? I, yeah. oh, I agree with that as a, as a premise but the point is you can't okay here's the example okay uh, uh, this is an example you gave but i'll give you an example so people will sometimes talk about a scenario that's gone on some kind of scandal or something and they'd go oh well why would he have said or done this because if he does that he's going to get screwed over in this way and he's only going to lose out in the future yeah but the whole point is that, that doesn't mean the person didn't do it right they can act stupidly, not in their own interest, and not think it through. We all know that. Sure. I, I, yeah. So I guess to go back to initially what you said, um, I, I don't agree that like if I do X, I don't think that that counts as like an anecdotal thing. Like if I'm like usually I'm those arguments I'm kind of I, I guess appealing to um, I don't want to say common sense I guess that sounds bad but like if I were to say something like well if I were to run out in the middle of the street you know at night I'm probably gonna get hit by a car I don't think it's fair to yeah, go but that's well Destiny that's anecdotal much the same yeah. way that if I say something like if I go onto a public forum and I flame my boss by leaking DMs literally like a week after I've been hired I'm probably gonna get fired I don't think it's fair to call that anecdotal evidence like but but in almost all these scenarios I've heard it is just basically you. Like you make it this blank cipher of what a, of, and any person could do. And okay, how, I, may, maybe as a result, I do it because it's 140 characters. Maybe I should say instead of if I were to do this, I would say if any person were to do this. I, I think the two are kind of interchangeable. I'm not usually talking personally about myself. I don't usually make like hyper specific personal references and and then say that like you know uh, you know this is how every single person should act. They're usually meant to be pretty broad statements. I think most people recognize that. Like if I say if I were to run out to the street, I'm gonna get hit by a car. I don't actually mean like me personally specifically. Like I mean if any person okay. were to run out of the middle street and get hit by a car, they're you know so then you say that statement and then the person says oh but destiny people have run out in the street and not going to be hit by a car sure and, and until they agree say that in... until they agree with your statement that you will get hit by a car you can't go on with the conversation sure. right then we then i would then i would modify my statement accordingly i would say okay well generally it's a bad idea to run out of the middle of the street you will get by, by a car i guess if they disagree with that and then, then I... they say oh but destiny uh, what about in countries where there aren't cars and it's mainly like desert land <laughs> then i would can say you see how not... can you see how this is getting to be a pretty boring talk no that's fine then i would I, then i would clear i would continue to clarify until we both exactly know what we're talking about and you would do that on every point if the other person behaved that way to you 
Excuse me. Sure, if they wanted to, yeah. Sure. Out the current and you know what? If both of you did that back and forwards for three hours, and then the next time there was a show, and it was like say nine p.m., and you were thinking to yourself, "Well, I could do that show, but who's the guest? Uh, maybe I'll just have the night off." You can't see how that might put you off so wanting to talk. To what you're talking future. about is one of the central problems with dealing with, with political discourse today is that people seem to be of this mindset that we can all walk around acknowledging different realities and then have reasonable discussions that stem from these totally different universes. It doesn't work that way. I mean, I guess I'm sorry if it's boring or whatnot, but I don't want to hear a debate between two people about, you know, policy implementation for climate change if they disagree on whether or not it's even a real thing. I don't want to listen to uh, an evangelical christian arguing with you know an a religious professor on whether or I not i notice you um, always pick really important social issues that affect all of our lives because and they are really Im important because they're really important. and then you relate it to me and you talking about fucking starcraft players we will never meet i guess for me personally i don't think it's almost like it's not as important is it mate I disagree. I, that's, if that's how you value your time that's fine but i don't like to engage in discussion that i don't think is productive I, 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 well, I'm, I'm not you, trying to sound. I'm not trying. I I absolutely disagree. I had a I had a three hour discussion where I was going to debate somebody on whether or not uh, Trump would be a superior president. His name was Ryan Dawson, and this dude knew fifty trillion things more than I ever did about the Middle East. And it was essentially three hours of me asking questions. And I came out of that discussion more informed about the Middle East. I could point out every single country on a map of that entire region of the world and tell you so many more things that I know now because I had that discussion with him. Like I'm infinitely more informed on that topic than. Than I was going into it like I, I I don't know I think that I don't think I would be bored of these kinds of discussions I understand that a lot of people would but people talking past each other has become one of the primary central cancerous ideas that that has like overtaken all of politics and, and in the my United premise States. is that people should talk past each other I, I understand but that's what has led to the current oh, political is that what you are saying my premise is yes you're saying that people can have productive discussions and maybe coincidentally wind up at similar conclusions down the line with completely different premises. This was almost word for word what you said earlier. Do you, or am I mischaracterizing First of all, you? It's not important that people come to any resolution at the end of the discussion. But it's it, a discussion. But it is kind of when you're talking about matters of social policy and whatnot. Yes. Conclusions why are you? Like, why do you keep going to that? Remember, the whole point of this was we were on an, an esports talk show. Why do you keep going to like? I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, but, over the past like year, but of should my we life... have immigrants from the Middle East? It's like, well, that might decide whether we live or die destiny. So I agree, we probably should get to the bottom of that. Now, whether or not Koreans should be allowed into WCS, probably not as important. I, I guess I don't know. I approach most discussions the same way. I think they should be handled with a consistent form of logic or rationality, and then you should, you know, all discussions. Are you stem. actually autistic, mate? Um, that's a serious question. Uh, I don't know. I try not to be. Like, like what you're doing right now, okay, that I don't really understand, is you surely have different ways of talking to different people and different levels that you go to when you talk to the I really, on the conversation. I really don't that much. Like the example that you brought up earlier with girlfriends or whatever, if I had a girlfriend like that, I would dump her immediately. If I had somebody that was like, and I have and I have dated girls like that in the past who would do like the ammunition Rolodex, like, well, what about you said this, 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 this. Like, fuck, my child's mom does that. That's why we're not together anymore. If somebody wants to sit there and doesn't, has no interest in what I'm trying to say and is trying to like, you know, character assassination or misrepresent my points, like, I'm not going to date this person. Like, so I someone walks past you in the street, lovely day. Well, actually, the Middle East is going to shit that Europe's got, got all these problems with Brexit. Like, come on, you just go, I'm oh, not, okay. What do you mean? I'm not talking about, we're not talking random people in the street or not the equivalent of people that come on to have a specific discussion about a specific topic. These are not random people in the street. But you're acting as though, you're like, you present yourself, mate, as though you were like, here's the thing, I'll give credit to people like Ben Shapiro, they actually are like this. Like somehow in every discussion they have, they are like fucking data from Star Trek and they just, you know, it, they, they behave the same way with every person. And so in a sense, it's quite entertaining because it's very consistent, but most people aren't like that. Okay, that's fine. But if they're not, I'm not interested in talking to them. I don't want to talk with people that are sure. too wrapped up in their now emotions. We've got, now we've gotten to the crux of it is the idea that you wouldn't be interested in talking to them. Yeah, but it goes but deeper than that. These I'm not are people... interested in talking to you because I feel like I never get a point out. Somehow that means, are you ready? Your words that I'm creating a safe space. I'm scared to talk to you. In fact, let's go further. This is all things that you said. I don't want anyone who can ever challenge me or who will ever have differing views. And essentially you painted me like some social justice warrior who has a blockchain and is sat in a safe space with uh, ear mufflers on. You think that's reasonable characterization? I think that if you're not willing to hammer out or discuss your views with somebody, you should keep your political views to yourself. Yes, I feel very strongly about that. So I'm not allowed to express my political views unless I discuss them with you. I mean, legally, you're allowed to, but if you're not willing to have a, an honest discussion, it doesn't have to be with me in particular, I guess, but having an honest discussion okay. with somebody about so, them who will challenge your beliefs, yes, I think absolutely. is vitally important. And they'd have to, to argue the way that you argue. 
I, they don't necessarily have to, but if they don't, but I mean, if they don't share some core tenets like agreeing on reality, then yeah, I would say that these arguments are fruitless. I like the way reality is somehow always synced to your opinions. Like, no, you're it's so not synced to my opinions. Discussion. Reality is objectively measurable, dog. Things like climate and change. You're, you're never discussing those things. What do you mean? Of course I am. That's why I'm citing expert opinion in the field. You, is I consider Trump these. A racist? What's the reality of that, mate? Where does do that what? connect? Where do, is Trump a racist? Where does that connect to your objective reality? I can point to multiple statements that he's made that it seems highly indicative that he is at, at least bigoted, I guess, or somewhat racist. Like, yeah, and I can back I all of these. Objective reality that he is racist. What? And that's objective reality. No, that, I mean, you're talking, now we're moving away from scientific points to opinion pieces, but sure, I could make that argument and I could back it up with arguments. I wouldn't just say Trump is racist. Of political debate is. It's people's opinions. It's how they see the world. It's their characterization. But it's the, very rarely, actually. Like, here's the thing. The perfect example you set up, this is also what Sam Harris did to Jordan Peterson, by the way. What you do is you set up a perfect vacuum experiment. And until we figure out how the mechanism between these two things operates, we can't go on. Now, the problem is, Stephen, you don't have a three-hour debate where all you say is, but it must be cl climate change must happen because the emissions here are 98%. And the other guy goes, no, actually, they're 70%. And here's my study. And you go, ah, but the, you know, the... Bureau for Climatology or whatever said, actually, it's 97%. And in, if that was the debate, okay, mate, then first of all, it wouldn't be reasonable for the people to ever make any further point. They should keep debating until they finish it off. But that's not any of the debates we've ever had. I, I don't remember the debates I had with you about video games, dude. I, it's, I've never it's... had a debate about objective reality. Huh? But what, we, what happened was we went on a talk show where they invite personalities to express their personalities and opinions about topical matters. Essentially, you're a talking head. Okay, sure. We were debating reality, and at no point in time were you ever saying, well, actually, I think you'll find Planck's law is this, and I was going, no, it isn't, but I want to continue. Like, okay, kind of so because we're not going to go down the rabbit hole to, uh, to uh, define the, the basic axioms that define our existence, we cannot have any form of rationality or logic in our arguments whatsoever. Instead, we That's just... What you say. Th that's not what I say. I'm just saying that I would like... that We have to agree on reality before we can go to the next point. Sure. But most of us, I think, agree on the basis, on the basic axioms of reality that we exist in this universe, um, that people are, you know, are capable of independent no, thought, hey, that we feel pain and fair. suffering. Everyone can agree that reality is like, you know, what is what is the measurable amount of gravity? Well, that is what that device measures. Okay, we can all agree on that, mate. No one's discussed. That's a straw man. Problem is, no. okay, well, but that's like, not a straw man because if we're having the idea of are there are, are, is Europe being torn about by riots? To you, you're not getting to reality. You're not discussing reality. Not opinions, perspectives, like how do we even define torn apart? What does a riot really mean? Are riots bad? Like, to you, it's about what's well, reality. Either it is or it isn't. And until we can decide, like the thing about abortion, whether Europe is being torn apart by riots or it isn't, we can't go further to the next point. Am I wrong? Is this not what you... Yes, this is happened? what I believe. Yes. If you and I wanted to have a discussion on who, like, the, the the best league player in the world was, and I said that the best performing people in all of League of Legends were in North America, and you said they were Korea, how do we ever agree on who the best player is? If, if you're bringing up, well, you know, Faker is so good because of these things, and I go, well, look at Reggie. When he played mid this one time, he beat this dude who is easily better than Faker. How do we ever possibly come to an agreement here if we're arguing from completely different Why realities? Be, yeah, great example, because you've picked something that's totally subjective. Like, the whole genius of picking, like, a qualitative judgment is that you decide which criteria you value over the others. There's nothing inherent in the criteria sure, that tells but you Sure, then you would have a discussion on those criteria hey, so that you get could— to, man. This is exactly the point. You would, because you want to see, well, how are you defining that? You'd break it all down, you'd tease it apart, and at the end, at the end, no one would have to agree. At the end, you could actually say, I still hold that it's Reggie, and I could say it's Faker, but we would have actually gotten somewhere and elucidated each other's points and the interaction between them by asking, but why is that, and what about is that? Sure, we wouldn't but just if at some well, point... Until, if until you convince me that Faker is better at laning, we can't move to the next point about team fighting. It depends on the points that you value there. If you if you want to have a subjective discussion on things, then it can talk about the points that, that you value. But if we were to move a step further from that, and we were to start making objective policy, like let's say that we wanted to have a discussion on what should the prize pool be between these regions, right? Sure. Then that discussion could shape out very differently depending on who we consider has the best talent pool, right? Because if, if, if our prize pools are majorly based on, well, who is the best, most talented player? Well, we would have to go back to that discussion. And now if the, you know, if the prize money 
money awarded these players is going to hinge on this. Now I'm willing to bet that you would be much less forgiving in how you define who is the best player. Now we would go all the way back to the premises and we would argue each point. Like, do you think that, you know, your CS at 20 minutes is important? Do you think that your ability to win unfavorable lane matchups is important? You know, what's more important? Performing well in games and, and, and not dying or objective control or 50 other million metrics. Now you would want to hash out individually every single one of these arguments because now we're talking about a very real policy decision on who gets more money for being a better, uh, for having better talent. You would want that better talent very well defined. Much the and same way with immigration. that is nearly never what we're talking about though, right? Sure, when we're but having that is what we're talking discussion. about. But when we're talking about things like immigration or climate change or abortion or education or contraception, these are things that we're talking about. If we have fundamental disagreements on reality, how do we ever get to the point where we talk about policy implementation? Okay, so here's here's another factor that I feel as though is a disconnect between you and everyone who's well. Okay, let's just say me when I watch a show. Okay, okay. is that sometimes when I watch a show, I want to hear what people's points are. Like I don't know this person, and I've heard from the premise that he is pro life, so I want to know why is he pro life. But you never let him get off the first point that a fetus is a human being, isn't a human being rather, and therefore I never hear his points. Sure, because now, I'm not in now in your world where you're trying to resolve reality and divine truth. Okay, I get that. That's your premise. Essentially, you're just saying, I value my criteria and what I find interesting over everyone watching. Well, I don't understand. What do you mean? I, like, like, I, you, you literally would rather go over the same point for an hour till you can resolve it in some way. Because yes. to you, I noticed, if you notice the way you characterize the discussion, it's always about resolving something yes. and about coming to an agreement or at least being able to agree on this, right? Most discussions I ever have in life, and I know, I know a lot of people in esports who I totally disagree with, but they're brilliant people. Like they have totally different perspectives from me. They, they interpret things differently, but they're so fascinating to listen to. They make such fantastic points that even if at the end I'm like, I don't agree with any of that. Sometimes it's like, this was fantastic to talk to you. Like I, I really got to hear like counters to my points that I've never heard before. I didn't agree with them, but you know, you came at it from a different perspective. To you, that apparently, I don't understand why, doesn't have any intrinsic merit. The only merit is if at the end you agreed on what reality was and now you got to come to some sort of conclusion where there's possible resolution. I, I guess I, I guess we just won't ever agree on this point. It, I mean, or now I'm kind of forcing you into what how I like to argue. I, I mean, like if somebody, I, I guess to use a to use a racial example, if somebody wanted to um, start because John Trump was doing this partially, if somebody wants to start off with the con contention that different races of people are inherently capable of different things, this is not a person whose opinions I'm interested in until we've resolved this basic thing. Because most of their opinions will probably be logically generated from that premise of you know different races are capable of different things. Why would I want to hear the opinions of somebody whose premise I disagree wholeheartedly? with even if they do happen to wind up at some similar conclusions than me the conclusions are worthless much the same way that in any field why of do you keep making it like this mate where you either have to just let them go and not question anything or you have to wait until it's resolved before it moves on why is it only one or the other I don't, maybe, maybe I am autistic, dude. Maybe I took too much math in school. I Like in, in, in any math or calc class, your answer is worth nothing, right? If, I, don't, I don't know if you ever, if you ever took any higher level math, you can never put the right answer and show the wrong work and get credit. You yeah, might get one point, right. maybe, right? So that I philosophy, feel, you can have discussions all day long where you don't agree with each other. Absolutely not. If you guys have different definitions of base words. Mate, go you, and look at fucking Plato and Aristotle. They yeah, but these were people. Don't stop all day long like that. If, if you are trying to have a discussion on philosophy with somebody and you are defining basic terms completely differently, you will never have a valid discussion. Now, it is possible what, for What some, do you mean valid discussion? Why would it be valid? As in what, earlier, what you valid? said that Sam Harris and Jordan Peterson or whatever were wasting their time uh, arguing about what truth meant, right? That they should they have ruined the discussion. Yeah, yeah, they, they ruined, ruined the it. discussion. If they can't agree on what that means, they can't have any conversation stemming from that. But that's the thing. The conversation they did have trying to resolve it was essentially nothing, just them going in circles. Meanwhile, the example I just gave you, like dialogues between Plato and Aristotle, probably some of the most interesting, eye-opening philosophical di discussions of all time. But they didn't resolve at the end, mate. But they were at least arguing their axioms. They were at least arguing or justifying their basic things. I don't think you would get two people from totally different philosophical schools of thought arguing a high-level concept, right, without at least trying to understand or hash out the, the baser-level things first. Okay, so here's another thing that you did, okay, is that you took the fact that sometimes I talk too much or maybe I... Uh, I mean, I absolutely, by the way, I know that I have done what you do. I've At times when I've been 
on some of the insight, for example, if the person is just talking nonsense and unfortunately they're not very good at getting to their point and they just constantly like they don't make a point, basically, sometimes I will kind of harangue them onto one thing. Like, well, come on, you got to address this. Oh, so what you think this and I'm trying to I'm trying to get more out of them. OK, I know I do that. But here's the thing. I, you assign some malicious intent to that. I don't understand why for you it's cool to do that. And that's just part of your method. But when I do it, I'm like a total hypocrite. Like what's funny is I'll tell you the main reason I interrupt people because actually you're right. As an interviewer, I have actually trained myself essentially not to interrupt people. Like I probably go too far sometimes on talk shows, letting the person talk, maybe let themselves hang themselves with enough rope, you know. I just let them go to some degree. Now I do pull them up on key points. Like if I think it's a really important point, okay, let's pause here and you can pick up again. Let's let's address this. But actually the main reason why I interrupt people, because I had to learn this, because when I actually first started doing interviews person to person, I was terrible at them. Because I used to do them over text and therefore I used to have all day to backspace what I was saying, to read what they seeing and see if I understood what it meant and to ask a quick follow up, you know, which I could use to then get a better question. And so when I started doing it person to person, I had a real big problem, like keeping track of all the stuff they were doing and then like knowing when to talk and when they were finished. And the funny thing is, that's just a social awkwardness I had as a person. And perhaps it's not obvious because I overcame it to some degree. I put a lot of work into trying to learn people's patterns of how they speak and where they end a sentence. I mean, I'll give you a great example here. Anyone who's seen my content, if you ever see me do an interview with someone Danish, I haven't figured out why this is, but people who are Danish have a very peculiar rhythm to how they talk. And whereas like the other person, it's like they'll almost like change sort of the sing-song nature of how they talk. So as you get that pattern down, you kind of know like, right, he's going to end in three words now. He's going to end in half a sentence. For some weird reason, whenever I talk to Danish people, I feel like they're talking and I think they're in the middle of the point and then suddenly it just ends. And then there's like a weird gap where I'm sort of thinking like, shit, you said it already. Like, uh, okay, well, here's what I have to say. And so I don't do that intentionally, man. I'm not trying to fuck with people and railroad them and cut them off. So why you would characterize it that way suggests you, you've just taken your personal dislike for me and labeled all the things I do as some like devious mega plan to fuck with people and show that they're wrong and I'm right and win over the audience. So you're saying that I, um, you're initially was saying that I assign a uh, malicious intent to this. Yeah, you that you think you actually essentially implied that you're justified cutting me off all the time because I do this to win the debate. I gish up and I try to sort of like add loads of stuff and make it so the person can't address all of it. And then no matter even if they address one part, I win, you know, sort of by proxy of the fact that they can't reply to all the things. So the fan, I mean, you're, you're absolutely, I think you brought this up. You're absolutely right. This is what creationists famously do in debates where they'll try and use all the opponent's time by asking him 50 questions. And then when he doesn't answer it, he goes, ah, see, he didn't have an answer for how the eye came about. Like, I agree. That is like a, a cheap debate about tactic, but you have assigned it to me as some like malicious intent. So I don't know if I, I might do that. Um, I, there's um, wait a second, wait a second, laser, wait a second. Laser, wait a second. Laser, I, laser, no, 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 I, I agree. I, I probably do that. Okay. Maybe I do do that. I assign malicious intent to people. That's entirely okay. possible. Maybe I'm too jaded from the people that I have argued who seem they do have malicious sure. intent when they intentionally misrepresent fact. But whether they have malicious intent or whether it's out of ignorance or whether it's uh, just they're not being careful, the end result is still the same regardless of what I believe their intent is. I guess it's a little bit disrespectful or rude of me or can make me come off as unnecessarily combative if I assign malicious intent where there is none. And maybe it could degrade the quality of the argument or the discussion if they believe that. But I, I mean, regardless of, of whether whether there is malintent or ignorance, the end result is still the same. These premises just have to be resolved for a reasonable discussion to, to carry forth. But here's the issue. The guy that I'm talking to right now has never appeared on Twitter. He's never appeared on Reddit. That guy, this guy I'm talking about now I already fully never admit speaks that. this way. But I fully no, admit that. Yes, my point I... is, okay, so publicly, I don't go out and just say, oh, Destiny uh, said there was nothing wrong with communism. Therefore, he thinks that, I guess he thinks Stalin killing everyone was fine. That would be a ridiculous mischaracterization of what you said. Likewise, when you, uh, here's a good example again. This is another, uh, this is a way that to take how you do it to me publicly and I'll do it to you. Okay, so here's what I'll do. Remember when you said that by not, because I'm scared and I've banned you from unfiltered when I'm on it, I have created a safe space and I won't let anyone challenge me. So I'll do the same thing to you. By that logic, when you cut me off and you don't let me make a point, it's because you're scared that my point might have some validity and that the person listening might think it's good and therefore you're true. creating a verbal yes I, that's the point i'm making mate with this illustration is that that would be a very unreasonable characterization i i guess if i mean if you believe that what i said was unreasonable that's fine i mean i provided my no no it's not about whether i believe it mate it's about remember it's reality so we're asking what you believe <laughs>
We're asking, do you believe what you said? So my arguments in favor of it I gave, you disagreed with those arguments. So I, I mean, I, I'll reform my do opinion. Do you believe I was what? creating a safe space and that I never allow anyone who disagrees with me to talk to me? So the episode in question was when you and Richard Lewis came on to discuss a very hotly contested, I don't even remember what it was, but it was a very w hotly contested WCS issue. WCS regional. Yeah, it was a WCS okay. regional logging. Very w hotly contested in the StarCraft community at the time. My opinions on this were very well known as being pro region locked. Your and Richard Lewis's opinions were very well known as being unregion locked, right? Unfiltered is one of the few shows where people really hashed out topics in a quote unquote unfiltered as much as it can be type of way, right? So a lot of people were looking forward to the show. Then I find out that Thorin, because of previous uh, discussions or whatever, says that he doesn't want me to be on the show. And then you and Richard Lewis go on and circle jerk your opinions the entire time with no alternative point of view. And then you and Richard Lewis both go on and say on Twitter and say, well, the point of unfiltered wasn't to provide alternate points of views, just to listen to me and Richard Lewis. I mean, I don't Definitely know that. That. What, yeah, that was very similar to what maybe what you Richard didn't say. Said. Oh, Richard I didn't said. Say okay, that. my bad, my bad. I don't know why you conflate my opinions with him. He's because not me. Because you guys seem to share similar opinions very, very often. But I, so that's my mistake. I fully admit. Um, but but yeah, Richard Lewis went on to say that. Yeah, it kind of seemed like you were creating a safe space for that argument. I don't think that's an unreasonable assumption for me to have that you would come onto a show, bar me from being on that show, talk about one of the most hotly contested issues at the time, and then disinvite a person who was a common guest on the show who had a very different okay. opinion from you. I think so that's now a fair we, argument. Now we've got deplatforming involved. I'm doing that as well. Do what? Deplatforming? Disinviting you. Oh, yeah, I'm not allowing yeah. you to come and speak at my university because I don't like what you say. Well, you deplatformed me from a show that I was a co-host of. Yeah. Did I? Did Did you hear me earlier in the conversation where I explained the chronology of what happened? I'm I'm sorry. That was my impression at the time, and that was the impression of the entire community. No, no, community you stated it's fact. Okay, I'm sorry. Then I you misspoke. Said like, uh, banned me from the show and won't let me Yeah, I'm sorry. On. I was writing my argument for why I called By it the way, I, I, I don't know if you noticed this, but I never even said that. For example, Chan Man might have just totally fucked up the message and said it to he you. He might like have. That. Absolutely. Which doesn't even mean that from your perception, it's totally wrong. But you never needed to even investigate that further. You knew reality, right? Well, it, I mean, it seemed very obvious because neither you nor Richard Lewis stood in to correct anything of what was being said or reached out an invite. So, yeah, it seemed pretty obvious that neither of you wanted me on the show, which seemed like you were fostering a safe space for a discussion that, you know, I very much disagreed with you about. That's, that was my except, impression at the time. Except why does not inviting Destiny on a show foster a safe space? There's no one else in the world except Destiny can give an, an opposing opinion or a different opinion to me and Richard Lewis. Did anybody else we, come on and give a strong differing? I think, didn't you guys have Oh, did I choose bit? the guests on the show, Destiny? Did yes, I? you chose for me not to come on. No, 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 I didn't. I've told you that already. Why are you repeating? Why I'm sorry, that was my way? impression at the time. My impression at the time was that you chose for me not to come on, okay. and it seemed like Let you would... ask you a question. I want to see if you were following, like, and whether or not I've, maybe I've miscommunicated this. Okay. What was, from my perspective, how did I come to be on that episode of Unfiltered? Just give me a quick rundown of the basics as you see it. Um, fuck, dude. I don't, uh, Richard Lewis, I don't even remember. Get to, I'm sorry, can you communicate it to me again? So, Chan Man said, do you want to come on Unfiltered? Yeah. And I told him, at the time, by the way, not even that episode. It was oh, just then like, it wouldn't you know, be fruitful for me and Destiny to be on a, yeah. the same expo. There's no, no fruitful I discussion. Said, I, like, I basically said no, and he's like, but why? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, it's like, I can't be on a show with Destiny. And he's even said, by the way, this is another point. He's even said on his stream that he's just going to cut me off as soon as I start saying anything he disagrees with. And I actually think I said to him, I think that'll just be really boring. And it just sure. won't be fun for me because I like to actually discuss things and, and see what people think and express my opinions. And so I said this to him, right? And so I said, I don't think there's any point you inviting me on the show. But if he ever was not able to make a show, because I know sometimes you stream or whatever, maybe you have to do something with your son. Okay, if he ever couldn't make a show, how about just invite me on that episode? As in, I'll be the replacement for that episode. That's all I said. I never, then, okay, I'll give you the next part of the chronology, because maybe that's the key. Then he came along and he said, oh, uh, I'm going to do a show called Unfiltered Esports. And don't worry, in fact, Destiny isn't even going to be part of this show. It's purposely, I've designed it to be a show that's not about Destiny because he doesn't do esports that much anymore. So normal Unfiltered will be Destiny. This is a show without Destiny. Would you like to come on an episode? Okay. Now, can you see how that's a very different scenario from what you're explaining? Yeah, of course. And I, I, and I do believe that Chan Man might have kind of said something similar. I think but do you see also, the key point is he asked me to come on an episode. I don't, uh, by the way. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm giving you what my impression was at the okay, time yeah, and for sure, quite a sure. while afterwards. That was my impression, right? I, I understand now, with, assuming that what you're saying is factually true, which I have no reason to believe you're lying, that yeah, sure, it was a, it was a pretty bad fuck up of miscommunication, right? Which is kind but here's of another like. detail is I had no idea who's on the show except Richard. I think he even said, like, Richard, and I think he even said something like, I'm going to have, like, another guest. 
Now, I don't control Chaman's show. I don't even make suggestions as to who he should get, mate. I assume, I mean, Chaman's pretty well connected. I assume he's going to have, like, I mean, off the top of my head, if you remember why I was on that show in particular, it's because I'd been on the StarCraft Reddit and I'd been debating people about the WCS topic. So one of the things that happened there is almost every, oh, no, maybe it was Twitter, actually. I might be wrong. I think maybe they just posted my tweet to Reddit, and that's why I'm thinking of it. Mm -hmm. So in my tweets, I had all the StarCraft community coming at me. TLO, I think Rhett maybe came out, Harstum, Rotterdam. Now, if you asked me before the show began, as in we joined the Skype call, I would have told you as a guest, uh, maybe he's going to have Rotterdam on. Maybe he'll have Harstam on like a player himself, you know. I was actually amazed when he came on and it was just me, him and Richard. Sure. Like, like if I was constructing a talk show, I wouldn't put those people together. Sure, now, I understand. By the but way, now, do you understand from my point of view how when after this show, I, so I guess you didn't tweet this. I feel like I remember you said something about it, but maybe you didn't, that Richard Lewis goes out and starts tweeting that the method of the, the format of the show was never meant to be about debate. It was never about debate. You were just there to listen to our opinions. That expert opinions. Okay, that yeah, was, that so when Richard perspective. comes out and says that, at the very least, you didn't contradict him. I know that to be true. Or, or at least I never saw any of that ever in a public place. Maybe Some of us can just not say every thought in our brain and, and not say, sorry, Richard, I'm going to have to stop you there because that's not reality. We can just, we can just sure, actually say, but so then, box, Okay, that's you know? great. So then you accept responsibility for prevailing thought in the community being that you would cut me from the show then because you never came so out and when said I don't say things my silence speaks volumes right yes that's yeah that's kind of how no, things work no, so what? silence that, that is nation. reasonable if you're out in a restaurant and somebody silence walks by and, and make... somebody walks by and punches your girlfriend you just kind of look at it and you just like don't say anything right like, that's you... a really fair straw man someone punches this? my girlfriend is like richard saying this show is about discussion and me just thinking I okay don't get if it. somebody goes on to a show somebody that's known for going to the show isn't there they're cut from the show mysteriously okay and then two people come on and they start drinking the entire time and then when they get off and the community is entirely upset about it and then one of those two people says this the format of this show is not supposed to be about debate and the other person doesn't really tweet anything disagreeing with it then yeah i think it's fair to assume that they're on the same Destiny. platform are you a part of unfiltered esports i don't even know if that was like an unfiltered esports episode yes, i never even knew it that was okay I, I had never even one. known that i don't know if anybody knew so that your initial premise is totally incorrect sure that it but wasn't the entire that. communities just, was <laughs> yeah because you didn't even bother asking your mate chanman who hosts the fucking show and who actually decides all this to get to the bottom of it because well, when i initially decide, asked chan man chan man told me Ask, did you? When I initially asked Chan Man, Chan Man told me that you didn't want to do an episode with me. That's what he initially had said. And then when I publicly said that wasn't the case, what what then? I don't even I'm remember, dude. This is a long time. Space. Space. I'm yes, just I don't remember all yes. the things where it might be a bit a bit wonky the way you behaved. I mean, it was me and the rest of the community. I feel like I had a fair reason to get that wrong. The rest of the community had no real basis, right? Because they did, they weren't involved in it. So what happened is you and Hawk both came out and said lies. Hawk also said that I banned him from the show. Now, do you want to know what happened with Hawk? Same scenario, mate. What happened was I never knew Hawk was going to come on the show. Actually, I would love to debate Hawk because I think Hawk's full of shit on some topics. Funnily enough, we actually have on a personal level have squashed our beef ever since. But I would love... To Here's the funny thing. This is why your characterization is so ridiculous. It's only in your case because you explicitly made it sound like you're going to fuck with me and not even let me say sentences fully. That's that I decided not what I'm not I gonna... said, though. I watched your video when you said this. What I said was I do not enjoy people building up a 15 premise argument where I disagree with half of them and then laying out the conclusion. But and in your no, video, you said that in we your video, you, you won't even let them build up two premises. Sure, if I disagree with both of them, that's correct. And in your video, you said that I don't want to ever talk with Destiny because Destiny has this way of arguing where he thinks he's the divinator of truth and he's just going to cut me off every single time. And that was what you said in your video. More or so less, what was right? The point you get, uh... That I, I... What did you initially say? That I, that I thought that you didn't want to argue with me? So the point I'm making is, in what way have I created some safe space and won't take people? Like, for example, Hawk was wrong. I never had, I never said anything to Chris. In fact, Chris there, this is an example of where this guy, Chris is a perfect example of how being nice fucks everything up because essentially he's just a liar. Like what happened was he spoke to Huck and Huck said, oh, I want to come on the show and, you know, be versus Thorin and Richard or whatever because I know they're going to talk about WCS and it'll be really unbalanced. Kind of what you're outlying, laying out here, right? Mm-hmm. Now, first of all, I didn't even know WCS was going to be the topic. I could have guessed it as much as he invited me on for that week. So, okay, you can guess that much. But I don't know the lineup. I never said anyone can't be on. As I told you, you weren't even a discussion point, mate. This is a totally separate discussion where he set up a new show without you. Therefore, why would I say, can't we have Destiny on that show you've explicitly created without him? So let's just accept that for a premise initially going to Huck now. Now, when Huck says that to Chan Man, 
Chan Man, apropos of nothing, as in he never consulted me, says something like, oh, but don't you and him have beef? Like, isn't there like, doesn't he hate you or something? Which, by the way, like, I don't know why he's the one making these decisions, but whatever, his show, I guess. He then tells that to Hawk. Now, in Hawk's case, his is totally unforgivable because at no point in time does Chan Man actually say, I wouldn't let him come on. Chan Man makes that call and even says to Hawk, like, I don't think it'd be good or whatever. And then Hawk then comes out and does what you did. Except his is more egregious because at least he didn't have any like reasonable doubt to go off. He actually comes out and says like Thorin refused to let me on the show and he's like banned me and also and he does the same thing. So the two of you combined, what you think the two of you closely involved with the situation, talking to the host, didn't in any way influence the community to take that perception too. They just came to it in a vacuum of their own accord. Yeah, sure, we definitely might have, but Chan Man didn't do us any favors there. I mean, it's not like Chan Man came out and said like, oh no, this isn't what happened at all. Until I'm pretty sure it was like much later that he actually did it. But again, so, like this okay. is stuff that could have been squashed like very early on with either Here's you coming out and saying something or Chan Man coming out and saying I mean, I went with all the information that I had I did available. Come out and say it all. I made a video and I addressed all this. Okay, yeah, uh, you know, a while later after all the community No, no, know. I addressed that like a day or two later. Oh, okay, I don't remember it. I don't remember it's the video you're talking about. Where I, I think that you would think you're the divinator of truth. The That's what? the video we're referring to. And in that, I explained that I didn't disinvite you. Like, it wasn't a platform at all. I didn't disinvite Hawk. I think that everyone's really mischaracterizing how I behave. Oh, sure, 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 sure. I remember. That, that, this, is still, this was still, like, right fresh off the thing where there was a ton of different fucking information flying around. And Chan Man still hadn't given me personally, like, that specific answer that, you know, oh, no, Thorin definitely had nothing to do with this. Like, he was still kind of, like, riding the line on this. So, I mean, I expect you to defend but your if, position. But if but... Chan Man says something, even when I counter it later and say it's not the case, I'm obviously the liar and Chan Man is, must be the, the arbiter of truth. You don't ever have to second guess. John Man. I'm, I'm no, I'm not sure. I mean, I was second guessing everybody, but you've also been on record saying that you don't want to be on any shows with me or anything. So I, I mean, it, it was... I just said I'm not interested in it, mate, and that sure. I actually wouldn't be. Sure, and that that's kind of what led me to that. I never conclusion. said oh, I'm scared, and I don't want. You know what? He's destroying. He said, all my I don't want to be. I don't like want to be on any show with Destiny because I don't like the way that he argues. He won't let me finish any points. Yep. Maybe it doesn't mean you're scared, but you you don't want to be on any show with me because you don't want to be in any arguments with me, right? And then Chan Man, I feel like we're, mate, we're running circles. I, I love talking to people who disagree with me. You have different perspectives. Sure, but you don't like the way that I, I argue. Job. Um, by the way, the way that you argue entirely isn't that bad. Uh, in your case, I would say it's like this: you take like four or five obnoxious ways of arguing, and you stack them all in one. And I get that, that, by the way, I get that people love that about your persona. Like, it's funny, I, this is why I gave the example before of the Stefan Molyneux example where he debates. Mm -hmm. Because I've saw, seen you comment on my tweet. You know that I actually enjoy watching his videos in general. So what's funny is, obviously, I think some of his points are good. But I actually can't stand watching his debates. They really annoy me and I, I turn them off, you know. I wait until it's like a monologue where he's not just going to be breaking down some person who's a half-wit and speaking, who's actually Swedish trying to speak English, who's 19, who's trying to explain communism. So I don't really want to watch him just destroy that guy using cheap debate tactics. It's not that interesting, you know. Yeah, wait, so what was the point of this? So the point is, like, for your persona, maybe you think it's cool to do that and to have a really extreme approach to it, etc. And I see that you try to tether it to the idea that you're just trying to get to the bottom of truth and all that stuff. But you, you've essentially... I could look past if it was like one obnoxious trait, like you just interrupt, okay? Or if it was one thing where you can use an anecdote but someone else can't. But it's like you've stacked them all in one. And then on top what, of it... How, wait, what are all these you obnoxious... You seem as though... If the, same with the immigration issue and Brexit. The only reason that I could not want to be on a talk show with you is I'm afraid of you and I'm so scared that you'll destroy all... You know, you're like the fucking... You're, you're, I, I live in Pleasantville and you're going to turn it all to color from the black and white of my dreary workaday world. And that's why I have to keep you out because I'm really scared of the reality that you represent. It's not just that I find it really obnoxious. It doesn't make me want to go on shows and discuss stuff with you if you're just going to do that. Okay, what are all these obnoxious tactics that, that you say I've stacked all on together? Well, the whole thing is you don't acknowledge any of them. So, for example, you say you never interrupt people. So at this point in time, as I said, we can't really go anywhere with that one because we'd have to start pulling up videos, making fucking video edits. We'd well, have to, like, show a timeline. I never said I don't interrupt people. I said that I, I will stop somebody if they stop on a, on a bad premise. I said I don't think Here's I interrupt somebody right when I hear a trigger word, but... Oh, you absolutely do. Like, you've done that to me and Richard. As in, if we were talking and then we said something, here's the thing. That's why I said that you're not usually not listening because I noticed the way you sit, you're kind of like scanning stuff. And then what happens is when you're scanning stuff like that and you're hearing, I know because I just know what our podcast myself, you don't really initiate, you don't hear it in the same way as you would if you're reading a word. As you're reading the word, you process it. But when you hear stuff like that, there's almost like a lag. And you think, wait a minute, what did he say? And then that's when you go off. You go, wait a minute. So you're saying, so hold up a second. So about immigration. And then that's when you go no, off it's, on that No, it's point. because I need time to process things like i don't just hear something oh, like, oh, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. like usually i'm letting what you say sink in for a second and then i'm 
going from there? Like, what? Okay, I need to, like, I think we're actually resolving this. No, I think we're actually resolving this, okay? Here's a really good point I'll say is put it this way take this as the advice of someone who just thinks that they haven't had very fruitful conversations, okay? And if that's worth nothing to you, fine. But I would just say this you could make all the same points, you could bring the person up in roughly the same way, but maybe say something like, uh, don't go too far with this point. Like, finish on this point so I can actually bring this up. Like, don't go too much further. And then let them finish the sentence. That's not much of a change. That's, that's I typically what I do. I usually stop. I was like, well, hold on. What about this thing? Or let's talk again, about we'd this. we'd have to go the videos, mate. But if you go and watch I, me I probably and you, didn't but, argue that like, way. Like, it, again, it, when we, we talked about past. StarCraft. Yeah, because we were too impassioned about the points. I understand that. It's funny that I'm... Mate, I acknowledge that you can be too impassioned that if we were writing it down and sending each other emails, we wouldn't just debate that way. But when it's me, I'm some irrational person who's a racist. You've repeated that many, many times, by the way. And that, like, when I do it, I don't get any leeway. I don't get any breaks. But you I get mean, all if the I'm breaks ragging on you, it's you over the past few years. It's generally nah, because of ragging. things. It's generally on things that you've been tweeting about. I, I... So let's see what you said, okay? So okay. I'll, this is from today. Because if we go off what we said today, you're not thinking about three years, right? Okay. Let me see. So where was the thread, the Kotaku and Action one? I'm just trying to find this one. Okay. Right. So I just want to show what you said today. Because yeah. you're going to make it sound like a joke again, but you didn't put it as if it was a joke. You put it as though it was a serious statement. And you can't then just go, ha JK for the lols. Like, here's the difference. Here's the funny th example, right? One of the only things I've ever held against Richard, ever, because, you know, he's a friend of mine, so I, I forgive him things that are like minor foibles. One of the only things I ever think he did that was fucked up in journalism is when he did that story about the stuff I said on Unfiltered about Poland, he transcribed it and then he never mentioned at any point if I was ever joking about any of it. Mm -hmm. It was all put as though, like, as though I was like giving a racist creed and that this is actually my serious opinions and it was just on paper. You couldn't get any tone from it at all. Now, I don't know if you remember that discussion, but if you remember the line I say about how like Polish people, there's nothing going on there anyway, they've got an existential hole. That is so obviously a flippant, just troll comment, and I'm even like smirking as I say it. Now, why would I say that if it's a really serious point, you know? I I don't remember. Or I, oh, but I, you I, can. Are you asking me like to summarize the conversation, or? Oh, do you see the point that if someone writes that down, they're not going to get the fact that I was joking? I was being bawdy with my. Oh comment. yeah, of course. If he doesn't include but the just, sure. Because yeah. remember, the entire premise for that show isn't that Thorin hates Poland. Like, mate, I have almost no thoughts about Poland. It was not even a country that was number one on my list of countries I don't like. It's that I was super triggered that I'm going there in five hours after the talk show mm -hmm. and that Chan Man's trying to paint it like, isn't it awesome to have an event in Poland? I'm like, not really, mate. I can't, I'm not looking forward to it. That's kind of the premise of the discussion, right? Sure. Because otherwise, why would we get on that topic? It's me just going off on a stupid tangent, isn't it? So when I say all the stuff in response, you and Richard and others all present it as if it was all just statement of fact, as though that was my manifesto on life. So, and that I can't ever take any of it back because it wasn't a joke. It's all serious and should well, be interpreted. But then you doubled down on it afterwards. My problem with the statement is that... What did I double down on? I don't... Polish people throwing uh, bananas at black people. No, I'm pretty sure you doubled down on your Set statement. Up. Like, by the way, that is actually true, that there are football sure, crowds that are And I, listen, I, I even agree with the general points that you were making, that Poland doesn't really have a I lot of... What? Remember, the most insulting thing I said, by the way, was actually the thing about the existential hole. That's what people always go back to. Well, the, but the problem is the well, way you phrase it. I, Polish people are less than human. That's the implication, right? No, I, I think that you, the thing is that you brought up some truths about the country, but you said them in literally the most crass way possible. And I feel yeah. like it was a little bit ignorant of where Poland is at on the world stage. Like, for the Polish people, like, this is a country that was a satellite that is probably the most successful one of the ex-Soviet Union that is doing the best that it can, that is trying, like, really hard to fit in with the rest of Europe. European culture and has had this constant identity crisis where Polish people are trying to feel more included in the Western world and then for somebody to just offhandedly make a bunch of disparaging comments about the country you know after I had spent three months there I that rubbed me the wrong way I, I just wanted to kind of back up like well hold on dude like that's not necessarily fair to say about Polish people like they've been trying really fucking hard and that was more or less my thing and then you double down on shitting on them like oh no Again, I made flippant comments. I didn't double down. Like, I didn't say, actually, Destiny, there's a scientific proof that they're subhuman, I, I, you know, with IQ, whatever. I don't know how you could even make a scientific argument that. But and that, and that's why when I say existential whole, you know, they don't actually have, like, a, an understanding of literature. So I never doubled down on any of that. The actual parts that are inflammatory about that, that aren't just, just random points of two people who know very little about Poland, were ones that were obviously flippant and jokes. But you now say I doubled down, and you even now, to this day, characterize that as like it was like a racist creed. 
I, I don't know if it was ra- ra- I Actually, I've come out and said that I agreed for the most part with what you were saying and that the only problem is that you just seem to phrase it in the crassest way possible. Listen to me. Had you actually at the time ever read like studies about Poland, like sociological issue, like economic papers? Probably not. I mean, I know Poland has issues, but not specific no, papers. But, like... but it's the, thing. the reason why you felt it was really unfair is because you'd spent three months there in that gaming house. No, that's not true at all. The reason why I felt just, it was... I just said no. a minute ago that that's I, That fine. was probably the main reason that made me speak up. But the reason why I thought it was unfair was because of what I just said. Because Poland, and I think I said as much in the conversation, Poland has worked very, very hard to pull itself into the first world. And I think it's doing better than yes. any other satellite. And so, Polish uh, people, you know, have a feeling of pride about that. Yes. So for somebody to just go on and kind of shit on their country and their issues, uh, that rubbed me the wrong way. That's why I brought it up. It wasn't just because I was there for three months in a gaming house. You remember when I said, no, obviously you're right. They're not as bad as like Belarus and Ukraine and stuff. Do you remember that? Not really. Nah, I don't think you would, would you? Well, because no, because all I remember is you bringing up them throwing monk, uh, throwing bananas at uh, monkeys or black people or whatever comes, afterwards. Even in this conversation, you yourself referred to that as I said Polish people throw banana skins at monkey at at players at black people. You didn't even say Polish football fans I throw them at black football players. The most key context of the entire premise. You didn't even bring that up. You yourself characterized it as I was talking about all Polish people and how they treat black people. So. This is an. This is a. You this is that. a. This is we a. Have, this, uh, no, I don't we deny it. But this said, is a discussion where one sentence could have saved you. A one yes, singular thing of. Right. Well, Polish people you know aren't really that bad. You know, they just had issues in the past, and I would be like, oh yeah, sure, that's totally fair. That would. There was like one thing you needed to say that would have like rectified everything. Right. Yeah. Yep. You're absolutely right. I've never claimed that that was my best moment or that I was totally on point. I never even claimed that all my points were bang on. I've sure, even said, and I don't disagree. And again, as I've said before. And that actually, when I look back now, even though I think a lot of the points have merit, like beyond the jokes, the points are actually things that people have told me and things I had observed sure. myself. And I don't disagree with any of that. Oh, and Poland does have make, problems. Okay. So. Is that even in spite of that, I actually have never said IEM did the wrong thing by firing me from the event. You know, I've never said that ever. Sure, that's fine. I think they did. I don't like to see people get kicked from events like that. No, but here's the thing. It, how would I have gone into a stadium full of Polish people who, by this point, thanks to it being reported in the news, know about it? Like, that, w- they wouldn't enjoy that. The audience wouldn't want to hear from me. And also, it probably wouldn't be fun for me if they're all booing me. So actually, I can agree with IEM. I get why they would like... I mean, it, funnily enough, they did disinvite me in that sense. But I can see why they'd be like, this isn't going to work for the show. And let's just leave it at that, you know. I sure, think that's reasonable. I, sure. I, I mean, if you made that decision, it's that's fine. I don't like to see because of what I... I... What? Uh, sorry, go on. Or I was going to say, I, I, don't, I don't like to see, in general, I don't like to see like massive career repercussions because of things said on a, on a show or whatever. I, I, being in my position, obviously, I've had this happen to me in the past, so I'm never in favor of that happening. But I, yeah, I understand what you're saying. I mean, if you'd made that decision not to go because of that, I would have been fully supportive of whatever you decided. But Okay, so here I'll find the quote here. I've just found your Reddit Uh-oh. account. So. Okay. It's just what you said today. You actually said, oh, hey, yeah, it's the guy whose entire political view is shaped by gaming culture, who's too scared to talk to me. Are you ready? After mm-hmm. he got barred from an event for racial comments about Polish people. You think that's a reasonable way to characterize it? Um, yeah, that's a pretty inflammatory quote. Can I read what I was responding to? Pretty rich coming from an armchair lawyer, sociologist, psychologist, cultural anthropologist, pharmacologist, psychiatrist, criminologist, political scientist, economist, and historian. Do you really think I'm going to be responding to this comment looking for, oh, it is time to have an intellectual conversation with Thorin today on Kotaku in action, where he has randomly showed up out of nowhere after refusing to talk to me for years to drop some random insult on me? Do you think that I'm going to be, like, of the best, like, most reasonable form of in-course at that, like, de- or discourse at that point? Have you ever noticed, maybe maybe this actually is something that people don't notice, but uh-huh. if I ever insult people, I actually, as weird as it sounds, I just sort of tell them the rude way of telling them what I actually think of them. I don't just make something up like, yeah, but um, you you probably want to kill your dad. I don't just make something up whole cloth, you know, and then go, ha, 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 ha. Okay. So why, so why do you use cheap tactics to smear people just because you have a disagreement with them or they've insulted you? I'm pretty sure I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure we had a pretty big Twitter fight like a few yep. years ago. Where yeah, I know where I'm, you go with this. Come on. Did did didn't things get pretty personal there? Didn't you accuse me of never having a girlfriend or some shit? I'm pretty sure things. No, got... no, it's the other way around. That's what you said about me. You oh, actually okay, said maybe. that because I'm autistic and I have Asperger's, that I have spent my whole life online and no one's ever seen me with a girl, and so I've never had a girlfriend. And I, therefore, I can't comment on your ex-girlfriend because obviously I've never had one. Oh, that was you. because did that start off with you saying something about how I was mad that my girlfriend had left me for Naniwa? Was that? 
No, no. What happened was, I'll tell you, this is a, this, you've picked a perfect example because okay, yeah, it will highlight sure. how I don't just make things up that are nonsense. Sure. I said that when when uh, Chan Man actually announced, like, you know, half an hour before this show goes live, like it, that it's me, him, Richard Lewis. When he said that, I did a tweet, you know, to tweet out that I'm on the show. And I said something along the lines of, like, I can't remember the exact first part of the phrasing, but the gist of it was, like, it's only people who haven't been accused of rape. You remember? Wait, I'm sorry. Can can you say that one more time? I, I essentially cited that the people on the show were just all people who had never been accused of rape. Okay. And that was an implication that I had been accused of well, rape? Your Tiger Lily absolutely <laughs> implied you sexually assaulted her in a non-joking manner. Now, yeah. listen, by the way, Stephen, uh -huh. I actually think it's disgraceful when women do that and don't go to the police about it. And I think there's a lot of reasons to think that the person's full of shit and is acting spitefully. But I have not in any way, I never even said you raped someone, mate. You have publicly <laughs> been accused of rape. Are you denying that? All right. uh, you got me, dude. I, okay. That is, you know, like, here's the thing. It's not a nice thing to say. In fact, I am being kind of an arsehole by saying it because, like, like I say, there's no basis to it, probably. But can you see how I didn't actually just make something up and smear you? So if I, if instead in all of my conversations about you, if I would have said, instead of saying that, like, oh, um, I don't know if I ever even said you were a racist, but I would have if I would have said something like, oh, Thorin, the guy who's been accused of being a racist, if I would have rephrased all of my stuff like that, you wouldn't have a single problem with what I've said? You didn't do that, though. Because but if I did, you're telling me that you wouldn't have a single... Oh, well, Destiny's not accusing me of being racist. He's just saying that I have been accused of being racist. I think yeah, th that would absolutely be a lot fairer than what you did. Because remember... Okay, I don't think... As, as a comment that. from a human you did being... Put, well, I, I don't think anybody be. else... I don't think anybody else views things that way. Just a, a, as a comment it's from... It's weird how reality is not that big... It's not really that important to be precise. No, no, no. no. I'm just you telling you... I'm, tell I'm, I'm being a friend. I'm telling you human to human that if you were to go and tweet, oh, look, it's this guy who's been accused of being a rapist, that nobody would look at that and go oh he's not accusing of being a rapist he's just no, saying that nobody would say that i agree destiny it, to, to most people it functionally is the same thing but here's the difference would that person then think you're a fair person who actually likes debate and want to talk to you probably not right you smeared him publicly sure but i mean i had figured at that Remember, point that we were pretty far is, past you any kind of debate on talk shows you not at that point inviting you at that you point, I figured we, you'd already you. made a video about never talking to me again. So I figured, no, we're not doing shit. So no, we... because here's the thing: you this isn't you didn't just make this now, mate. You've ever didn't since that incident, ever since that incident, you have repeatedly used the same characterization that I. I think one time you said that I had that something about like I got banned from an event because I said that all poles hate niggers or something like that. I feel like I wouldn't have said that. Well, we have to fucking search on Twitter for this now, don't we? I mean, I, I, I might have, but if I Here's said that, the thing, that, mate. That you, some... have a, you have a fantastic memory. You remember literally lines that people said and things. And th but Not every time it like goes <laughs> against you, you just never remember it, mate. It's, it's weird. Every time. I mean, I remember most of the dumb shit I said, but I don't usually remember, like, specific lines and tweets. I usually remember, like, general ideas. You're the one that's hamming out, like, that the specific wording is really important. I fully admit that I very rarely... You don't think the wording's important when you're characterizing someone, especially if you then are going to imply that the only reason they don't want to talk to you is because they're scared of your ideas. I, like, so, if I... It's typically people the People who way... insult me, mate, that I go, right, I'm not a talking about person. They can't behave in a rational manner. They can't behave in a polite manner. They can't even... Ha How are they going to have a discussion with me if they insult me now? Okay, so... If I'm, this is how my memory works. Maybe most people are like this. Maybe most people aren't. But if somebody says some stuff and we have a confrontation and I come out thinking like, okay, well, that person thinks I'm racist. I'm likely to remember it as, okay, yeah, I remember this person. You call me racist or whatever. That's typically how I remember it. I don't usually remember every single thing line by line. That's not, I like, usually I'll have to go back and look at logs or look at tweet things and whatnot to figure out what was like the exact wording of what was said. I usually carry concepts rather than verbatim f from what happened. That could be a personal fault of mine, but... No, but the key point we're making here is that I'm afraid to discuss things with you because of your ideas. Remember, when you're characterizing yourself, you are fucking Plato. And you're all about, like, your principles. And you just want to discuss the idea and find out what reality is and really go head-to-head -head with people. But the guy that goes on Twitter and Reddit, and in theory, is the guy booking the discussion. He's the guy who's the promoter. He's out. Do people want to see this fight? I'm going to put it together on the card. That guy is just insulting people characterizing them in a way that makes it seem very unfair, smearing them publicly, and then you keep falling back to, ah, but the reason why he wouldn't come on, he was scared of the way I would have discussed things with him. Sure. I mean, I guess I was just annoyed that 
um, that you would tweet like personal insults and shit back at me while avoiding an actual conversation. It seemed like that happened a couple times. I think that was like where most of my annoyance came from. In fact, I'll find the discussion. I remember the one you're talking about, which is the banter that we had before that show. Yeah, here I linked it. Somebody else linked it to me. You had made a tweet. I'll read verbatim, so I'm not yes, mischaring. What happens you is said, you replied to me first, right? So you said a few Oh, years... what's this word here, Destiny? I can't wait for you to read this tweet out, mate. Yep, the I'm one before through. it. Yep, I see it. So you said, a few years ago, a pro told me Tilo was one of the fakest people he'd met. Yep. I wondered what he meant then. Now I get it. Yes. So when yep. I read that tweet, that bothered me. You had a history of shitting on um, foreigners, uh, non-Koreans, I guess, people that don't right? right? You did this a lot, and it bothered me when you said that. So then I tweeted kind of making fun of it. I was like, a friend warned me about some people and how their bitches shake my head. And I said, this is literally high school level posting. You can do better, Thorne. And then you sidestepped, and you yes. brought up a personal thing of mine about I told some girl to get raped with a shovel and bleed to death or whatever over some Twitter did argument. You, did you, in fact, do that? Yeah, I did, but it had okay, no relevance. Not, not in any way we're... factually correct, right? But do you see that this doesn't have any relevance to what we're talking it's about? It's banter, mate. That's not even a serious comment. Do you think I actually thought that you that you wanted her to get raped to death with a shovel? Okay, then do you think that I actually no, thought that... it's not that... the premise. Destiny, Okay, but, but hold on, because you have to go no, to the same. Do you act... For reality, we have to know what you were thinking. Did you actually take that to be a serious statement that, like, because I didn't say that someone should be raped to death with a shovel, nothing you can say has any meaning? No, I think that at that point we're in the bands. So then, yeah, sure, then we'll fucking... Yeah. Do you think that I actually thought that you specifically said, and then to keep it friendly, that I thought that you actually called Polish people the N-word. Do you think that I actually thought that you'd said that? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Destiny, why did you just say the N-word? Because I'm not allowed to say it on Twitch anymore. I'll get no, fucking no. banned. You said it on there. You said there, look, I can see the tweet right now. That doesn't say the N-word. Okay. Um, so why won't you say it now? Because I'm not allowed to say it because I'll get banned from fucking Twitch. I just got a three-day suspension for doing it. Oh, well, we can't agree on reality then because I don't know what N-word means. It doesn't relate to that word, mate. That's a joke, by the way, obviously. Right? So, <laughs> I can't okay. tell anymore, dude. So here's the so, thing. Do you think that I really thought that you had said that Polish people were N-words? Destiny, I could literally bring up like three to four examples, as I've just been doing now, of you constantly characterizing me as that's what I actually did. And there's no winky smiley there. There's no like, haha, it's all just jokes. You keep replying to me. In fact, if you look at the rest of this chain, here's the thing. Your first reply, pretty good. That is just like you disagree with it. Every reply I make is a joke that isn't in any way inaccurate. Then every reply you make is a, sl a, a smear or essentially characterizing me in a way that apparently now you don't even agree with. So, so like, example, you're doing the things... Go, no, let's go. Let's just check what happened next, okay? Just so I can see people listening now can understand, okay? So I'll link the chain in the chat. Of, Here, I'll link it to everybody. Okay, so they can all go on. Version then, okay, here's the gist. Mm -hmm. So he says that I... Uh, about the Polish people. I then say that he sends pictures of his dick to people and that people he loves might, might be into Nanawa. Both totally things that happened. Then you, you, what's your response to that? Do you have some sick bants? Do you have some really witty thing? What you say is that I'm a high functioning aspie and that I've never had any relationships. That's not even really bants. Like, listen, listen, I totally understand that in, when you shit talk, it doesn't have to be true. You can just be fucking with the other guy like trash talk style. But the problem you have is you, none of it's ever true. There's never any basis to anything you said here. I, I don't, I, I mean, I, I'm not actually sure. I mean, you, I, dude, I don't want to get into these like personal insults. I mean, you are, you do have, um, you said as much that you had Asperger's, right? So there's an element of truth to that, right? I, I, in terms of the relationships, I don't know, dude. You're like, we're going to go on a hardcore factual analysis of like bants on Twitter. You realize that just because the statement is. an area that might make you look bad, Destiny. You don't it's not want about an area that might make you look bad, dog. It's This is like a, this is another person to person thing. You cannot just bring up random facts that might be true about someone and say that, well, it's valid. He's an argument. You're doing that thing that you accused women of doing earlier. We're like, remember when you're having an argument with a woman and then she just brings up some, you know, random thing and it's like, okay, why aren't you kind of doing that? Like, hey, Thorin, I don't think you should say this thing about somebody. Oh, yeah? Well, remember when you did this bad thing? It's like, what is I do with the argument at all. I can oh, figure we're in bands mode at that point, so it's the gloves are off and we're going hard. And the premise is that the I was actually arguing with you. By the way, at no point in time was. But I you're not arguing with, with me. How does you telling me that I said something mean to someone on Twitter validate what you said about TLO? Basically, like I don't like you. Fuck off. Just in different words, using things from your life. Okay, so then I respond in kind. I don't like you. Fuck off. Using uh. Flowery no, no. versions of uh, hey, things that have happened. We, what's funny is you don't like to get onto the specifics, but you just mentioned now. Well, isn't it kind of true that uh, Asperger's? Oh, so it's kind of true that you can't say anything to a high punching Aspie. I, 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 we're too far. This is I don't, I don't know, dude. Are you, are you, are you making the argument that if you have bands with somebody, that every single thing that must be said must be rooted 100% in factuality, and that's the only way to have a band with somebody? Like that's. Bring you back again to the premise I stated about half an hour ago that I've continually looped back into on every point we've had, which was the reason why I might not want to talk to you has nothing to do with you 
bursting the bubble of my illusions with your fantastic points that you found in between waiting for a fucking solo queue to pop. No, the reason why is you have consistently lied about what happened with me in terms of the talk show, to my knowledge. I don't know what Chamans tell you. Doug. Secondly, you have continually characterized me as a racist, as someone with Asperger's, never had a girlfriend. Uh, again, You're racist saying, stuff. I have never said, I don't think I've ever, and my fans can correct me if I'm wrong. Have you guys ever heard me say this shit or someone on Twitter? I don't think I've ever said that I actually think Thorin is racist. I don't think I've ever said that. I've said that too. I might say that to you like in bands or whatever, but I don't think I've ever actually said to somebody that like, um, you know, I think Thorin really is racist and really hates Polish people. I don't think I've ever said that. In fact, I think I've said the opposite multiple times that I don't think Poland is racist or I don't think Thorin is racist at all. I think a lot of the conversations on Poland were true. He just said it in a really, really crass way. Like, I don't think I've ever made these statements that Thorin is de facto a racist. Thing. You've just reminded me of something else great, which was during our original discussion about Poland, you did what Richard d did to you. You brought up the fact that like, well, have you ever lived in Poland? Have you ever been to Poland? By the way, I had, but I didn't say it at the time. Mm -hmm. Secondly, all the stories I told you, every single one that's in vaguely, like not just a random joke, like I said, all the real comments were told to me by famous Polish professional players who I'm not going to out because obviously they don't want to be seen talking shit about their own country. So okay. can you see the point? Like, I'm not allowed no. anecdotal evidence it's, it has nothing to do with anecdotal evidence and has to do with the way you were characterizing the country. I never said that wait, anything you were saying was factually like, wrong or didn't that, happen. That's what you, that was your argument, mate. You kept saying, what, have you ever been to Poland? Like, that wasn't what, my whole you, argument. My argument was that you were, my argument was that you were mischaracterizing the entire country, not that you hadn't been to Poland. Was I really? Was I not just making some stupid, flippant comments at the beginning of what was going to be a three-hour show? I don't, I three don't, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. Okay, hey, let me ask you this question: Would you do unfiltered if it was at four a.m. your time? Probably, but I have an unhealthy sleep schedule. I mean, I see your point. If you, because you have a much more rigid schedule than I do, and you probably did at the time. So, I mean, I understand. I, I, still don't realize that I literally did that show five hours before I left to the airport and it began at, I think, one or two in the morning. Okay, yeah. I, I mean, I understand that it was at a bad time. So so are you trying to argue then that the things that you said weren't really good but and your reason for it is because it was late? All the things I said that were actual points are valid in as much as they were based on anecdotal comments that I'd heard from people. Secondly, I didn't claim to be an expert on Poland. Thirdly, the main point of that, Right, okay, let me ask you this then. You were there, you had the discussion. Mm -hmm. What can you remember? I, I alluded to it earlier in this discussion. What was the main point I was trying to get to with even bringing up all the stuff about Poland? I'm pretty sure the main point you were trying to get to was that the Polish people will be happy to host this event in their country because they don't have a lot of other super big events that are getting international attention going on in that country. That's I'll, what I. It's, it's sort of like that. But it's not quite okay. Okay. So here's interesting is this actually has become, believe it or not, I could have never known this, but it's become, because they've held the event in Katowice every year, mm -hmm. a more and more prescient point where now everyone almost acknowledges the things that I said there, which is this. The actual points I made went like this. So Shanman's like essentially asking me, like, am I excited to go to Katowice the next day? And I'm like, no. And he's like, well, why? You know, it'll be good, man, in the stadium. And then I'm sort of like, I can't remember the exact wording, but the gist of it is essentially like, well, yeah, why do you think it's in a stadium? Like, you know, it, this is a point, by the way, that's actually happened recently. So we've had these huge events in America. One was in Oakland. The League of Legends side had almost no one for IEM. Then we had this event in Vegas for CSGO, had very little people. Now, the point I was making there is actually a point that's more relevant today than it was then, which is don't pretend like this is esports hitting the mainstream right this is the best event ever and of course i should be excited as an esports fan to go to poland because it's going to be this incredible spectacle no the reason why they held the event in poland back then is because presumably they have a deal with the city by the way i don't know if you know this Katowice is something like the ninth or tenth biggest city in poland mm -hmm. by population it's not even warsaw i've been to warsaw mate warsaw is pretty nice i've been to Katowice, not very nice has trams that look like they're from 1970 and pro probably are, if I had to guess, you know, they're all rusted up and they're all Soviet style. So here's the funny thing. The, as an expert, I'm, I mean, even in my comments, I'm trying to give actual reasoning based on what I know about the industry. E ESL and other people are overblowing how big this Cygnus Esports is that it's in a big stadium because it's not in a big stadium. It's in a reasonably small stadium in the 10th biggest city in Poland. In Poland, you know, not like the MGM Grand in Vegas, you know, a famous sports area. It's not in the Orange Bowl. 
I don't even know if that's a fucking thing. That's I think it's the name of a sporting event. It's not in whatever Cowboy Stadium. There we go. There's a good one. It's not in Wembley in the UK because that would be incredibly expensive to get the place. That would involve a lot of fans flying. They'd have to pay for entry. Here's another detail I don't know if you know. But the other reason why that event looks amazing is two reasons. One, they use a panoramic lens. Now, any panoramic lens makes a crowd look bigger. That's just a fact. Mm-hmm. Two, Anytime you have a stadium where it's packed out, it looks awesome. Then you can take the implication esports is really big. I don't know if you're aware of this about Katowice, but they actually, even to this year, allow people in for free to ensure the seats are always filled. Sure. I, I've, now, I, I've heard this kind of theory, right? You got ESL New York, you can't come in for free. Doesn't matter if this, half the stadium's empty. Do you think that that is a pertinent. Now, I get that I came from, I started off too edgy and too pissed off. But can you see that's actually, believe it or not, I, I'll blow my own horn. That's actually a reasonably insightful point to make about esports industry. Sure. I don't disagree with any of this. But that was never what, you know, even you who were there at the time don't remember the premise of what the discussion was about. All you remember is that apparently I think that like all Poles hate black people and that the country's the worst in the whole world. My issue and that, was like, with never was with your premise. Believe they have an existential hole inside them that's like sucking them and they have to watch esports to fill it. I mean, as though I'd really believe that, but okay. My issue was never with your premises as your actual factual points. I just thought you were coming off really harsh on Polish people. That was my entire of point. Of It was mad tilted. <laughs> You could have asked <laughs> what you disagree with me about. Fuck. Because you keep ignoring the fact that... Okay, well, you've essentially admitted it. You essentially agree with most of the points if you remove... I've said the, that a million the, times, yeah, that right? everything you said was true. It was probably... I would, I would probably, like... You could even state it more harshly than what you said it would be true, but I, I'm just saying that the statements were very crass and sounded very harsh. So then why do you constantly portray me as a racist? If Because it's usually when we're just shit posting on Twitter or Reddit. I, I don't think you're a racist. When you're joking, but when I was joking, I've had to just live with the consequences of that, mate. I, so the way that I view things, and I understand that this might be different than other people, I fully accept that now, is for voice conversations, I generally consider these to be more serious and more give you more of an ability to hash out your points in a way that you can make everything you believe um, clearly understood. That's how I generally view it. So if I've spread, said a lot of fucking stupid shit on Twitter, probably a lot of fucking stupid shit on Reddit, but when I ask people to judge my opinions or my ideas, it's not generally by what did he tweet you know two weeks ago or what about that reddit post he made on shit reddit says it's usually like okay well look at my discussion with this person person right i usually hold these to like a higher standard of of, of uh, when chan man told you that in whatever way he said it that i wouldn't let you be on the show i didn't want to do shows with you i'd mm-hmm. imagine probably the latter when he told you that did you say why um, I want to say that he said that he did, that you weren't comfortable being on a show with me, and that's why I he was asking me not to go on to the next one. I thought that's what he but said. You never thought to dig any further. Well, no, he was much as you needed to know. It seemed. I, I mean, I wasn't going to pressure him because that seemed rude. So, I mean, yeah, that seemed about as much as I needed. It didn't seem unbelievable at the time, considering what it. Because here's the previously. part I don't understand. Right? Is uh-huh. you remember the comment I linked you to today, where actually you said that you really enjoy discussions with me, and you always thought they were fruitful, mm-hmm. and that we had a good back and forth. Which, by the way, does go counter to the idea that you just run over me in every debate and wrecked me, and I'm just scared of you. No, of course not. Pretty- I, yeah, sure, of course. <laughs> course. Again, again, shit posting on, on Reddit and Twitter is not like the epitome of my conversation. But okay. So when you said as much, if I actually had someone who I thought was interesting and I enjoyed discussions with them and they actually said like they don't want to be on shows with me because they feel like it's not even worth it. Like it's actually they don't like the way it goes. I wouldn't just go, well, don't even need to investigate this any further. I'll just assume they're wrong in every regard. I'm probably never done anything that they say. Nothing I do is wrong. Therefore, this is all fine and fuck them, basically. No, it's different people function in different ways. Richard no, but the Lewis, point I'm making no, is no, 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 well, you didn't think of me I, as an enemy, right? You didn't no, hate me. I didn't, but I don't know if you thought of me that way. Dif- it's- I mean, I told you as much in that video. If you remember the video you referred to where I addressed this, I even say I always enjoyed my discussions with him in the past prior to the Polish thing, and I actually always thought we had con- good conversations. But that... Mixed with when I then, by the way, how can how can even you forget this? So if I hated you so much because of the Polish thing, why the fuck would I go on another show with you? Oh, for the Lycan show? You mean the one that you yeah. quit halfway through after blaming me for baiting you into the pa- Polish comments? We've already gone over that. You can keep characterizing it and ignoring everything I've said. That seems to be Wait, the way well, you're going to oh, do I'm it. sorry, you came when you quit that show like halfway through. How can you say that that was an example of... Did you hear of... me address that earlier? 
I don't remember the specific comments. At I'm the beginning sorry. of the conversation, I said that I also said this in the video, which I know you watched because you've referred to it, that I never actually blamed you. That was me being tilted. Okay, I and didn't that, know that, that at the time, dog. I don't, I don't know what's going on in your head at every point in time. that Oh, he just said that because he was tilted. I just, stop a second. You've seen the video since then. So that means you saw it before this conversation right now. And yet in this conversation right now, you still characterized it as though you didn't hear that. I, d I don't remember that part of the video. I, I might have only watched. It's amazing. I don't remember, remember word for dog. My life has changed a lot over the past like five years. Like I'm not even my most of my conversations aren't even about gaming and shit anymore. I don't remember exactly everything. It's possible that I only watched like 10, 15, 20 minutes of the video. Wasn't that like a 60 minute video that you put out or something? I said this right now. Don't take it in terms of me and you, right? Take okay. it just in terms of all conversations you yeah. ever have, all arguments. Mm -hmm. So. It's actually quite good form in arguments mm -hmm. if you don't hate the other person. Like, here's the thing. There's certain social justice warriors. Like, I'll give you an example. You know Randy Harper? Yes, I you know like, I'm black bear. Such yeah. a horrible person. The things she has objectively done in real life that I wouldn't give her the benefit of the doubt mm -hmm. and think, maybe I'm just not understanding her points. Maybe she's coming out from a whole different... I, I wouldn't give her that benefit of the doubt, right? But if it was someone where I did, I wouldn't then just, like, start out like that and go, oh, you know what? I You're vaguely remember something he said from three years ago. So let me just characterize that and state it very authoritatively and never imagine that maybe it's gotten more extreme because I took the gist of what I took from that and forgot the actual wording that maybe it's possible was slightly different to what I said, which is kind of what we've, we've discovered here by unfolding it all, right? Okay, so I, again, as I've said, I, in any serious discussion with somebody, I'm pretty sure I've said just the opposite of random shit that I've said in bants with you on Twitter or on Reddit. I don't think that I've seriously characterized you. Again, maybe that's harder for you to, to see, or, or not hard for you to see, but you don't agree that it's fair for me. Because in this conversation, you did it, mate. As in verbally I did with what? me right now. You characterized things that way. You said this, and then I'd say, well, I didn't know, did I, Destiny? If you remember the premise... Wait, wait, you characterized remember what? You being racist, or...? All these topics... And I'd say, remember the way that you were doing that? And then you'd go, oh, I, 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 mean, I don't really remember it specifically. And it would just break down. Wait, wait, wait. wait. What, what do you mean where I've, where I've mischaracterized you in serious conversations? You've done it in this conversation. When I brought up old past incidents, okay. you repeated your characterizations of how I behaved and in them. And then every time I counter with a fact, like, well, actually, this guy said it before. And actually, it was you who said it about okay, the Okay, but you're countering with facts for things that I don't even necessarily... This is my point, that when I, that you even then acquiesce and say, okay, fair enough, I, d I don't remember that detail. Well, you never thought of that when you were coming up with the points. You never thought that there was anything other than certainty. You knew what had happened because you don't like this person and you've characterized, you've painted we, them in one particular way. Okay, even in talking about some of these things, we haven't necessarily agreed. Like, those Twitter bans, for me personally, I think those were fair bans. You disagree way, because you said that, what? Fine. I thought those were hilarious. Okay, but you made it sound like it wasn't okay because you were bringing up things that had actually happened and no, I was stretching I the didn't. truth. That's nope. what it sounded like to me. I'm sorry. I, I made two points, okay? One okay. point is I said that I don't do it that way. Like, if I make it, I don't just make, I don't just say, oh, you killed your dad. Okay. I, I said something like that happened. Like, your girlfriend left you for Nanawa. That is just a fact. You don't even deny that. Well, actually, I dumped her, it's but bunching. okay. I'm bantering still. Okay, maybe you dumped her. I don't know. I, I'm still bantering. Just I personally don't do that. And by the way, as has been a, a theme of this discussion, I don't force other people to do exactly what I do and live up to my standards. I just allow them to be themselves to some degree. So the other point I'm making is that it was never that I'm offended by this. It's that if this is the way you respond to me publicly and you've said things that to me are objectively lies about how I treated you in the show and then lied about the reason why I won't come on the show, the premise I'm always building back into is can you see why I wouldn't want to talk to you? One person out of seven billion who's done this to me, other people, they can be anyone and I might discuss it with them. Can yeah, of course. This is why I don't extend invitations to you to talk because I kind of figure you're never talking to me again. So I just kind of throw some bands on Twitter and I I've move on. Question. What? I've got a question for you. Yeah. Do you talk to Richard Lewis aside from on talk shows? Yeah, that was a point that I was going to bring up before is that when you when you said, um, fuck, what was it? You said that, um, oh, if somebody that you enjoyed talking with suddenly didn't want to talk to you anymore, why wouldn't you push that more? It's because it's typically, and I'm sure that you are aware of this, that it is very rare to find somebody that you can get into a big argument with and still be friends with afterwards. I think I disagree politically. Oh, for me, mate. What? I would you say for me, just from my personal experience, because again, we, you, you, you're setting up a premise here. For me, it's the opposite. Like all my best friends in esports and in life in general, I have the longest like four hour debates with about like immigration. And for example, so who are my friends in esports? Oh, we've got Monte Cristo, was going mad with him over this Rocks Tigers thing and Jacob Wolf. We've got Lopez. I had a massive debate with him about uh, 
stats. We've got Richard Lewis. Like I said, there's a bunch of things I disagree with him on, like the way Renegades and Monte Cristo's thing went down. All my best friends, actually, are people who are very interesting people, have very defined point of views that are really different from mine. Okay, and it's but where all we of that, catch. that's only... Being friends with any... That's only anecdotal. <laughs> no, no, I'm just fucking with you. No, I understand with what you're saying there, okay? But for me personally, okay, my, no, no, I'm just, I'm just fucking with you. I was totally joking. I was a joke. I'm 100% joking. Okay? For my personal experience, okay, because that's what, all we can go by when making friends. In my personal experience, people that you get into big arguments with, it's very, very hard a lot of the times for these people to want to be friends with you afterwards because they feel very salty about some of the things that you said. Um, and I was going to bring up that Richard Lewis is an exception to that. This is somebody that I disagree with on almost every issue socially and politically. But, you know, if I see him, you know, we'll hang out or have fun or whatever. It's cool. I don't mind talking to him and okay. I think we're still friends if he wanted to hang out or whatever or talk like yeah I'm totally cool with that and you know we've hung out in the past and like yeah but for the most part that seems pretty rare so if I have a really big discussion or disagreement with somebody and they get really upset about some things I said then it's not that surprising to me if I find out that person doesn't want to talk to him it's like okay yeah I kind of you know sure I figured people do that like that, that okay. so that's kind of my standard so that's why I assumed that if Chan Man tells me like oh well Rich um Thorne doesn't want to you know be on any show with you or talking to him it's like okay sure I sure okay like I'm not gonna like so, push that or anything Richard Lewis is a shared friend between the two of us were you aware of that sure yeah yes i know that so when you spoke to chapman about it you never ever thought to just ask richard lewis okay but you know how richard is he blows shit no, up a little asking. bit too because even as of when i was in fucking vegas recently and i saw you in vegas richard told me that you still absolutely fucking hated my guts and never wanted to talk to That's me again that's definitely not true but okay what when have i ever again you've you've turned yourself into poland mate right? wait no what are you talking what did i just say that wasn't true so I hate your guts. No, I'm like telling you that Richard guts. told me that. We played this really awkward game in the hotel where I hung out and talked to him. And he was like, oh, shit, I got to talk to Thorne soon. He's going to be really fucking mad that I'm talking to you. We played this weird game. And I even saw you when we were walking by in the casino. And I thought you were going to fucking kill me or some shit. Like, this is what Richard told me. Like, Reasonable. fuck, dude. What? Reasonable. Okay, so, like, so I mean, I, if I'm being told these things, I mean, I, I don't know. I, this is kind of what I draw my opinions off of. Okay, I've got another question for you. So if someone was black... For the Bants, would you tell them, just as Bants, that of course they don't understand your point or agree with you, they're black? I, I mean, I did that yesterday to somebody. Would you do that? <laughs> uh, sure. I mean, I, I kind of did it yesterday to do it on Twitter. No, do you do that on Twitter? Do you tell them, well, you're black, so obviously you wouldn't agree with me. Uh, yes, I, I did it. I mean, depending on the context, sure. It depends. And if you knew the person had been raped, would you say, well, no wonder you were raped? Um, ooh, like getting like ultra personal like that? Probably not. It would take, there would have to be like a crazy shit going on. But it's to okay that. to bang on people who are autistic. Um, that's fair game, right? I mean, I don't know, dude. Like, you were bringing out, like, is it fair game for you to bring up like my past girlfriends and shit? Like, it, it depends on the Those are all the things that were choices you made in life, mate. You see the difference? It That's doesn't work black that way. Don't, listen, I'm raped. telling you that it doesn't work that way, okay? If you make a choice in life and fuck up and drink and drive and get into an accident, you can't That's go on Twitter. That's the same as being a, 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 a No, aspirin. but you can't go on to Twitter and say, dude, why are you even talking to me? Remember that time when you were drunk and you killed your three friends in that car accident? And then if that other person comes back and calls you, you know, like, oh, you're an ass people, you can't go like, whoa, dude, that's not no, fair for you to no, say that. I like, don't agree with that at all because here's the thing, okay? I agree it'd be very rude and it would be very impolite and it would be kind of irrelevant. But the difference is you're trying to imply something about their character. Character. Yeah, but you killed your friend in a in drunken drive accident. So why would I care what you think? What does it imply about someone's character that they have a disability? I don't get what the I joke think you is have there. a hard time understanding what other people think. I mean, isn't that kind of what it means to have Asperger's? That you have a hard time empathizing with other people. No, no, are, are you an expert on the topic? I'm not. I had an employee that had Asperger's, so I was forced to take a class oh, on it and read it. Love them. <laughs> Am I wrong about my? I'm sorry. Let's Which bring up the. Let's bring... Stephen, what? what pupil? Ignore the anecdote. What pupil told you about Asperger's? I mean, I took a training class on dealing with people with special needs in the casino when I was a supervisor. Does that not count? Anecdotes, yep. <laughs> Do you think that management training classes count as anecdotes? So what me, did you meet everyone who has Asperger's? I remember that was the same line you used to Richard. You said to Richard, have you met everyone who's in the UK who was a leave voter? <laughs> I don't think this is a fair comparison. What you said. If, if you're no, diagnosed anything, with Asperger's, it usually connotates very specific symptoms. You have a difficult time empathizing with people. You are prone to talking on or making jokes that people don't understand or making other people uncomfortable without realizing okay. it because, right, these are okay. traits of somebody with Asperger's. Yeah, it's so good. I agree. You know what's great about that? What? If someone was someone, if someone had all those traits and you were aware of it, and then, because remember, we're talking about like years before these debates we're talking about. That tweet was out there. So, so you know someone has all these issues. Would you then consider that they just tried to bully people when they talked socially and that they just ran over them 
and that they were maliciously trying to just maneuver the conversation to win. Would that be your assumption, knowing that they have those impediments or disabilities? It's, Is that reasonable? You're trying to like ascribe like a like a malintent to be misinterpreted. To be honest, before I, somebody had even po I didn't even know you had. To your credit, I didn't know that you had any any were on you know the autism spectrum or anything like that. I had no fucking idea because in the conversations that I've heard you have, yeah. you've done a very good job at controlling it. So no, when I when I'm thinking a lot of techniques, mate, and I actually sure, and you can do that. A decade and, trying to learn how to talk and that's to great, and I respect you for it. And you did such a good job at it that it is possible that had you been a little bit, I'm I'm saying this since. Sincerely, had you acted a little bit more autistically, maybe I wouldn't have made those characteristics or characterizations. Maybe I would have said, okay, well, maybe there is something more going on here. But you've done such a good job for the most part of covering that up that no, that never even crossed my mind in any of the conversations that I have with you that, oh, well, you know, Thorin legitimately is on, you, you know, has ASD. Like I, I didn't even, you know, I didn't even consider that at the time. So then why is the reason why I wouldn't be able to have a discussion with you because of Asperger's? Well, are you... I don't think I ever, ever are, you, are you talking about the Twitter chain? Yeah. And the Twitter chain, it's literally just ammunition for personal insults. Nothing that I expect to come out of there is going to be productive or fruitful. It's literally, you brought up a personal issue of mine, so I'm going to bring up personal issues of yours, and we're going to fucking hammer it out until one of us, you know, you, you, orgasms and leaves. Like, that's all that is. There's nothing productive. Yeah, but here's that's... the thing. I remember, I'll find it here, because I'm going to have to look on your subreddit for this, but when that happened, as usual, people posted the thread of, tweets onto your subreddit and mm -hmm. people commented there and as you are want to do you came in and made your comments and we'll, we'll see where i thought it was let's have a look i mean ironically there's one about this thread already but i guess that's not irony you would actually expect that so but there a sec um i'm trying to see where it is it's the one where that someone's along the lines like oh it's going down or something or destiny tweets at thorin let me see where it is hmm that's annoying. Maybe it's Thorin with two O's or something. I mean, have a look. Do you remember the thread I'm talking about? Uh, it's possible. Uh, yeah, I mean, I know people were posting tweets and whatnot. Sure. And basically, you... Oh, here we go. I found it. It was with three O's. It was like Thor Destiny and Thorin going at it. Let me have a look. Is this the right one? Oh, that's not the right fucking one. But the problem is you tweet so much. You put so much on Reddit. I can't just like scroll through your Reddit account. Yeah, but basically, the gist of what I remember you saying was along the lines of like that, you know... I'd I'd overstepped the bounds by like talking like you know being attacking you with stuff as though I wasn't bantering. Like I here's what I don't get right so, is that you do realize you know you know the reason Destiny why it's funny that so many of your fans hate me and so many of my fans hate you. It's because we had like the same fucking fan base before this mate. Sure, because we I do the same so, thing. Listen, we, in our so, work, we're very serious people who actually have discussions, but then we talk we just constant shit posting on Twitter and Reddit. So what I don't get is, how can you not see that that's what I do? Sure, I understand that, but I, do you I, think any comment that ever had that fucking little smiley face that's supposed to be like a cheeky little so, grin yeah, no, was I ever understand. a real comment? Okay, it's almost sure. like a code, isn't it? Because I'm so autistic. I understand that, but I've never like gone to sleep crying like thinking Thorne hates me. Like I, I like I'm pretty sure that these were bans. But my point, I'm pretty sure if I made any comments on the thread, oh god, I hope I'm not misquoting myself exactly. But typically, the way that I approach these arguments is that there is a certain level of bans that you throw out, and then as soon as somebody makes it personal, more or less the gloves have come off, and then you kind of yes, go hard agreed. at that point. That's right. what we're doing. So I, I'm pretty sure that was, if I made a comment, I'm pretty sure it would have been more in line with that. Like, okay, well, Thorin wanted to bring up, you no, know, this shit. No, but here's the thing. When we do that, you don't then just at the end go, right? Well, like the equivalent of like, if you have a fight with your friends when you're drunk, at the end you go, right, obviously like, fuck all that. Like, forget all that. We'll, we'll, we'll just pretend that didn't happen. What you then do is you say that you don't get annoyed by it, but it clearly then feeds into how you later interact with the person. You then will be like hyper aggressive. You'll mischaracterize them. You'll slow them. You'll only bring up things that were like, you thought you think are like flaws of character and things Only they did if wrong. We're in the having more discussions on like Twitter or fucking Reddit. Right. Like I feel How like I've been very talking? fair in this two and a half hour discussion. I think I've tried really hard to understand everything you're saying and to avoid interrupting you as much as possible. Like I'm being very, very like non combative in this conversation. I think I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay, but my point is, if you were replying to me on Reddit, that's one thing. If you're talking to other people, how are they supposed to know you're joking with them? I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, in terms of what? I mean, like, in terms of saying that, like, I think that Thor is scared to talk to me or, you know, I think that Thor could be a dick or whatever. I mean, typically, most of the comments that I've made as of recently about you were that I feel like you get the majority of your political information from gaming stuff. This doesn't even have to do with any think personal... that's reasonable? Beef. Yes, based on the tweets that I see people like you yeah. and other gaming... You know the people reason make. why? I, I already gave you this example, mate. Yeah. Essentially, you only see me doing stuff about gaming and you see me tweeting stuff about gaming, right? 
Well, I see so political you can't stuff know as what well. I, other than that. I, that's so correct. You have no but... idea if I've read a Noam Chomsky book. Sure. But Instead, all... I got all my information from Kotaku in Action, right? That's what it seemed to me. That was the impression that I had of reading your well, Twitter As feed. I gave you in my example, I should, by the same logic, do the same to you. How could this guy who streams all day long playing kids' games sure, actually be a But you don't have discussions thinker? on but your YouTube. But I don't do that. But you don't I have other discussions of you because... taking part in political debate. So what am I, I supposed videos to do? I have videos on my second channel where I discuss like philosophy, my thoughts on other things. I've done many AMAs where I've gone in depth on my thoughts on like the occult, for example. That's an idea that has nothing to do with esports. All sorts of different topics, my thoughts on art. And so there's all this stuff out there. Okay, I had the no idea you had a second channel. My, I'm, my mistake for that. So the difference is I don't assume... Here's the thing. I don't have to infantilize you, Destiny. I can argue against your points, mate. I don't have to paint you as this idiot who can't ever be right and everything you say is wrong and that you're, you're just a coward. I just ag address your points, mate. And in this particular case, I didn't think it was very enjoyable to discuss things with you. I've had plenty of people who argue with me. People even who told me I'm wrong all the time. I mean, what's funny is... Actually, Monte Cristo sometimes talks over me. But the way he does it is not in a manner where I think this person doesn't respect anything I'm saying and not even want to hear my point. Okay, but you literally just said that I can attack your points directly. And you literally, the only way reason we're talking now is because your first response made out of nowhere in a Reddit thread was calling me an armchair lawyer, sociologist, psychologist, etc. Like, I don't think that was a funny comment. <laughs> but that's the thing. It doesn't matter if it's a joke or not. Like, that's your first interaction with me is not addressing my... Don't think Okay, you don't think that's also a, a, a fair call? No, I think it's fine. If you want to fucking meme and shit, like, that's cool. It's I'm cool with it. Though. It's not true. It's not, though. I li dude, everybody that's watched my shit, and you go to read this in any thread about me, has always said that Destiny constantly says that he's not an expert on any of these topics, and he admits as much every single time he has a conversation about them. And did you say in the discussion with Richard Lewis, I'm not an expert on Brexit and uh, immigration and stuff? Yes. But every time he wanted to bring something up, it was just, well, I lived in Birmingham or, you know, I talked to this guy or whatever. He was never citing any actual things of substance either, which was what I took issue with. Except for the vague defense of sovereignty and, you know, whatever the typical Brexiter says. Here's the thing. If you're just giving your opinion, it can be as ignorant as you want it to be. I mean, again, if you actually asked me, do you think you're an expert on what geopolitics? I would even laughingly tell you, of course not. But I can talk shit. I can make opinions up. I can give the very, very uninformed opinions I have. Yeah, I can do that if someone wants. Okay. So that's what you're doing with all your opinions that are about politics and e economics and social theory and philosophy. Wait, so because we're both giving our opinions, like I should instantly assume that everybody that gives their opinions of equal validity? No, or? no. but when you do that... You constantly think, OK, here's the here's the premise. When you say all those things about Brexit and economic theory in Europe and what for, what uh, political philosophy might do to a country, you say it and you actually think that all the people listening understand destiny knows that we know that he doesn't know anything about the topic. And this is just his opinion based on whatever information he's gathered. That's what everyone's thinking when they listen. Shh. Sure. I mean, when people listen to me talk about these things, I, 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 I try to present the idea that I am more informed than the average person who is shitposting about these topics. I, I mean, I try to do my due diligence and the research there and inciting specific facts and figures or authorities on topics if we're talking about them. I don't when, I mean, yeah, when people listen to my stream and I am talking about these issues, I don't want them to think that just because I'm not an expert doesn't mean I'm uninformed. Right. These sure. Are, There's so, absolutely a big difference between someone who knows nothing and someone who's just not an expert. There's obviously okay. a middle ground between the two. Sure. Here's the point, though, is... Uh, uh, the the person who just said that now, if if I then was talking about something, wouldn't say, yes, but the thing is, Doran, you just get all your information from Kotaku in action. What they'd say is, where do you get your information, right? Okay. But you don't you don't ever do that. You've, you already know. That's right? because we never have any serious conversations. <laughs> I'm just throwing shit at you on Twitter. If we were to have it. a serious conversation, then I probably would ask you, like, why do you think... Like, I never said that to JonTron, even though I'm fully, I'm fully convinced that all of JonTron's views of politics are shaped by anti-SJW gaming, Thunderfoot, uh, Sargon, whatever culture. I think that he gets all of his ideas there, but I never accused him of that. I was I asking... All of them are. He's like, he's never read a book. He's never even read, like, you know, 
Like, you know, one of those, like, little kids Cliff's Notes type Cliff sure, Notes. Sure, I'm not even talking about nature. that, but at least just no. getting your news from channels that aren't already digesting it and feeding you a certain narrative. But I never accused Sean Tron of that. I was just asking him questions throughout the entire conversation. Like, if we're having a conversation, if you wanted to have a serious conversation on politics, I'm not going to come in saying, like, Thorne, do you really think this? Because I know all of your information comes to good doctor action. Like, I'll ask you, like, well, no, why do you think this thing? What do you think this? What, what makes you think that this is this way? Like, where do you get this information from? Like, it's just generally the road that I had done. So here's the problem. I don't take it in good faith, your statement, that like you did still want to do talk shows and you were like, you didn't understand why, or you were like, you thought, oh, it's all over. Because if that was really the attitude you had and you respected me in any way, your first comments wouldn't be like, oh, you're scared of me. And you're not, it'd be like, like, why won't you talk to me? Or is it true that this has happened? And then I would probably say no. That's kind of the I trend mean, if you look at how I did for five sure. people. If, you were to, if this were to happen today to me in 2017, whatever the fuck the year is, right? I would probably reach out to you and go for a personal conversation, right? It was probably a mistake of me to make assumptions that you never wanted to talk to me again. Because I, cause that's essentially what happened after Unfiltered. Because of the information that I got from Shaman, I was just operating under the assumption that, okay, Thora never wants to talk to me again, which is fine. So at that point, you know, I really don't give a fuck about anything. I'll throw out whatever bans, whatever dumb comments, whatever, because none of it really matters anyway, right? That was kind of the assumption that I operated on post that episode right nowadays because uh, i'm a little bit older i don't know how old you are i'm 28 i'm not the same person i was when i was 25 or even 26 right you know i've changed a little bit i've grown a little bit i argue in different ways now i have different opinions now if i were to have a confrontation with somebody whose opinion that i did value or somebody that i constantly talk up because i do always i always i've never said anything bad about your um analysis of gaming stuff and i've always spoken to the exact opposite that i think that you're one of the most informed people to do commentary in different arenas um if I, if, Didn't if you I, imply that I don't know anything about WCS and that I'm just someone who's not involved in the community and I'm just talking shit like all the other stuff? No, people that imply. Rhett said that. Rhett said that, and I might have piggybacked on that as part of like the hate train for a little bit. Um, but like, how the, are we supposed to know when it's the hate train and when it's I don't, the real how comment? How are we supposed to know when you're joking or not? Like, I, you just I just it told I you. Put, well, how? I told you, if I have a stupid little smiley, I'm joking. If there isn't, there isn't. It's not a hard code to crack. But you, you didn't put that. a stupid smiley when you made that Reddit comment, and you just asked me. Didn't you think that was a funny Which Reddit joke? comment? The one, the one that about pretty rich coming from an armchair lawyer, sociologist, like, there wasn't the smiley face there, so where's my because, interpretation? Because the difference between what me and you just did, surely you acknowledge this, is that you said something you didn't mean. I do mean that comment. Okay, so, but then why did you just say I thought it was a funny joke? It's not a funny joke, then. It's something that you genuinely believe. I purposely put it, oh, I do think it's true, but then I put why it in a way you, that's... That it's a funny joke as well? Can't it be funny and true? I realize that's not your style, apparently, but can't it be funny and true, Destiny? Is that not possible? <laughs> I guess it can be. Is All everything right. that is true also beautiful? Listen, okay? I am sorry for mischaracterizing you as being scared to debate me. I will no longer do that, okay? I, if I have misrepresented you as a racist and you've thought that that has been my legitimate opinion in the past, I will not characterize you that anyway any longer like that okay i won't even do it as a joke okay i never have thought you're racist i'm sorry if that is the impression that you've gotten okay no matter how hard our bands have gotten i've never really thought you're racist and i did agree with most of your points in poland probably even a little bit more extremely than you said them okay so i'm sorry if i've mischaracterized you in that way and i will not uh personally attack you over any kind of issues like that any longer okay and i won't make assumptions about where you get your news as well now that i know you have the existence of a second youtube channel um and and i guess you do have a greater interest in these things that i haven't noticed you know, I've actually just found, because I was looking on Twitter to see if you'd said anything. Obviously, you've got... By the way, here's another reason why it's unfair. You, you don't have the same fucking Twitter account. That's because my last one got antics. banned. Yeah. <laughs> it's not retarded it's weird, antics, it? dude. I'm getting fucked so hard by my ISP. I was a man who's desperate, okay? It's like the people that yeah. illegally you immigrate you made from Mexico. Okay? Like I, how I did. It was basically the equivalent of my existential hole joke. The difference is, on Twitter, people could add no way you know when you're joking. I mean, it's obvious if you're not an idiot. And sure. so they banned you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so here's a, here's a funny comment for you. I just thought I'd leave you with this. Okay. So, because here's one thing, okay, that a lot of people won't know. I did the same thing you did. When Reddit, when Brexit happened, I've just found this tweet now. Mm -hmm. On the day it happened, like when I woke up in the morning, I saw the announced result. I was actually really annoyed because, first of all, I'd never looked into the matter. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, my initial concern was like, I my whole thing about the EU thing was like, I, no one made a good case really at the time as to why leaving was better, right? Mm -hmm. So all I could see was the downside. So the downside to me in esports is I want to live in different countries in Europe without having to apply for a visa. Yeah, free I don't want, couple, of course. Yeah, that's great for me. If I have to apply for visas everywhere, it's going to be a fucking nightmare. So I made my own comment where I actually, this is one of the few tweets, if I could take it back, I would, where I actually essentially did what you appear to do sometimes to people outside. I'm not saying you do, which is you see, okay, here's, this is a side point, but I'm just going to make this point quickly so you understand the context of why I was saying this. Uh -huh. A big problem, I think, as to why a lot of people who are left-leaning 
get characterized as clueless idiots is because unfortunately when you grow up a lot of intelligent people especially people on campuses and in education educational areas are so left leaning that it's presented in the way it's presented politically funnily enough in today's climate that like this is just like, just trust us. These opinions are the only reasonable ones. And all the other ones mean you're a racist and a Nazi and all the rest of it. So as a result, people like me who haven't looked into something, the initial thing we think is often, well, there's obviously some good points to that. Like I'll give you a, fa- a great quick example before I get this into I don't want it's too long, but basically, I don't know if you've ever seen this thread, but I would have, I actually am super against a lot of social justice warrior shit today, but I would again, using the same logic of the parts I don't know about, naively tell you, but you know what, Destiny, I actually think it's fucked up because I'm sure feminism came from a really uh, a good place of good faith and it was very reasonable and it was just about equality. What's funny is when I actually went and looked one day into the history of feminism and the suffragette movement, it was like this, how it is in 2017 back then, only they were like planning to kill people and blow things up back then. It actually wasn't ever this thing that was reasonable. So actually my preconceived notion, my predisposition based on the little I knew was totally wrong. So the same thing happened with Brexit, right? I made a tweet on the day where I said, so glad the advice of financial experts was ignored so people from council estates could signal they really hate immigrants. Basically, almost your perspective, right? Mm -hmm. Here's your response. This is beautiful. Direct democracy perfectly demonstrating why direct democracy doesn't work. Funny to see the react the markets react reach reacting the opposite. Yeah. So we both don't know what the fuck we're talking about. What do you mean? Something was left up to a referendum, which is essentially yep. allowing people directly to vote for something. Okay. It looks yep. like I, I mean I'm still of the opinion that the United Kingdom voted against its own interests. So I felt like it was a decent Possible, example. Possible, of- but I mean we could get into that. That's some point. It's a, se- a totally separate issue. But okay. So here's the issue with that. Is destiny against democracy? Direct democracy? Yeah. But I'm an, I'm an American, so I don't know how much different it is. Do you I think the Electoral admit. College is good? Um, yeah, probably, yeah. Okay. So then you're in favor of democracy, right? Not direct democracy. So, so in the, okay. I'm sorry, so real fast, in the United States, oh, I'm sorry, this isn't a United States unique concept, there's, a, there's an idea called the tyranny of the majority. There's a reason why we don't, in the United States, leave things up to majority vote all the time, because that yeah. sort of direct democracy, it's fun, right? it, yeah, it's, it's vulnerable to a lot of different things, right? Um, I think Switzerland is the only country that actually does this, or maybe it's Sweden, I think it's Switzerland, isn't it? It's somewhere, um, with, it's somewhere where it almost doesn't count, because they have sure. such a small yeah, population, like, yeah, yeah. and such a high IQ, and such a great school system, it's not really a fair comparison, yeah. is it? So for the most part, I'm okay with things like the Electoral College, or we have something in the United States called the Senate, which is half of our, con- yeah. our our Congress, right? And the Senate is two representatives from every state, regardless of population. Sure. I'm okay with these things. We also have protected rights of protected classes um, that, that are you not allowed to infringe upon via democratic rule. You can't vote away somebody's civil rights, right? The Supreme Court makes rulings on things like this all the time. Um, yeah, so, so do you think Trump should have won the election, even though he lost the popular vote? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, he won the election fair and square. Yeah. That's a good thing, then. No, it's election. not. It's fucking horrible. But if I mean, that's the fucking will. Of in the terms of the, people, as huh? in the system worked correctly, you, the way you want it to work. Yeah. Oh, I guess so. You're saying like direct democracy perfectly understand why direct democracy doesn't work. Oh well. Uh, so this is kind of hanging on two different things. Like, are, are you asking me if I think democracy is a good form of government versus like, for instance, for Brexit, I think they should leave. I mean, that's what the people voted on. But I think it's a bad idea. Much the same way that I think Trump should be president he won the election but i think it's a bad idea i don't know if democracy is the best form of government or if it's or even if a representative democracy is good just because of all the garbage it's produced in at least in my country like but i think those are kind of two separate like this is what i don't understand Uh is that when you say these things it makes you sound like you're informed about them like you've you've learned a lot about how the european union works and how brexit worked okay i mean is it the case have you looked at it a lot yeah a decent amount i mean there are people that know more than me of course but so when you argued with Richard Lewis, what you did is you brought up that people who voted to leave only vote on silly things. Like they think that there's all these, by the way, it's a famous thing. You write on one level that the tabloids in the UK who were in favor of leaving post things, stories that are non-stories. Like in Brussels, they're trying to tell us what shape the sausage should be. Mm-hmm. Which if you ever look into, first of all, half the time when it's real, that law already existed in England anyway before you had it there. Secondly, other half the time, it's just made up. Because at the end of the day, who's going to take that that paper to court? What, the European Union as a whole? Yeah, that's how tabloids work in the United States. Yeah, it's absolutely just, it's rabble-rousing, we call it, you know. Mm -hmm. So the funny thing is, 
that's kind of what I see as your position against Brexit, which is the idea that it's all just people who've been rabble roused and they're voting on one issue. And you said, I remember you saying this to Richard Lewis, like there's no one reason that would benefit the UK from leaving the European Union. Yeah, it doesn't really seem so. I guess unless your big thing is immigration, maybe. But even that, I'm not sure. What well, that's be- one, which is well, that the European Union wanted to force the UK to take a certain amount of immigrants. Maybe. So, so my big, con- and I guess I never really got into this with Richard Lewis because we didn't really get into this in much depth. But but I guess my big contention with the with the Brexit, and and it seems with most experts that I've that I've read have talked about it, is that when the United Kingdom exits the European Union, they're still going to want access to that market. Right. So whatever bilateral agreement they make with the European Union, I imagine it's probably every single issue is going to wind up worse than what it would have been when they were part of the European Union. So, for instance, if you're complaining about immigration now and being forced to take on immigrants and if you can just leave the European Union to sidestep that, the EU isn't going to let you, you know, well, okay, now you can abandon all of these obligations. I imagine, if anything, they would come down on them even harder for it because they don't want to encourage other members to consider possibly exiting, especially possibly. I don't know if you're aware of this, Uh but part of the reason why the UK is one of the only ones that can leave and part of the reason why the eu is pressing very hard to make it be like repealed and then to come back Mm -hmm. is because it doesn't matter actually if some shit country like if greece leaves that doesn't matter to the eu in general sure it matters if like uk germany leave leave. yeah Yeah, because the big problem is they actually do have leverage over the eu that the eu doesn't have over them like i I forget what the number is but it was something like it's like an 80 20 split of like what goods and services the uk buys that's the 80 compared to like sends out to europe or something like that you know sure i agree with that the united so kingdom it's i think more is the fifth or sixth largest EU. country in the world yeah, yeah it's way more or important for them to have the uk than it is for the uk to be in the eu sure arguably, so as a result the... they actually have leverage when they make de- discuss they, when they make deals with the eu sure arguably but do, do you think that the eu is going to make it if a, if the eu were to make a bunch of favorable deals with the united kingdom which would all have to be renegotiated which i imagine would be a pain in and of itself but if it were to do that do you really think they're going to give them all of these favorable outlets on everything they might not give them all of them but I, you can see how they'd probably have to shift some ground if the leverage is with the other side right <sighs> maybe but it can't i mean if you make it look like you've lost a lot of ground on that what's to keep other highly contributing nations from the eu from just saying fuck it i'm gonna leave and yeah I don't that's why at the sh- moment they're pushing it to the nth degree it's the equivalent yeah, of, of like sending it all the way to the supreme court you know yeah. you want to really test what is this like in the most extreme circumstances how will it come down and you're trying to win big i agree sure. with that and i'm not saying that the the uk would win in every respect but you can already see in that respect how it's not as it's not as simple as it might have initially seemed to someone who just heard about the immigration issue right sure i mean i guess you could argue that if some people value things like um i won't say brown but if they value things like having a very restrictive control on immigration maybe they're willing to sacrifice some economic okay here i'll make spread. richard lewis's point for him in a way that unfortunately uh, listen by the way he does fucking drink during the shows and again yeah, he it's does. early late in the night so and yeah. i don't think he is necessarily is as eloquent as he would be otherwise sure like if he was in court he wouldn't say those things yeah but here's essentially the point he was trying to get to but he went a bit haphazard on it okay mm-hmm. he what he's trying to make the point of is the reason why it's not a about racism is because it's not that British people only want white people who are British in the country. They just don't want Syrian refugees in the country. Now, there's a big difference in immigration between letting a really skilled doctor from Norway come and a Syrian refugee who doesn't speak English come and has no skills. You can acknowledge that. Sure. But to paint the two people who think about either of those, like, oh, I don't want the immigrant come in. Oh, you just hate all immigration. It's all about whites. For you. Like, no, that'd be unreasonable, wouldn't so, it? So I understand what you're saying there. This That's starts... what Richard was trying to get to. What yeah, no, I, was... I understand what you're saying. The reason this... his anecdote was shit is his anecdote basically should have just been a larger point, which is that integration in the UK between other races and the white race, I don't even know if you're allowed to use that term or whatever you'd call it, Caucasian, is literally more of a success than the United States. I don't know if you're aware of that. Okay. As in, like, okay, here's a great example. Do you know who James Bardolph is? No. He's a British Counter-Strike Global Offensive caster, and he casts the majors and big tournaments. Mm -hmm. Now, he is black. I'm not sure where his family comes from originally, but he was born in the UK. I think he might be a couple of generations in the UK. And this guy, if he went into a bar, would not be treated any differently than me. In fact, he actually might be treated better because I think he had a much better level of education than me. He doesn't come from a ghetto. He doesn't, as far as I know, even hang around with other black people. Mm-hmm. He just thinks of himself as British. We think of him as British. No one is telling James Bardolph, like no one except like, the, you know, a really extreme one in a million racist telling him, go home. We don't want you. They'd all be like, no, you're fantastic. Stay here. You're British. Mm-hmm. Were you actually aware of that? That's the way our society is in general. 
Yeah, I don't think um, I, I, from everything that I've read, I don't think black people face anywhere near the same types of issues that they do in the United States. Right. It's a world of difference. Like, I mean, this is obviously a really digressive point. Mm -hmm. That's tough to argue. But this is one of the reasons why the whole Black Lives Matter thing is kind of hypocritical, because in America, yes, they were put in a bad position at one point in time, but they essentially remain in it by staying in certain communities, by in, in, in glamorizing a certain well, lifestyle. So by encouraging. That kind of, and that doesn't a... justify bad behavior to them. But the idea is, if you look at how the British person has behaved, who was black and now is British, can you see how it, the integration works better? It's not kind of, ideal. This is, a, this, is a, this is a much different discussion. Going back to what you said earlier about the, um, you know, not letting immigrants in equals racist. Yep. That yep. the the where I draw these opinions from, um, unless I'm like in a, in a pretty inflammatory argument, I usually try not to jump to that initially. But the problem is, if you look at kind of the culture of the Western world over over the past while, and, and especially discourse in the United States and in Germany and in France, um, you know, we've got Marie Le Pen, and you've got even people like Merkel moving to the right. When you look at all of the discourse. And you look at the types of people that are constantly hated on, um, you, you know, you, you look at the fact that it's always Muslims and Mexicans and in the United States and black people and people from the Middle East and people from Africa. Like at some point, like I start to wonder, you know, like, is, is it possible that there is a racial aspect here? Right. And this might not okay. necessarily be fair to say, but the fact that every single um, in the United States, at least all of these very, very, very um, racist groups, the neo-Nazis, yes. the new KKKs have all thrown their hat in with people like trump and are very very happy right. to see this two kind of policy being pushed like okay. what two details yeah one do you do you think that the majority of muslims in the united states and the uk are moderates and don't aren't a terrorist threat yes why don't you use the same logic and apply it to the majority of people who don't want immigration why yeah. are they judged by the most extreme cases and lumped in with neo-nazis and radicals well, I mean, when the rhetoric of somebody like Trump is, we're going to build a wall, we're going to ship, we're going to ban uh, immigration from all Muslim countries, like, that's pretty extreme. Uh, he never said all Muslim countries. Come on, don't say that, mate. You don't um, even think that. Trump, okay, so Trump verbatim on the debate path said that he was going to ban all Muslims from entering the United States. Um, from and do you think he misspoke and meant, like, from illegal... Muslims from, coming from other countries? No, I don't think so. I think he said we needed a ban on all Muslim travel from any country that had any terrorist activity is what he said. So he, so, so he actually meant at that point, you really believe he meant that Saudi Arabia will be banned? Um, and he was saying that publicly, I promising mean, as much. I mean, if you look at all of his supporters and you look at all of his rhetoric, he hasn't done himself any favors. No, he's but if you look at Donald Trump and the way he's behaved and everything else he said, except that one sentence in a debate, he's actually behaved as though he's never going to ban Saudi Arabia and the Muslims from that country. Yeah, from maybe coming not because there's a financial interest. But Giuliani was, you know, reported as saying specifically Trump came to me, said he wanted to do a Muslim ban, wanted to do it a legal way. And this is how we did it. I mean, the, the rhetoric, you know, matches the action to some extent. No, he hasn't banned every single Muslim. From going OK, to the but here's States, the problem but... with this destiny is that you're taking the rhetoric of people and associating it with like, oh, well, this is a bit like what the radical says. That's exactly what you don't like when Ben Shapiro does to Muslims. No, is but that, that, he no, takes no, no. that a Muslim said, oh, I think it's a little bit justified to do this. And you go, oh, so you're saying that he's like the guy who actually is going to blow himself up. That's kind of the same no, thing. No, 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 no. Oh, I, I have to make the best. So this is Donald that... Trump's. This is Donald okay. Trump's actual statement. Okay. okay. Donald J. Trump's statement on preventing Muslim immigration. Um, Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what is going on. Right. These are statements on Donald J. Trump's site that was made during the campaign trail. Right. He's made a lot of inflammatory statements about not letting Muslims into the country. I'm pretty sure he's come out in favor. Are you of allowed things. to take back things you say and change your mind? Yeah, sure. If you, yeah, sure. You acknowledge Donald Trump changed his mind and didn't no, do what he said he was going to do. He hasn't changed any of the rhetoric. Wait a second, on this. Destiny. What? Destiny, wait a second. So, in all his modern statements now, he still says that he's calling for a complete and total shutdown of Muslims. That was Giuliani's statement. Giuliani said that Trump went to him looking to do a Muslim ban. And it, okay, but you're saying that Donald Trump still says as much now. I, I mean, no, he hasn't as of recently, but it's not like he's come out and changed his mind on it. So or said when he, disagrees when he with doesn't him. say these things now, that's when you know that he's not telling the truth and that this statement back here is no, what no, no, should what? be judged. No, that's not how that works. If somebody says, I hate Jews in January and then February, um, January, February, March, April rolls around. And then in April, you're like, has he said he hates Jews over the past few months? You're like, oh, no, he hasn't. Oh, I guess he changed his mind. Well, no, he said he hates Jews in January. Whoa, 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 hold on. Why is it true then? But not true. Like, no, no, that doesn't make any sense. Donald Trump is. So you take people's words over their actions. No, I, I, it's in combination with the two. So if my mom says, oh, well, I, 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 I won't use that. That's a spurious argument. It, in this scenario, it doesn't matter what Donald Trump ever does because he said this till the end of time, until he comes out and says, I'm not against 
uh, bringing in Muslims, that will that will always supersede all of his actions. Even if he goes the next four no, years, no. If he doesn't does actions to make me think differently, then I'll think differently. But when Wouldn't Giuliani wanna, comes out and says Trump is looking to ban Muslim countries, he wanted to do it illegally. Trump comes out, bans seven Muslim majority countries, and then even specifically says I'll give preference preferential treatment to Christians coming in. It kind of looks like he's being pretty consistent with the things that he said in the past. Did it, did it ban Bosnia? Didn't ban Saudi Arabia? Okay, so because he doesn't ban Anti every single Muslim, it's not a Muslim targeted ban. It has that that it has to be every single Muslim in order for it to be Muslim targeted. What? How do they know the person's Muslim when they come in? I don't know. Ask Trump. He's the one who's saying they were going to give preference to Christians. That's the whole point. They just ban people from that country, mate. He said Trump, they were they going to give preference to persecuted Chris. minorities. And I don't know. Ask Trump how to how he's going yeah, to do this. I have this. no idea, mate. It sounds like he's all over the place. That's why I don't know. That's why, unlike you, I don't seem to know how to gauge what the actual thing he thinks is and what he's going to act on. I, don't, I mean, when I, he I says they're going to give preference to Christians, when he says he wants to ban all Muslims, okay. when he puts and together he a Muslim targeted ban, he hasn't done other <laughs> things. What thing has he done to make you think that he doesn't believe that he's going to do this? Well, he hasn't done that thing that he just said. I don't even know if he has the power to ban all Muslims. So you're telling me that right up, until, yeah. so right up to the point to where he bans all Muslims, he's not trying to ban all Muslims. So if tomorrow he bans Indonesia, you'll say, well, look at all these other countries where he hasn't banned. And then the next day he bans Bangladesh. You're like, well, look at all these other countries. And then the next day he bans, you know, um, whatever African countries. That he's actually going to go ahead and ban all these countries. I don't know if he will or won't, but I know that he's targeted seven on the grounds of their religion and tried to push a ban through on them. He, what? He targeted them? Did he come up with that list? He came up with the ban. Oh, but who came up with the list, though? Doesn't matter. The Obama administration no, no, did not ban this co these countries from travel. Why, why did they come up with a list? Because they said that there were possible security threats within these countries, is I think what they were saying. That sounds like the rhetoric of someone who's a neo-Nazi, Destiny. That's the sort of thing they say. You're... They take all countries and say that people Did the Obama administration yeah. ban all travel, including green card Destiny. holders from these countries? Destiny. What? We're not talking about what they do. We're talking about what they say. I said I. That's not true. I disagree. I, earlier, I agreed with you that actions count as much as words. The Obama administration never enacted a Muslim ban on seven countries. They merely targeted them as risks for travel. Trump is the administration that went through with the ban. He doesn't get to pin any of this on the Obama administration. I'm not pinning it on the Obama administration. Then why are you I'm making it sound like it's relevant where the list comes my from? My point is that you don't take the Obama administration and say, well, their rhetoric is also not too, too many clicks away from what the. Nazi says. That's not true. You're trying to ascribe a belief to me. I think the Obama administration is some of the worst foreign policy of all time. We're responsible for what happened in Syria. <laughs> like, Do you I'm... think that the Obama administration are in line with racists? Um, with racists? Probably not. I think it had more to do with geopolitical things. But it was about things. the rhetoric, right? What, what do you mean? What rhetoric? As far as I can tell, your implication is if someone says something that's at all similar to a racist, they're sort of bedfellows. I can't tell if you're, I feel like you're arguing in bad faith right now. I don't think the Obama administration okay. did anything. Let's go with that. No, 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 hold on. What I don't think, arguing about that? because I don't think you're trying to understand what I'm saying. I don't think that, and I think you agree with me on this part. Obama didn't do anything that made him seem like he didn't like Muslims, did he? In any of his rhetoric and him being careful to avoid Islamic terrorism, did he, did he do anything that screamed to you like, wow, this guy really hates Muslims? I mean, why he would target a whole country if Muslims are only a very, very small amount of radical people and suggest that they should, that all the people from that country should at least be considered for like travel security risks. That seems a bit weird. That almost does seem like he has a thinking or his staff has a thinking that is in line with what someone like Trump here has actually voiced. Except Obama's rhetoric through the entire administration was that he was not going to make this a holy war. Actions, he was, yeah, and he and his actions. So he said this to was the an, public, this was a private list that identified security threats because unfortunately okay. national intelligence doesn't have the time to be politically correct. These might have been security threats. Okay. I seriously doubt that these security threats were put together by intelligence, the intelligence community under the assumption that they're Muslim. They probably had good reasons to believe these things, and they didn't enact a total travel ban, including the restriction of green card or visa holders from these countries. I don't think it's fair to compare Obama's I, list. I don't with... claim to be an expert on this topic, by the way. This is okay. actually a side digression. Sure. But as far as I'm aware, there actually was a period during Obama's administration where he did restrict travel from one of these countries, I so, think. So this is a common talking point of, of, of the – I'm not saying you're doing this, but I see this posted a lot by the Breitbart people. Obama did enact a temporary travel ban. I don't even think it was a travel ban. It was incorrect increased vetting on people coming from Iraq, okay? But one, that was in response to a wait very- Wait a minute, wait a minute. What? Increased travel. Was, was everyone banned from these countries? As far as I knew, they just have to like apply in advance. They've got to wait a certain period of time and they're getting vetted. No, it was seriously. a 90-day ban. It was a 90-day flat ban. Oh, so a 90-day vetting what's... period, yeah? No, no. Well, sure. If you want to call a 90-day ban a vetting thing. period. It's, it's not version, the same right? thing. We already have an extreme amount of vetting that we 
do for people coming from How do from you ban someone for 90 days and then they can still come? Well, we don't know uh, what's, what's, what he's going to do at the end of the 90 days. Maybe he wants to extend it and make it permanent. Maybe he wants to... Because it was 90 days on the condition that our vetting process improves or something. Okay. But but the, but the Obama... So it's all about vetting. Yeah, it's Obama, all about just banning people. Well, but nothing specific ever listed about vetting. The Obama ban in particular wasn't even a ban. It was an increased vetting process from people coming from Iraq. And it was very specifically in regards to two people yeah. that I think in Kentucky had been found funneling money over that were, I think, refugees that had come from Iraq. So Obama Sounds saying, like an extreme version of that then. No, it sounds like a very reasonable version because one, Obama didn't... Well, pet talking dumps. about what Trump is doing sounds like an extreme version of that. No, it's totally different. It's a longer vetting period. No, it's totally different. Okay, one... Obama picked one country in response to a very specific event. Two, it wasn't a complete ban. Three, it didn't affect green card or visa people. Four, okay. he passed this as legislation through so Congress. It wasn't an executive order. These were totally so, different things. So because Trump said this in 2015, December, that means that people who vote for Trump probably are either think it or are aligned with it. Therefore, painting a massive amount of the populace as racist or afraid of immigrants is reasonable. Is Trump this, did not, is this a mischaracterization? No, yeah, this is, Trump did not say this one time. Trump has constantly been calling for cries against the Muslim community, constantly been saying things like radical Islamic terrorism is the problem, constantly calling for Muslim bans. Has finally wait a minute, had... wait a minute. You think that saying radical Islamic terrorism is the same as saying I'm going to shut down all Muslims in the country? No, you I just, I'm not, no. Why bring I, it up then? Because these are all part of a long line of statements that Trump has made about what he wants his foreign policy and his relationship with the Muslim world to look like. These are all statements that you have to take into account because no politician is ever going to, like, here is my brain. I'm going to take a polygraph. You have to take a long series of statements to figure out where does a person stand on these issues. Okay. And these are part of a long line of statements that he's made, uh, you know, disparaging Muslim people because he really doesn't like Muslim immigration. He wants to do extreme vetting. He doesn't think that refugees are good and they're destroying the world. And look at all the terrorists. And he's constantly had this type of rhetoric going on. So I think it's fair to say that when he enacts a ban targeting seven Muslim majority countries saying he'll give preference to Christians, I don't think it's that far of a jump to go, OK, he's working on his getting rid of Muslims I thing. Keep going. How does that connect to the point about most people being racist? Who, in, who are in favor of that. It seemed like a lot of Trump's rhetoric, and it's not just about Muslims. He did it Are about you one of these people who still connects Trump winning with Brexit? I think that some I think that some of the sentiment was similar. I think that there's a lot of Western okay. world sentiment against... Okay, now we're back against... on track. This is, this is where we were before, okay? So here's another key point about the EU. So one of the things about the EU that makes it very different from who the President of the United States is, is that the EU can decide things that affect Britain are people who will never go to Britain and actually have interests in countries that aren't Britain. And as a result, they can enact things that actively hurt the business interests of Britain. Because one of the things about the EU is they enact things that go EU wide. Now, I don't know if you know much about the Soviet Union. This is one of the reasons why the Soviet Union was a terrible place to live beyond the obvious ones of them killing you, etc., is because they used to do stupid things like make the same amount of boots in an area that doesn't need winter boots and that doesn't even use boots and just waste the resources in that way. And so as a result, trying to manage a massive country like that was a nightmare. Well, that's what the EU is essentially. It's trying to have one giant country and another factor, okay, that people who are informed about the issue don't like the EU for, even people who are in the EU, is that in the EU, if a bill isn't passed, then they can just keep putting it through over and over until it is enacted. Sure, those sound like negative aspects of the They're EU. That's terrible, right? I mean, here's sure. the thing. We could both be in favor of the EU and still say, well, that's not good. Is sure, it? of course. But when but, you're talking about things like... one of like... the people who ever said they didn't want to be in could ever know any of that, right, Destiny? I don't think that it's... A f I don't think that that's enough of an argument for wanting to leave. What, wanting... You don't think it's reasonable that a country would want autonomy over its own rules? I, I don't think autonomy exists anywhere. I think that's a very primitive view of the world. I don't think that's how the world works today. Nobody has autonomy. No, Well, there might be some small island country that survives on its own, but pretty much everybody is beholden to the policies of other countries, whether you're in a direct union with them or not, because you're the one negotiating trade agreements and you have to meet whatever. Um, like if China ships food here, our FDA is bullying China, you know, as much as the, the FDA bullies the United States. Like it's not like just because you're outside of a financial market, you can disagree respect every regulation that exists within that financial Except market. Except you can with some quite key beneficial ones. Like, for example, if you're in the EU, you have to have a certain amount of corporation tax. Okay. So the country of Ireland just made their corporation tax super low, and they have all these American companies yeah, based that's what there. Ireland, yeah, they're in I the corporate Riot inversion stuff. There, I think they have yeah. a fucking office there. And mm -hmm. that is just so that you save loads of money. Yeah. Like, the UK could do that if it's not in the EU. 
We could give all these favorable deals and we could get all these massive countries to come to our companies to come and base themselves in the UK and we would benefit from them in the economy. But that goes against what you just said. Sure, because, that, like, part, because the, the EU is supposed do. to be making no, the EU is supposed to be making decisions that benefit the overall the greater How does EU. How benefit the the UK people? Well, it might not necessarily benefit you individually, but I, well, there can are you giving... see why someone who only lives in the UK might want the UK's benefit above and beyond that? I mean, if that's what you want, that's fine. We're just waiting for those people to die, dog. The world is a very globalized place. Everybody is trading with everybody. It's only old people who think that. It was majority old people that voted for Brexit. Yes, massively. Okay. Okay. Financial integration of markets is one of the most important determining factors of success of markets. Why do you think of the United States? Uh, you know, one of the reasons we're so successful is because our financial integration is almost flawless. If you buy something in California and it was made in Texas or Nebraska or New York, you have no idea because the financial integration, the fact that we all share common currency and all share common federal laws makes it so that transactions can take place at different parts of the economies flawlessly. Now, does this mean that maybe farmers in um, Utah or, or, or um, California might lose out a right. little bit because they could negotiate more favorable trades if there weren't certain subsidies or whatever that existed for other states? Yeah, sure. But the success of the entire nation depends on the financial integration of all of our markets working seamlessly. This idea that, well, maybe somebody wants their state to secede so that they can win a little bit on this minor trade thing is short-sighted because it doesn't, it misses the fact that you want an entire body thriving. But you would acknowledge that the person who thinks what I stated and just doesn't know what you just say, let's say it's correct. They're not a racist for thinking that. They can have their own valid point that maybe is just flawed in some sense. Sure, they can, but I haven't heard any non... I you said the this. majority of British people because are racist. Because I haven't heard any non-intelligent person make the argument in the United States Were you that trying like, to? What? Did you search for it? Yeah, I looked at financial experts. I followed the FTSE 250 for fucking three months after Brexit and shit. And, and all there the were no financial intelligent people or reasonable people that made good cases for leaving. I, did, I didn't see it. I, I fully admit that I could be wrong, but most of the financial analysts and people talking about businesses and whatnot said that it would probably hurt Britain um, because of the lack of travel, because of the lack of the ability to negotiate trade agreements, that there would be a lot of instability in the market as soon as yep. uh, Article 50 was pulled, that people yeah, didn't know. they also said like the pound would dive and it would never come back. Sure, remember, more extremist people mate. did say that. More extremist yeah. people did say no, that. No, sure, no, no. Yeah. I, I saw people on like BBC News saying that, man. Like, you know, like... Okay, sure. Yeah, there were people, and there were people 20 years ago that said that in, in uh, 2005, all the penguins no, would be dead. No, but my point is that like you're making it seem as though it was like obvious that all financial experts were right. They're basically the same thing I tweeted. Okay, so just because some people were more extreme on their beliefs or their interpretations of what could possibly happen doesn't mean that I guess every single person then that believes it's going to be negative is suddenly thrown out the window. Much so then why bring up the fact that like there's any correlation between like neo-Nazis and people who just don't want a specific type of immigrant who largely okay, would so be a net negative. Looking at the United States, occasionally I hear people say things like this state should secede from the union and become its own country. I've never heard those arguments put forth by intelligent people that were talking from my financial point of view. Usually it's from people that have, I want to say ulterior motives, but their primary motive will usually be something based on immigration or race or some other policy like our culture or ethnocentricity or whatever. And then they'll maybe make a roundabout argument going like, well, you know, if we were an independent country, you know, we pay more in taxes than we get. So we would nope. benefit a little bit financially. It's like, okay, but this isn't your main argument. And these aren't the people that back your movement don't mainly buy into these things, right? Much the same way that I don't think that the majority of people that supported Brexit or even a minority, I think it was a very, very, very slim minority, if that, supported Brexit because they had done a lot of financial research and thought it would benefit the country financially in the long run. I don't think that's true. Do you believe that's true? Or I also, no, I definitely don't. And by the way, I definitely don't think that most of the people who voted to remain were like college professors who were really educated and know how I the totally agree. financial markets sure. work. But suddenly they're not. They're not in any way bigots, right? No, there are, those, they, there the are the probably people on that side that are just as fucking stupid. I totally No, no, not that. people. We're, we're painting whole... Here's the thing, Destiny. Mm -hmm. If I was to acknowledge that a lot of the people who voted to leave were ignorant, I don't think there's that big a difference between the people who voted to remain. Yeah, you could probably them argue that. I'm only looking at did. outcomes, they just but heard. no, I agree. An expert I agree. told me it's better. And in fact, for some of them, here's the funny thing. I agree. Some of the people who wanted to leave did it for very naive reasons that they thought would help their pocketbook. Mm -hmm. Now, can you see where I'm going with this? Yeah, people that voted to remain vote to probably remain, did it for naive reasons. Their pocketbook. Yeah, yeah, same sure. thing. Or not even for their but, pocketbook, for maybe for other stupid that, reasons. Sure. So, so for them, we just leave it at what they politically did. We don't have to psychologize them and analyze that, oh, they're probably racist. And you know what? It's probably some deep-seated fear of immigrants because they think that white nationalism is the best. We don't need to go that far, do we? And not least because we have no basis for it. Sure. I mean, but I've, I've never made the claim that the other side, like I co I'm constantly fighting with people cool. that are quote unquote on I the- did just, Was that not a quote what I said that you did what? say like you, you did, you, Richard pushed you on it and you said that you thought most British people 
well, to so, I think like to some degree racist, although to, to try, hated yeah, sure. But I never said that I think, but I've never most, made the statement eight, that the 60 million sure, yeah, people. Yeah, sure, most, yeah. That, that I think I said that immigration was probably the primary reason for it. A lot of these people are probably no, racist. Oh, not right? immigration. Racist, you said they were racist. Okay, yeah, the immigration because of its brown people coming to my country. Yeah, race, racism. Is that is that the immigration reason? That seems to be it to me, yeah. That's a pretty bold statement to make. I'd probably I mean, need I didn't see financial survey, experts. I didn't see financial experts breaking down like, oh, well, look at all the harm the economy is enduring due to a lot of immigrants coming in. Most of what I saw was usually the opposite, that certain trade businesses were thriving because of the immigrants coming in and that the immigrants were taking a lot of low-level jobs. Same shit that happens in Germany and shit, that you're getting highly educated populations of people that don't have as many kids that need immigrants to come in and fill a lot of these low-level paying jobs. This shit happens it's in Germany all the that, time. That what, you're doing the same thing that the people I described do, which is you're taking a good type of immigrant someone who contributes to society and would essentially just become British. They would have the same values to some degree. I don't degree even know if they would society. necessarily just become I'm seriously How doubting is that, that. anything to do with a Syrian immigrant who lies and says he's 16 and he's actually 25 and he has no skills, he doesn't speak English and he believes in like fucking Sharia law. How is that the same? Because I don't know if, I don't think the majority of Syrian immigrants coming or Syrian refugees going to your country are like 16 years old or, or I'm sorry, 28 years old saying they're have 16. Have you ever looked at all the stuff in Sweden, mate? I, I, yeah, yeah, but it's really fucking hard to find good data. I, I agree. But what's funny is on this area, you think you've got it nailed for some reason. No, I don't. I'm never saying I have it nailed. What I'm saying is, this isn't even my point, is that we should ban all immigration or make, you're making it sound like I have this dichotomy set up where everybody needs to be allowed into a country. What I'm saying is it would be nicer if the discussions were more rooted in reality. Like, what is a better Whoa. way to integrate immigrants? What is a better way? Not, we need to leave the EU and fuck all immigrants. That would be a great like, point to make, by the way. If that's Richard the point said, that I always try to make. Is Richard that I, had said... Wait a minute, you don't think everyone in, like the majority of people in the UK are racist. You'd go, no, of course I don't. But I actually do think that we need to have like a more informed discussion on immigration. That would be a great point to make. Rather than saying that they probably hate brown people. That's almost like you've reduced the other person to this non-thinking monster who almost can't be reasoned with reason because they just in their hearts hate brown people sure i and think that most as a people result, you are. never have to engage with their opinions or debates because a lot of them you can't engage with in the united states you can't engage with somebody where, that thinks that brown that people thing? why can't what? you why can't you engage with the average leave voter i it depends on what they voted for leave for if the average person voted and their only concern was immigration or brown people coming to the country there's not really much to engage on there you even couldn't, you couldn't engage with what you're doing now trying to say well listen look at this study here that shows that actually like uh like greater diversity of, of countries and immigrants coming in in the job market actually helps you couldn't do that to the person. no it's because so this goes back to our, this goes back to our earlier argument where people are okay living in different realities people don't agree on the same premises how can you ever possibly have an argument if somebody agrees that sweden is falling apart that malo is constantly you know constant riots and constant rapes capital of the world and all this stuff if somebody really believes that this is the reality of the situation no how are you ever if you show them any stat they disagree with look at the the trend of the united states fake news everything on cnn msnbc everything in the guardian everything in the washington post everything all fake, news, fake news fake news fake news like you can't argue with them with any stats tell or figures me if at I'm all wrong here. tell sure. me if this is a mischaracterization but anytime i try to pin you down on an area where you know you're not an expert you will essentially say I don't necessarily like believe that. That's just what I found out based on information I've Wait, like found. Wait, like what? Like, give me an that, example. Like all these topics here. Do you believe that they're all racists? I believe no, that the just... majority of the Brexit are people that voted leave. I believe that the majority opinion was majoritally like decided upon based on immigration and race. I believe that. That's, well, that's so tenuous. Why would you believe it? Why is believe the word? Why is it not just like, that's just what at the moment the most likely outcome seems? Why is it about well, the, the I, We're playing semantic because I, I can't no, possibly cause, know. Because okay, now I understand you, part uh, of the problem with this discussion is that you actually think that each people have to both believe the same thing. Like, uh, you know the reason why I put a percentage on it like that and say it seems likely? Because when I say it seems likely, it's very easy for me to change my mind if I find something in, that seems compelling. Okay, then I'm sorry. I thought that was what my words were being interpreted as. Then I would say it seems likely. When I say that I believe a certain people think a certain way, then what I mean is it seems likely that they think a certain sure. way. I, it's possible that there is something that I've either completely missed or I'm overvaluing or undervaluing something, but it seems that way. In all of my conversations that I've had and all the conversations that I see occurring, it seems that way. But for some reason, when you say that, and you're even talking about an area where you're not like, you know, it's not like you spent 20 years studying that. So sure. even you could change your mind overnight, potentially. Yeah, of course. Yeah, if I see the but, right data, of course I will. Yeah. But you can't, for the sake of hearing where the argument goes and what their next point is, actually say, okay, we'll accept that premise for the moment. Now, what's your next point? You can't do that. That, that doesn't, that's not b beneficial in any way. What do you, for? A discussion. No, if somebody wants to give me reasons why they're for Brexit and, and they think that they say immigration isn't a big one, let me talk about these other points, then yeah, we can talk about all the other points. Oh, that's this is the crux of what this discussion started with three hours ago, which is you saying that until the people iron out 
the facts of reality that they both agree on, you can't go to the next point because it's based on a faulty premise. Well, Therefore, they can just win the argument and no, seem right. No, that's not true because Brexit doesn't have to happen for any one reason. Let me give you an example. Let's say that but, somebody... Mate, almost nothing does. There's almost nothing in the world that is pure cause and effect. But that's not true because I gave three examples earlier where it can be yeah, pure like cause what? and effect. On, on abortion, whether or not you think the fetus is a human is pretty important into how you interpret whether or not somebody should be allowed right. to have an abortion. So, so whether or not a fetus is a human d d informs... Every possible yes. policy debate. Yes, about abortion. Yes, easily. So nobody who thinks that the fetus is a human can ever allow any form of abortion. It would it would only probably only in the result of the life of the mother being in danger. Yeah, that's weird, isn't it? Even they found a compromise there. Oh, even you know that. But that's way different than the average pro-choice person. You're... This is what I mean I when I say arguing like in bad faith. Language. This is what I say I when I mean arguing in bad faith. When, when you say, oh, so about. if someone else could die, then you're saying that the fact that it's no. a human life doesn't matter. Well, of course, because logically that follows. I use what about ism whatsoever. You just created a straw man there. I didn't what I suggested is that I don't... Here's the thing. This is my perspective on life. I see a very, very small filtered view on reality. And even within that, a lot of it's a haze of opinions and biases. And I get a very little amount. So even things I think I have a pretty good idea on, I'm very open to the idea that maybe something someone says later actually might make me start to question that. I don't just go on this one thing as though it was like algebra and X equals two. No, it X equals three. And I don't just hammer that for seven hours. Okay, let me let me put it this way, okay? Let's say that but you want to... This is, this, is, this is connected, okay? okay. And I also... Don't ever pretend to that I can know how a whole group of 30 million people think and therefore essentially treat them and paint them in one way. Like, oh, they're all racists or they're just incredibly naive. And if the average one of them doesn't know this, well, how do you know the average? Well, the ones that I've heard, the average of them didn't. And seen the poll like results about like, of and seen the studies. On, but... Yeah, but it, what I don't get about that is I thought you even agreed with me that the polling it can be done in such a screwy way. It's like that famous statement about... Uh, statistics if you torture the numbers enough they tell you anything have you sure, heard that one yeah of course uh, li um, statistics don't lie but liars use statistics yeah i know all these things as, I'm sure you know this as well that even uh, scientific studies are like that like yeah, what fair, happens if who wants cigarettes to be sold does a study that somehow through whatever means comes to a conclusion that they're not that bad you know that doesn't make the study false but it's clearly skewed right sure I agree with that. Going back to the abortion thing, okay? If you have somebody that believes that a fetus is a human being and another person that believes that a fetus is just a bundle of cells until it reaches its third, second trimester or whatever, how do you get these people to agree on whether or not um, somebody in a financially disadvantageous situation should be allowed to have an abortion? For one side, the answer is obvious. For the other side, the answer is pretty obvious. H how, do you, how do you get them to agree on things that they can't even agree on whether or not the fetus is a human, right? On one side, they would say, well, absolutely, it's the woman's body period. You know, she has bodily autonomy. You know, it's just a bundle of cells. It's not a person. It doesn't get inalienable rights or any of this crazy shit. She's allowed to have an abortion if she wants. And the other person says, just because you're financially struggling, it's not okay to kill a one-year-old or a two-year-old or a three-year-old because you're financially struggling. Much the same way it's not okay to execute your fetus, right? It's a living thing. Think, That's not okay. How do these people ever agree on things? I could be wrong here, but I get the sense that the people who would make those two arguments are actually essentially radicals. They're so extreme in their view that they can never find a conclusion that's the opposite. Well, I mean, if this most is... people I know have this discussion we're having, like they'll go, oh, well, OK, I'm not in favor of abortion, but that's because I think once it reaches this week that it becomes a human. And as a, as a result, Destiny, I don't know of many big Western countries that are either pure abortion or pure not abortion. They're all about the week that you can do it on, right? Sure, but abortion was just one of a million topics. Do you think you can no, do No, this is a good example you're bringing up because what you're showing is that the majority of people in the political discourse aren't extreme on one side or the other and can't reach any conclusion. But we've made... Everyone's just arguing in the middle. They're bartering. They're haggling like, okay, I'm, I don't like abortion. I do think it's killing a baby. But okay, it's not as bad if it's 10 weeks instead of 20. That's what they do. That's what most people oh, do. Oh, shit. That's what people All right. Do in this Listen, I understand. Yeah? I understand. I understand. I love you and I appreciate you. I actually have to pick my kid up from school in like seven minutes, okay? I'm not okay. trying to duck out. I have to leave, okay? I mean, you're not ducking out. I think we pretty much run okay. this to the fucking bone, right? Sure. You heard my apologies earlier, right? I won't mischaracterize you anymore or bring up anything personal or any stupid shit like that, okay? If I attack you on Twitter, I also won't say that you get all your news from gaming shit. Seems fine to me, mate. All right. I enjoyed the discussion. I love you, buddy. Stay safe, okay? That's it. See you later. Fuck. Holy shit. I just saw the clock.